Okay, hello everybody and welcome back to Forever Conscious Research Channel. I hope you're having yourself a good day today. So um, this would be episode four of the Wayne Bush series and we're going to be diving deep into religion and the created solar myth and the reincarnation of recycled souls and it's going to be uh quite a thorough um breakdown of various religions and um we're going to help throw some further fire onto the matrix reincarnation soul trap so without further ado i would like to welcome mr wayne bush back to the show hey. it's great to How have you doing? great yeah, to have thanks good to see you again yeah so appreciate it yeah, let's uh let's dive right into it. Okay. Well, uh well most of you probably already know uh, all this at a better level than I do, so I apologize if you find this uh information worthless or uninteresting, but I, I promise you the next episodes on experiences and solutions might be much more to your liking, but nevertheless, I hope you find something of value here and it will at least prove to be a refresher, a reminder or something at least thought-provoking. And our original uh, itinerary of episodes uh, finished with religion and experiences, which will be like near-death experiences, OBEs, you know, life between lives, all that kind of stuff. And then finally, we're going to do the solution. So I uh, just wanted to throw that out there because people are like, why aren't you talking about, you know, how we can fix all this or what we can do, you know? So um, I just wanted to start this with um, like a couple of definitions, like uh, in the Oxford Dictionary, they define the word God, G-A-U-D, as a trick, prank, often a device to deceive, a piece of trickery, mm -hmm. a pretense, also a game, sport, or pastime. And then also Napoleon um, was alleged to have said, uh, religion is what keeps the poor man from murdering the rich. And he was an emperor, so he might have a little insight into that. Yeah, I mean, I think just the the definition alone of God is just incredible. I mean, just to look it up in etymology well, online. Different spelling, G A U D, yeah. but yeah. Interesting yeah. though. Same, you know? same, yeah. same sounding as a homophone. Yeah. Yeah. So it's often said religions are put in place by the elite to maintain power and control over the masses. But there are some good things in religion too. And what I'm doing is trying to synthesize the accuracies and refine the inaccuracies. So uh, some religions are dualistic with a good God and an evil God. Evil, uh, devil with demons, jinn, etc. Gnosticism, for instance, continued. Gnosticism continued that, um, but had different labels as to who was good and who was evil. And other religions emphasized the non-duality part. Um, so, by the way, I want to say that I'm not an expert on these religions, nor do I claim to be. And it's not meant to be an all-exhaustive, end-all, be-all mm -hmm. expose on religion. It's obviously such a huge labyrinth of teachings and involves many cultures, mythologies, religions, philosophies, and beliefs, which unfortunately are bound to include superstition, bias, propaganda, and lies. So trying to unravel the truth from the untruth is nearly impossible and not possible for me to do so. But I'm still very much uh, learning. And in most cases, I'm only touching on the superficial uh, level of these and it's very much still a uh, work in progress. <laughs> yeah, I think that's what all of our journeys are about. It's just to just keep cracking and cracking and asking questions and building on that knowledge and furthering your your research and so to maximize your everything <laughs> possible yeah. for when you leave here <laughs> right well said i just want to add that it's extremely difficult to put notes together for theories uh like the soul trap thing without forgetting and leaving out key points or phrasing things perfectly which opens one up to attack and accusations of having ulterior motives 
Of course, I'm concerned about my image. And in this day and age of cancel culture and the typical mindset of kill the messenger, if somebody disagrees or I didn't get the full picture of a very huge puzzle perfectly correct. Well, let's just say there are some crazy people out there with crazy thoughts. It requires a lot of energy to do this, as you know. And when mm-hmm. someone attacks me personally for superficial reasons, it makes it extremely difficult to finish the work. But I guess it goes with the territory. And people expect you to say exactly what they want to hear within a time frame when they want to hear it. And if they don't hear you talk about their pet theory, whether it's flat earth or veganism or aliens or Jesus or whatever the case may be, then you're immediately accused of being a shill or labeled as satanic or whatever words come to their mind. And of course, it hurts when you've devoted most of your life and free time and energy to sharing what you find. All entirely free, might add, but it, you know, I don't have a book to sell or Patreon or donate button. I do it because I want to help others and fix the problem. I don't mind if someone has a difference of opinion, but to personally or superficially attack someone saying they are annoying, need a better hairstyle or uninteresting or whatever cheap shots they want to take is just plain mean. But I think it's worth mentioning, and it's not my intent to push any of these religions or belief systems onto anyone. I do not consider myself a member of any religion but rather I formulate my own unique loosely held leanings, which I am constantly an- analyzing and reevaluating. It's also not my intent to offend anyone who happens to subscribe to one of these religions or belief systems. After all, I myself once upon a time have subscribed to a few of these. I, I adopt parts that make sense to me and that my intuition feels is correct. And I discard or de-emphasize the other parts. You can call that cherry picking if you like. I don't care. But I don't think anyone or any one religion contains the entire truth. In fact, I think most near-death experiencers come back less religious and more spiritual. I think any religion or belief system, including the matrix or so-called soul trap theory, which incidentally might be better served being called the sovereign spirit theory or something yeah, else, but there you go. It should be strong enough to withstand scrutiny. And I'm constantly evaluating the theory and continue to do so. I'm not dogmatic or adamant in my belief system because I think we have to be very careful because belief systems are like prisons for the mind and will shape our intentions at death, which may seem at the time like it's automated or something bigger is taking control, but it may just be the core of our being and whatever the heart's desires, the mind's belief system is or will to do is. And all that's being reinforced in our subconscious over a lifetime of our thoughts, choices, and actions. And it may seem like I'm constantly changing my mind about the validity and importance of various subjects. For instance, I made a list of about 50 themes and near-death experiences. I'm not saying all those things happen to every person. And just because I show some experiences where there were aliens, I'm not necessarily saying aliens are involved. I'm just pointing out that there is a certain number of NDEs where aliens are seen. Do not project that onto me that I'm advocating this belief or any others. Likewise, there is an NDE where the experience was told no one who is a meat eater can stay in heaven or something along those lines. I'm not (laughs) saying that if you meet, if you eat meat, you can't exit the matrix or whatever you want to call it. It's up to each individual to interpret the data. I'm trying to give some balance to everything. Balance and moderation is very important. And that was the whole reason for me starting the website in the first place. Everyone was saying, go to the light. It's wonderful. And I was just saying, well, let's look at the data. And in those sections, I often present both or all sides of a phenomenon. Like the void, for example, I don't just show void experiences that are positive. I also include negative ones. In fact, I have a page which includes every single instance I could find of a void experience, good or bad. I also talk, um, I show cases where angels were encountered or Jesus, but I also include ones where perhaps some confusion or deception was present, like the one where the NDE are asked, are you really the Virgin Mary before the entity shows? its true presence. Mm -hmm. I also don't exclude passages where someone's saying how wonderful the light is. Uh, But obviously, those accounts are all over the place. So I may emphasize accounts that have inconsistencies and contradictions. Likewise, not everyone in our community is saying don't go to the light. Well, you better be very sure that is the choice you want to make. Are we really sure everyone who goes to the light and says it's wonderful is wrong? Plus, we need to have an exit strategy and a plan. It would be good, uh, be a good idea to know what, what it is we wish to manifest if we don't go to the light. So we'll look at some of these things in the solutions episode. And I frequently say, I do not know what happens after death, nor do I pretend to know. I'm just making educated guesses using evidence and my intuition. I could be wrong about some or all of the parts. 
The truth is like a humongous jigsaw puzzle to piece together, and many of the pieces may be missing, and others may not be the original pieces. And all we can do is try to put the pieces back together again and remember what the original source picture looked like from memory. I often think it's virtually worthless for me to come on shows like this because I'd often say I don't know. And it seems people want to be told what the truth is and are oftentimes too lazy to search it for themselves. They want everything spoon fed to them. Well, everyone has to do their own research and make up their own mind as to what they believe. And no, just one little extra thing, then we'll get into all the religions, but no explanation is completely satisfactory to me either. But as we go through these religions or belief systems one by one, some are known for telling the follower that they're inferior to the gods. Perhaps that's the case if we're the thoughts of God or just a part of God, I don't know. But other ones try to get the person to recognize their own sovereignty. After all, as I've said in the past, the biggest Eastern religions teach karma and that we need to keep coming back until we're perfect or we've burned off all our karma, which is pretty difficult to do in this place. Mm -hmm. they, they can always point out some event in your life that they say you could have handled better when in fact we were incited into doing it. Or the Western religions where you're born as a hopeless sinner in need of salvation and to <laughs> let someone else do that for you if you just give your heart and soul to them. And then they tell you you'll meet your maker when you die and be judged, or if you have given your heart and soul and accepted someone else to pay for your sins, then you could be easily manipulated into coming back by that entity if they ask you to do so. So it's giving away your power to an external source of authority when, according to near-death experiencers, or at least some of them, we are light ourselves and have the power to manifest reality via intention. It could be due to a consensus reality that we're co-creators in, and if the majority decide that you're in danger, a danger to the rest, perhaps they try to gang up on you until you can play better with others. I don't know. Or if this is all just an arising from our individual awareness, then we have the ability to decide for ourselves and would be foolish to listen to external projections. So that's my intro. <laughs> yeah, that was great. That. that was great. I mean, you covered a lot of great, great areas. Yeah, I think... Um... I think as far as, uh, you know, the disrespectful comments and, um, uh, you know, uh, I get them every day. It's just, well, not every day, but not, uh, every week. And uh, occasionally you run into things where I, I think there's a few things going on. You have people who are just starting to look into this and they're realizing a lot of the truths to it. And, um, or at least maybe portions of it. And I think what it does, because I know when I was going through before the soul trap stuff, just the different paradigm shifts, just learning about the basics of the, just the system. And it really takes its toll on you. And so sometimes it's kind of like, Oh, you shoot the messenger type of thing. And, uh, you know, it can bring you to a dark place. So I, sometimes I understand why it goes there, but there's no need for, personal attacks and things like that. Disagreements, fine. You know, having a conversation, fine. But, you know, when it comes to personal attacks, things like that, come on, let's, you know, we're all adults here. We're just trying to find some answers and throw some ideas around and see what happens. So uh, yeah. please show some respect to Wayne. He's uh, doing this uh, huge series with us and spending his time with us. And I know the, the, bulk of the people listening and watching are completely respectful and, and very happy to have you. And, uh, I've gotten endless comments, Wayne. So let's, yeah, it was yeah. just, it was just one person and they said, yeah. they basically implied that I was uninteresting or it could be more interesting mm -hmm. or something. And mm -hmm. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, but what really gets me more is just the lack of interest. I mean, this with my website and stuff, where it's like gee, people just don't seem that interested. You know, it's like I still get the same yeah. amount of people coming to view it. And there's like seven billion people on the planet. And we're looking at like somebody pointed out there's we're lucky if we got 600 people in here right now. You know, it's just it, it, I just feel like I'm letting the whole thing down, you know, which. Well, I I just I, I think it's such a. I don't know, man. I, I think you had, I don't know, you had your journey, but I mean, my journey was just, it took me so long to really adjust to this and, and even kind of entertain it. You know, I heard this, I was kind of like you, I heard the John Lear thing. I heard, you know, the Saturn Moon Matrix with like all that stuff. And, um... Then you just it just takes a while to kind of find it. And I and if you're not really 
zoning in on things like the NDEs and, and, and you're not, not able to get your head around thinking that it's possible that what these people are saying is false. Uh, and a lot of people just take what is heard point blank and don't question a thing and, and, you know, oh, well, you know, all these people are saying, you know, God is love, Jesus is love, the light was love, you know, and, and then you also have the, you have the ones who are doing this on purpose. They're doing the NDEs to muddy the waters too. And they're slanting them towards religion and, 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 uh, all that type of stuff. Um, so yeah, there's, there's a lot going on there. And then you just have the ones who just, you know, they're just not open-minded at all. And so I think there's a, a few things going on, people battling that paradigm shifting material and, uh, just being borderline combative about anything and everything, because you're just confronting their belief system and it's just unacceptable. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, I had a little bit of hope the other day when I I go to this uh, burger joint. I mean, I, I get salad, but there was a lot of high school kids to go there, and the couple girls at the table next to me, I overheard them talking about Robert Monroe. <laughs> I was no like, shit. "Why are you kidding me?" Wow. And I asked her, "It's like, well, how'd you get interested in stuff?" She says, "I've I've always been interested." So wow. Whereas other kids are talking about football, basketball, and it's like, you know, why? What wow. causes the, you know the difference? Wow, but, that's incredible. It's incredible. Yeah. yeah, I I was in a I go to Goodwill bookstore a lot cuz they just it's gold mine of great books you can get for cheap. And um there was this woman there, she she busted just had a really nasty leg injury. And uh she's going she's buying low boxes and boxes of books. Must have been probably 75 80 books. And, uh, you know, it's like, I look at that, I'm like, okay, yeah, I, I do that once in a while too. If I'm, if I'm really finding a lot of stuff and I was like, Hey, you know, I, I am Mark and, uh, I share my information. We started talking. I was like, I was like, Hey, you believe in reincarnation? I just assumed she did, but I just asked her. And so then I was like, Hey, why don't you swing by, check out the channel? And she's like, Oh yeah, yeah. We exchange numbers and stuff. So, uh, she's open to it, you know? So well, who knows, yeah. you know, occasionally you meet the people out there and you just have a conversation and it goes, did, did you, uh, hand the girl your website? Oh no, no, no. 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 she didn't want to talk to me. Okay. I'm, an, I'm, a, I'm an old fogey. Yeah, you're an old fogey. <laughs> she, yeah, probably, that's true. I don't want to, she was nice enough just to answer me. So uh, we got a lot of stuff to get through. So I guess we'll just go yeah, ahead. Yeah, I, I right just in. wanted to say just a couple more things. Mm -hmm. I don't want to hold up too much. But um, uh, when you're talking about uh, cherry picking with religion, I think that's part of the discovery process is is going through all the religions. And because there there is value in each one, you know, a little bit's yeah. here, a little bit's there. And it, it helps to... Uh, for the for your journey purposes for questioning purposes for being able to confront certain things and cross-reference lies and possible truths and you know it's important to obviously keep an open mind so that's it that's all i just want to throw in there yeah i just yeah. didn't want to throw all all religions like under the bus and say mm -hmm. well they're all just full of lies and mm -hmm. they're all evil and there's yeah. nothing good about them because there is some good yeah, stuff they all them. have their little their bits and pieces for sure yeah. So the Sumerian text, I'll start there because that's, sure. you know, supposedly the first civilization that we have a lot of accounts from and know of. So right. um, I just want to say that, you know, it's possible that, you know, the texts were propaganda written to make us think that we have rulers, you know, mm -hmm. and there's all these praises to the gods and hymns and stuff. So it's like we don't know who wrote them and for what purposes and, and whatnot. But um, when I was doing an article on the void, I was looking for any kind of information in Sumerian um, on that. And I came across this, uh, it was called a retelling and it's called Before All Befores. And it states, before all befores, there was Namu, the sea. She, the origin, ever flowing beginning. Namu was the first, the source, the mother of the universe, the self-procreating procreating womb of abundance alone and all in one. And uh, she was saying, mine are the depths reaching out to the surface, decrees the fates, Namu. Mine is the process of becoming out of nothing's embrace. Mine is the nurturing womb, life's first mystery. Mine is the silence that all life created. And uh, there's another retelling called Ninersag's Children that says, uh, learn to see beyond appearances, my firstborn, to reach out for the true essence. Learn to reach out to the source where yourself came from, the union of all opposites, the holy complementary that was lost. 
So, you know, take it for what it's worth. It's, sure. uh, I'm not saying that's the truth. I'm just saying that's part of the, the data that's out there. So let's look at these uh, tablets, which are the records of the first civilization we know of. And Sumer is important because it's the first we know of with written records. They tell how and why we were created. In the beginning of history, we see one geographic area where it all started being Mesopotamia. And through time in the area of present day Iraq, Syria, and Turkey, the most innovative peoples forged to civilization. Throughout time within this area were many different kingdoms and even languages, but the culture and mythology was shared and very similar. The oldest civilizations generally called the Sumerians and their Sumerian speaking people were replaced by Semitic speaking Akkadians and later kingdoms, including Babylonia, Assyria, just to name a few. And even though populations were conquered and even languages replaced, they kept the same mythology and gods for the most part, merely changing their names, but the story stayed basically the same. Inky being an easier example is he only went primarily by two different names, one being Inky, his Sumerian name, which later became Ea. Inky and Ea are identical in every aspect, but they just changed the name. And, you know, it's the first language and there's all kinds of evidence. With it's, um, you can actually find a lot of the text out of the electronic text corpus of Sumerian literature. Mm -hmm. It's E-T-C-S-L. And um, you can do searches and read for yeah, yourself. Use your keywords or whatever. Try and... Yeah, it's a little tricky, but yeah. if you get the hang of it, you might figure it out. <laughs> yeah. So I think they're on Oxford's website, too. Yeah, yeah, they are. Yeah. And there are tremendous parallels between the Sumerian tablets and Gnostic texts. The mother goddess um, Nama was known as Sophia, most likely. And the Gnostics spoke of a false god named Yadabioth, who they called Demiurge. And he was originally probably An, An and Sabaoth was Inki, who repented, possibly. And then the seven chief Anunnaki would be the seven chief archons. Even today, there's sometimes uh, seven members of a council that are seen by near-death experiences. Yeah, so council of elders them. type thing. Mm -hmm. See them in the, the pre-birth pre memory. Stuff. Yeah. 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 So um, most prehistoric world myths include the concept of Earth Mother, Mother of All, and Sky Father. And these are the two that produce things such as gods who made humans. The Archons did not create the life that was already here. They only modified life for their needs, domestication of plants and animals to feed their new creation humans. The Anuna did not create us. They just modified what Sophia had already made. And all life is connected by Sophia. They didn't create, they only modified, they hijacked the system. And a lot of this is based on my friend, um, Chris, who uh, know, knows a lot more about not, um, Gnosticism than I do. And I'm just kind of relaying what he was saying. Yeah. I'm not saying this is the truth. You know, sure. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, I'm, I'm on the fence as to if this place was like, right. invaded or stronghold. I, the way I look at it is I don't see one bit of proof otherwise, but I'm open to it. I mean... I mean, because it is beautiful. I mean, nature does heal, but it also destroys. <laughs> I mean, it's, right. um, but uh, yeah, I mean, but you would think, you know, if you put people down here, you'd put them in, you know, have nice surroundings, you know, as nice as possible, I guess, depending on where you live. But, you know, make Earth beautiful and then have a parasitic system raining down on you from cradle to grave. So with yeah. it, if it was... Uh, strong arm taken over i don't know but I, i'm open to it for sure yeah so the gods were toiling digging canals for agriculture which was needed for food and why did they need this food it wasn't actually for them it was to be able to create more and more humans and to be able to feed them and make civilization for them to play with and sustain their energy it says in another text uh well i'm not going to get into that it's a little controversial <laughs> i think it was just the energy we created and um there could be a food chain above us, which meaning the parasite blobs take energy of our auras, a higher astral being, and they consume these and up a few steps until it's like concentrated energy for them. And so these Anuna gods, there were seven main Anuna gods, four primary ones, Anu, Enlil, Inki, and Inursag. And there were three sky gods, uh, Inanna, which is also Venus, uh, Nana, which is the sun or moon, and Utu, which is uh, Shamash or the sun. And the original uh, Anuna players um, were Nama, Enlil, Inki. Uh, well, Enlil was the favorite son of An. He was the god of lightning and storm, and his name means Lord's, Lord of Air. And then Inki was the oldest son and half-brother of Enlil, and his name means God of Earth. And he was first known as the god of fresh waters, uh, with wisdom, magic, science, and creator as his main task. 
and he told humans to save themselves from the coming flood, though he was prohibited from doing so. Uh, but he has the oldest continual temple in the world in Eridu. I guess maybe that's under the debate now. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, I'm not going to go did into you, too much. Did you, did you want to um, touch on how it was on, in debate? Well, just that, um, and what is it in Turkey? There is that, uh, I mentioned it in one of the earlier, um, oh. uh, Gobikli Tap or whatever. Yeah, Gobikli, Gobikli, Gobikli Tap and player, yeah. Yeah, and so I don't know if that's like a considered a, a temple or what. I mean, it probably was, but that's, uh, they're always un, uncovering new new, yeah. new uh, discoveries. Uh, I stuff. think it just gets to the point where they 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 just can't hide everything. They can't hide everything. There's so much there. Yeah. So, according to my friend uh, the Gnostic, <laughs> he says in the beginning the goddess Namu or Nama created the world and then was forgotten. And the Ma- Nama is the mother goddess. And she's worldwide, uh, Sophia and Nama are worldwide. Before modern humans walked on earth or were even thought of, the mother of all, the great Nama, already existed. And she created life on earth as we know it and known through time as the earth mother, great mother, and mother of all gods. Then she decided to create children. They were created as gods to experience the earth. The term Anunnaki matches them perfectly as it means gods of earth, as they were created here and did not come from somewhere else. Um, so he mentions the, the Venus statues that are, are there, in fact, the mother goddess from Nama. And these figurines have been found in Turkey as recently as 7,000 years ago. But they've kind of, I don't know, they, 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 he feels like they've stolen her identity and given it to the Venus figures. And because Nama was like this rotund, robust woman, and then Venus is all this beauty and, and sexiness and all this stuff. But, um, yeah, another thing I can't mention. <laughs> uh, yeah, I just, it's not something like, it's good to get misinterpreted. Um, it's not what it sounds like. But um, then you have the Babylonian creation myth, the Enuma Elish, and um, they're talking about uh, their sanctuaries and may they may cause incense to be smelled and their spells make a likeness on earth that he was rotten in heaven. And, you know, may food offerings be born for the gods and goddesses. And um, so it just goes on about how we need to serve the gods and goddesses. And then humans were created (laughs) as slaves to worship the Anunnaki gods. And Ea, the king of wisdom, spoke spoke among the gods and began to say, why are you destroying mankind? They will not give sacrifices to the gods. They will not burn cedar as incense to you. If you destroy mankind, they will no longer worship the gods. No one will offer bread or libations to you anymore and so there's this uh humans as being like the food of the gods there's this hymn to nibru and isma mm. dagon says you were built as life-giving food for the anuna gods you there were you go. beautified for their eating and drinking you are the sheepfold which there is there for their life nothing escapes your grasp as if caught in the threads of an outspread net talk about um, in our face right when uh, well, according to the text, yeah. it's right there. Yeah. Right. And, and of course, in the Bible, it says that we're putting the garden to toil, too. Garden to toil, yeah. Garden of Eden, you know. Yeah. Garden <laughs> so, of Eden. Got yep. some good eating to do. <laughs> right. So um, we have these uh, what are called Galu and Archons. And well, the, the, some of the Mesopotamian religions, they talk about these shades, which are basically shadow beings. And these Galu are like these demons, I guess you could call it in Christianity. But they uh, they feed on um, a lot of the uh, sacrifices and other stuff that's yeah. That's I mean, there. it's always about feeding the gods with these damn sacrifices. It's you know, it's so pervasive and across so many different cultures. It's you know, when are we going to catch on? Well, yeah, and you get into the uh, Inca and the Aztecs yeah. and the Maya and all that stuff and all the sacrifices they did for the, the altars gods. and throwing oh, yeah. them off things and, and the just, Druids. The, yeah, the, Druid, the Druids, yeah. The Druids with the Wicker Man and all that stuff. Yeah, um, that's, uh, just... yeah. yeah my, my intro video to the channel, that's why I, I think I talked about that. It's like what human sacrifice and suffering and misery is just a, one of those common themes we see throughout the history here. You know, history might be slanted in many ways and falsified, but that narrative is always there. <laughs> yeah, and it's just, if you look at war um, on a massive global scale you know it's like the ozzy osborne you know war war pigs and how the generals gather at their masses and it's like talks about all the 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 dead that's burning and all that stuff and it's like you know there's entities probably that are there that are feeding off Mm -hmm. of all that so anyway to get on um some more um inanna was a queen of heaven 
and Nungal's Goddess of the Underworld, and there's Indra's Battle Net. Like I think that's out of uh, Vedic stuff, as they called it, Indra. But um, but they're talking about the, her jailhouse prison, and yeah, it says when an individual is brought in, he cannot resist its aura. The gods of heaven and earth bow down before its place where judgments are made. The light. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because you notice how the it light. says it's radiant. You can't resist the Rain, aura. Where judgment it's, is made. Yeah, Man. and she, she's distinguishing true and false. And her battle net of the fine mesh is indeed cast over the land for her. And the evil do her does not follow her path, will not escape her arm. <laughs> and I said, this is reminiscent <laughs> of Indra's net in Hinduism. You know, why does Indra have a net, right? A net, yeah, you got to lure him uh, in. Yeah, Nungal is a goddess of the underworld. Uh, and then, let's see, let's go on. I'm just not going to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> I would never survive. Uh, uh, let's see. It's, uh, it's sad that we have to do that, but I understand, yeah. Wayne. I get you. Yeah, so there's more about the her house or her jail and, um, you know, about the prison and the jail of the gods. Um, uh, see, it says its gate is the yellow evening light, exuding radiance. <laughs> uh, its stairs are a great open mouthed dragon lying in wait for men. And I'm not sure if I got this in here because I didn't have a chance to go over the notes today. I thought we were going to be doing this. I've, we've been doing all the shows on Sunday, and I thought I had until tomorrow, and I was going to go through oh, and read through. Okay. And, I could have switched which, things around. Oh, I know, but yeah, we've already told people so. Um, but well, I'm not sure if I'm going to mention it later, but um, Inky is described as a as a supreme dragon in the text. Mm. Just thought I'd throw that yeah, out there. Yeah, and I think um, there's been a lot of people who astral project and, and say they see Inky and, and dragons are there and stuff. It's kind of a weird thing to run across. Have you Have you seen any of that? Um, a few, yeah. Yeah, it's not actually. like a ton, but it's it's there. It's there. lions and dragons yeah. that are like kind of flying around mm -hmm. and stuff. Yeah, I've, I've heard a few of those. Um, so there's this other character, Nergal, who's the son of Enlil. And he was god of war and plague, and um, he didn't have a very high status early on. But at some point, um, Anne helped him by giving him. It's probably on. It's the, um, helped him by giving him seven companions or weapons, otherwise known as the seven evil spirits. <laughs> and he, Nergal planned to take over the uh, underworld, who already had a goddess in charge, and her name was Ereshkigal. And Nergal first forced his way into the underworld and took the goddess by her hair and dragged her off her throne to cut her head off. Uh, but she offered to be his wife and give him the underworld, and he took the deal and, and let her live. So now Nergal go. controlled the underworld. And there's this. Uh, and he's got this uh, head of a dragon, or I mean, head of a lion, which is what the Demiurge is often depicted as having. Oh, yeah, and we really see cool. that across multiple cultures, too, which yes. is really, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's there. I mean, it's, or they use that as their logo or their symbol. Yeah, it could be on yeah. flags, a coat also, of arms, yeah, all kinds yeah, of stuff. Yeah, the flags, you know? yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's interesting. A lot, weird of, a lot mega... of countries. Mm -hmm. Oh, even the, the the U.S. Air Force and some of the armies we have have these like dragon patches and stuff. It's, oh, yeah, it's, it's all over. And then even some of these uh, the ancient the ancient buildings, ancient architecture, they've got the symbolism there. It's it's, it's all over the place. It's wild. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, some of this description of the Galu and stuff it's just too graphic and gross. <laughs> so I'm not going to go into it. I don't want to okay. make somebody lose their lunch here. But... <laughs> well, it's, uh, it's up to you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I won't. Um, but it's interesting about the um, Sumerian tales, like um, some of the that they define this Gala or Galu as policeman or a demon, right? But you know they're, they're called a constable, mm -hmm. and but these these uh, Gnostic texts talk about these. Um, well, of course the archons are are called rulers. That's yeah. what they are. They're like constables. They're, they're, that um, it's just amazing that two different cultures would have the same way of uh, referencing these these beings. Mm -hmm. um, so um, yeah, um, the I'm going to go into the uh, ancient Egyptian religion now. I don't right. spend too much time on Sumerian, but because uh, we covered some of that, I think in one of the other episodes. Yeah, about unless, how yeah, unless there's anything else you wanted to add on to it, but yeah, sure, we can whatever you, however you. Give me however you want to proceed. Yeah, so the Egyptian also talked about the Ogduad. I'm not sure how to pronounce that, but there were eight primordial deities uh, worshipped in Hermopolis, 
And they were arranged in four male, female pairs, and the names are kind of hard to pronounce, but it, they says they represent the primordial waters. And uh, one of the names is Nun, you know, so it kind of goes back to that um, void kind of mm -hmm. thing where um, it talks about inactivity. And I raised them up out of the watery mass out of inactivity. And the name has been compared to the Coptic noun abyss or deep. So Nun was known as the primordial, as a primordial deity and associated with inactivity. And um, so there's this uh, quote about the limitless expanse of motionless water and these eight primordial deities who together personify the essence of the primordial chaos before the creation of the world. And these Ogdoad created them themselves uh, the mound upon which the lay the egg from which the sun god emerged <laughs> evidently uh, i'm taking this from wikipedia by the way i mean i know okay. it's not the bastion of all you know, all things true but um it's a good summary um yeah it I, is, and, and thinking, I, I think they're the, as far as like the egyptian history goes it's really whacked but um when it comes to the religious side of things i think it's it's pretty accurate of course it yeah. leaves things out, but the, the base of it is, is pretty, pretty good. Yeah. I Cause the just, system loves it. They love, they love the. <laughs> yeah. I'm just pulling like, like I said, a lot of this stuff just straight from Wikipedia. Mm -hmm. So, um, I generally hold it to be at least what's, you know, traditionally thought to be the, the case your truth. Mm -hmm. So it says at various times, certain gods became preeminent over the others, including the sun god Ra, the creator god Amun, and the mother god Isis. For a brief period in the theology promulgated by the pharaoh Akhenaten, a single god, the Aten, replaced the traditional pantheon. But the Egyptians had elaborate beliefs about death and the afterlife. They believed that the humans possessed a ka, or life force, which left the body at the point of death. In life, the ka received its sustenance from food and drink, so it was believed that to endure after death, the ka must continue to receive offerings of food whose spiritual essence it could still consume. So even, you know, Egyptian, according to Wikipedia, there's these things after death that are needing food and, yeah, and it's, uh, gotta, it's gotta keep feeding. I mean, it's yeah. just uh, showing you that the Matrix, which I think we both know it's, it has its ugly claws. Well, we both definitely, well, we both have our opinions on it, I guess let's say that. It, it crosses over between here and the astral, and it's just a matter of continuing to keep you lost. Just like we get lost down here, they want to keep you lost as you cross over, and uh, as long as they've got you throwing your consent left and right and agreeing to these memory wipes, uh, they're feeding off you. They're, they're controlling you. It's nuts. Yeah, so it goes on. It says each person also had a ba. There's a ka and a ba, which makes you think of uh, Kabbalah and some mm, other things, the, and the, yeah. the, the black cube, the Kaaba and stuff. Uh, but each person all had a, also had a ba, the set of spiritual characteristics unique to each individual. Unlike the ka, the ba remained attached to the body after death. Egyptian funeral rituals were intended to release the ba from the body so they could move freely and to rejoin it with the ka so they could live as an ak. If, however, it was also important that the body of the deceased be preserved, as the Egyptians believed that the Ba returned to its body each night to receive new life before emerging in the morning as an ak. Yeah, recharge yeah. our batteries. Yeah. 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 In the fully developed afterlife beliefs of the New Kingdom, the soul had to avoid a variety of supernatural dangers in the duat before undergoing a final judgment known as the weighing of the heart, which was carried out by Osiris and by the assessors of Mat. In this judgment, gods compared the actions of the deceased while alive, which was symbolized by the heart, and they compared it to the feather of Mott to determine whether he or she had behaved in accordance with Mott. If the deceased was judged worthy, his or her ka and ba were united into an ak. Mm -hmm. And they said, often the dead were said to dwell in the realm of Osiris, a lush and pleasant land in the underworld. And the solar vision of the afterlife in which the deceased soul traveled with Ra on his daily journey was still primarily associated with royalty, but could extend to other people as well. So they're talking about the sun um, that go to be with the sun after yeah, death, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. on over. You'll be yeah. just fine. The most important of all Egyptian myths was the Osiris myth. It tells of the divine ruler Osiris, who was murdered by his jealous brother Set, a god often associated with chaos. Osiris's sister and wife Isis resurrected him so he could conceive an heir, Horus, Horus, 
Osiris then entered the underworld and became the ruler of the dead. Once grown, Horus fought and defeated Set to become king himself, and Set's association with chaos, they say Set's the devil, basically, mm -hmm. and the identification of Osiris and Horus as the rightful rulers provided a rationale for Pharaoh's secession and portrayed the pharaohs as the upholders of order. At the same time, Osiris's death and rebirth were related to the Egyptian agricultural cycle in which the crops grew in the wake of the Nile inundation. Provide, you know, so that's why they're like, oh, it says provided a template for the resurrection of human souls after death. <laughs> Almost left that part out. Uh, like, that's kind of important. <laughs> it's like they would pray to the God and give sacrifices to the God to keep the crops, you keep, know, and keep them going. Yeah. This may be, I'm getting it from the Druids, but I'm sure the Egyptians, it sounds like that's what they did some of that too. Yeah. Um, I think, um, actually there's a bunch of other cultures too that, that I think yeah. even, I think some, even the natives, the, Mayan, the, natives, yeah, the natives, the Mayans. Yeah. yeah. I'm not sure if it's Maya or Aztecs. Like in Inca, yeah, I was thinking maybe Aztec too. It might, I think all, I it might have both done it. I think I mentioned in that other show about how they would do that uh, mm. too, from what I was reading. But yeah. um, so another important mythic motif was the journey of Ra through the Duat each night. And in the course of his journey, Ra met with Osiris, who again acted as an agent of regeneration so that his life was renewed. He also fought each night with Apep, a serpentine god representing chaos. The, the defeat of Apep and the meeting with Osiris ensured the rising of the sun the next morning, <laughs> an event that represented rebirth and the victory of order over chaos. It's so ridiculous how that that was uh, basically how they controlled people. Oh, well, you, you got to keep going. Otherwise, you got to keep pleasing. Otherwise, the sun's not going to come up tomorrow. Yeah, we're all going to die. Crops gotta are going to go. Got to appease the god. Yeah. Got to appease the gods, oh, right? And then sacrifice, so, you know, these people and these animals while you're at it. <laughs> yeah. It's like, what the and, hell? So then there's this little last bit on magic. Um, so the word magic is normally used to translate the Egyptian term heka, which meant um, the ability to make things happen by indirect means. And it was believed to be a natural phenomenon, the force which was used to create the universe in which the gods employed to work their will. Humans could also use it, and magical practices were closely intertwined with religion. In fact, even the regular rituals performed in temples were counted as magical. I said often these rituals invoked an appropriate deity to perform the desired action using the power of Heka to compel the deity to act. So we're going to get a little bit into magic later when I talk about um, hermeticism and, and some of the more right. called tip, I guess you could call it. But um, yeah, and you also much have the set link with, you know, Temple and Set with Crowley and all yeah, that OTO, stuff too. OTO, yeah, yeah, the Temple of Set. Yeah, you're right. So um, that's what I was going to say about Egyptian. Um, okay. I'm going to get into Hinduism next. Right. Um, I'm going to try not to spend too much time on anyone because I'm no expert on this stuff, but. Yeah, I think uh, I still think the the good one, the really well. I mean, they're all revealing, but I think the more revealing ones are like Hinduism, Buddhism, and Hinduism and Buddhism, and uh, and Gnosticism seem to be the the real big it ones. It seems like Hinduism and, and Buddhism have a lot in common. I think Buddhism oh, yeah. came Buddhism's, out of Hinduism. Yeah, I believe. absolutely. And, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. That was a uh, you know, just a whole revamping of it. Stolen talk. They both talked about Maya and stuff mm -hmm. as being an illusion and the need to liberate yourself yeah. from the cycle of rebirth, right? So, yeah, but you, um, you know, you got to go through the 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 Bardo realms first. Mm -hmm. You know, you got to do all this stuff and blah blah blah. You know, and and the other ones are the other times where they're like, um, well, you got to keep coming back until you know you kind of clean the earth up better. You know, we got to keep got to keep going. Yeah. Well, I guess in Hermeticism, I was just learning this stuff yesterday. I was like, preparing it. They they kind of taught that all the different levels are all connected. And mm -hmm. so for them, I guess that would be important. But I mean, yeah. it's just a different belief system. Well, yeah, they, one, mm -hmm. one I want to learn more of, by the way. Yeah. Sure, sure. Yeah, uh, there's some uh, there's a good Discord server I can send you if you end up joining Discord and uh, where this guy's got loads and loads of great information on there. Uh, yeah, it's yeah. jam packed with resources. Sure. So, yeah. I, I found a website like that um, not too long ago, too. Uh, great. I don't know if I can mention the name, but <laughs> so Hinduism, uh, prominent themes in Hindu beliefs include the four Purasarthas, the proper goals or aims of human life, namely Dharma, which is ethics or duties, Artha, which is prosperity and work. 
kama, which is desires and passions, and moksha, the liberation or freedom from the passions and the cycle of death and rebirth, as well as karma, which is action, intent, and consequences, and samsara, which is the cycle of death and rebirth. Hinduism prescribes the eternal duties such as uh, honesty, refraining from injuring living beings, patience, forbearance, self-restraint, virtue, and compassion, among others. Hindu practices include rituals such as puja, which is worship, and recitations, meditation, family-oriented rites of passages, um, annual festivals, and occasional pilgrimages. Uh, along with the practice of various yoga, some Hindus leave their social world and material possessions and engage in lifelong monasticism in order to achieve moksha. Um, Did you yes. uh, see the... I'm sure you have that Brett Stewart video. Yes, I did. Yeah, yeah. about the moksha. And it was a remote viewer for people that don't know. Oh, this light got really bright. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> and so he was basically confirming the whole soul trap uh, thing yeah, about how I, there's a. Mm, sorry. No, I was just, I was just gonna say we, we can, we'll visit that in the next yeah, episode sure. if yeah. I remember to put in the notes because yeah. he's, because we're gonna have all these different experiences, and I'm, I'm considering the remote viewers okay. as, as an experience. So. Okay. Um, yeah, we can but, add a couple in there. I'm, I'm yeah, a little... and I'm also going to talk mm -hmm. about the far side yeah, too, mm -hmm. so that because they both were remote viewers that found the same thing, and mm -hmm. um, but there's other experiencers too. Yeah, yeah. far side, I uh, it's tough. Like I, I think uh, uh, even Brett Stewart's kind of questionable with what operation he's going under, going on with. But I think I find him more credible just because of the chain of events that happened after that video was kind of interesting uh but you know make of it what you will i think he just changed his whole operation personally but um farsight is uh i just i just don't trust courtney's operation at all uh, yeah yeah but still interesting though right yeah, yeah, I yeah. I don't really want to comment one way or the yeah, other. I, I understand. I, I just like to I, say. I did have yeah. kind of a bad feeling in my gut as I was listening to him talk. Mm -hmm. And that's all I mean, I don't know whether that's right or wrong. It's just mm -hmm. something that I did experience and could have been something I ate. I don't know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh it says the meaning of moksha differs among the various Hindu schools of thought. For example, Advaita Vandata, I don't know, probably not saying it right, holds that after attaining moksha, a person knows their essence, self as pure consciousness or the witness consciousness and identifies it identical to Brahman. Um, they, it goes into a little bit of saying what's a little bit different. But here in moksha in Advaita Vandata says, I am other than name, form, and action. My nature is ever free. I am self, the supreme, unconditioned Brahman. I am pure awareness, always non-dual, which I non find to be a pretty good text. And it's sure. interesting. And then you got the you got this whole theory of karma. It's like, so like, how can people, this is like one of my questions or criticisms, how can people learn if the mind is being wiped each time? Exactly. You know, some say the knowledge is passed down into our intuition or oh, subconscious, yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. And, but why not immediate transference of the lesson to be learned? Like one near death experiencer said, um, he talked about how, why don't they just transmit it, you know, through mm. like a touch or, you know, well, I mean, they, they say that there's, you know, all these, uh, we're supposed to pick up on all these signs while we're down here where we don't even really know they're going on. We're, we're, we're completely clouded. You know, you're supposed to walk past, you know, uh, a billboard and it's supposed to trigger something for you to remember that you're supposed to do while you're here or something yeah. you know, part of your uh process of spiritual evolution it's all bull it's all well it could crap. be part of it it could be part of the system or oh know, yeah could, absolutely part of the system it doesn't yeah. make it right it doesn't make it no, right. no, no, no no yeah no i agree yeah. it's it's definitely part of the system i mean it we see that with the um with the past life regressions big time big time with that and the pre-birth memories we see it too where so uh, i just think there planning. might be better better systems for teaching and learning and mm -hmm. we don't we don't seem to be learning over the last thousands of years we still have Clearly wars not. we still have murders <laughs> still a bunch of thefts um and michael newton said that one man came back for four like five thousand years or something yeah. just to learn a lesson about jealousy yeah. he says he's intolerant as hell now <laughs> isn't that crazy yeah when i i kind of went off when i heard that one on my channel i thought it was yeah really disturbing really yeah. disturbing
So yeah, then there's this, the Rig Veda, which is one of the, the religious texts, and it says um, the non-existent was not, the existent was not, darkness was hidden by darkness, that which became was enveloped by the void. And the creation hymn of the Rig Veda states, then even nothingness was not, nor existence. There was no air then, nor the heavens beyond it. What covered it? Where was it? In whose keeping? And it says, the one breathed windlessly and self-sustaining. There was that one then, and there was no other. At first, there was only darkness wrapped in darkness. And it says, that one which came to be enclosed in nothing arose at last, born of the power of heat. And then it says, in the beginning, desire descended on it. That was the primal seed born of the mind. And it's talking about stretch, stretching their cord across the void. And uh, the gods uh, themselves are later than creation. And then I got this in bold, so it might be important. By its inherent force, the one breathed windless darkness there was at first by darkness hidden. That which becoming by the void was covered. That one by force of heat came into being. I guess that just kind of repeated. I would have deleted that had I. Uh, right. <laughs> yeah. But so, so it's talking about, you know, the void and nothingness mm -hmm. um, being prior to all this, you know, so. Which uh, I, I would think they're just looking at it from a outside perspective I, I think that would probably make sense you know how it starts with really like the the bare bones basics and then kind of slowly builds up over time as time yeah. well, time progresses whatever that is <laughs> yeah well even even in the bible in the old testament the very first thing it's talking about was like in the beginning it talks about mm -hmm. there being the void and then and then there's you know Just darkness i think spirit then... spirit moved or something like that mm -hmm. i'm going trying by memory and then you know god said let there be light so light wasn't yeah. like the very first thing it was like mm -hmm. darkness and void before that and then okay. movement and then speech or, or intent you know mm -hmm. so yeah um and so i really wasn't going to talk a whole lot about zoroastrianism but Somebody seems to think it's the origin of the devil, and that uh, the first concept was in Zoroastrianism, which, uh, which they called the oldest religion, but I think that's debatable. <laughs> and they say Angra Manu yeah. later was called Araman, the destructive spirit or mentality that stands in opposition to Ahura Mazda, the supreme could, creator. Could but you, you get a little bit of dualism. Can you repeat mm -hmm. that again one more time? I'm sorry. Which part about uh, Angra Just Manu? the last sentence, Araman, yeah. Angra Manu later was called Araman. And it's the destructive spirit or mentality that stands in opposition to Ahura Muz Mazda, the supreme supreme creator. So there in Zoroastrian, Zoroastrianism, you do see like a duality and, and a good God. And like a that's so when things maybe started, um, I guess, though, even in Sumerian, you had the underworld and you had um, mm. kings of Egyptian. You had kings of underworlds and stuff, too. Sure, so. sure. Yeah, it's in... Yeah, and they thought Set was evil. So yeah. I mean, I don't know. We're well, I think the Armon connection is kind of interesting. It seems like it's. Uh, I always knew it by the other. Night. It's been so long since I looked into the last Um Agramanu, right? Is that how you pronounce it? Ag yeah, Agramanu. yeah. Okay, so and then there's or Aramon, and that mm -hmm. links to Rudolf Steiner's work with. Uh, Araman and he yeah. grew, he drew that picture of the of the entity and uh basically said that's an entity that's going to be incarnating down here at some point but that was you know years ago i think it's just been like this the whole time but or at least even right. when steiner was around it was a pretty rough time world war ii was going on and there's all sorts of crap before that so yeah but, steiner yeah. i was going to include him in the like theosophy section and stuff mm -hmm. like that but i i know you didn't react too too greatly to the steiner stuff well, no I, before, I, so. I no i think there's a lot of good steiner stuff i mean there's there's good stuff i just uh you know i i just think it's uh it's a setup by the system uh, yeah that's all i mean but yeah, yeah. just like all the others they still have value yeah i mean I, yeah. I may mention like blavatsky in here or crowley yeah. it's not like i'm a devotee mm -hmm. of those people mm -hmm. i'm saying hey people go, listen mm -hmm. this is the, what they're saying is the truth i'm just saying they're part of the the game characters or whatever if you want to call it a game or not but you know it's this uh Maybe they're part of the manipulation. Maybe they're part of the deception. I, sure, I don't know. Sure. I'm just you yeah. Know. I I think they're. I think it's all about just putting the the some truth and just mixing it in with a bunch of other things. Just what else is now? You know, that's what they all do. 
<laughs> when so. I was reading about New Age today on Wikipedia, and they were talking about how Blavatsky, because they were saying it's really hard to identify what it is, and there's different, mm. you know, beliefs in there. But they were really identifying Blavatsky as one of the main um, contributors to that whole thing. Oh and yeah, they, were, they mentioned yeah. Theosophy like right off the bat. So yeah, Blavatsky was an think, overlay. Mm, yeah. yeah, Blavatsky was pretty much the driving force uh, yeah. with lead lead beater. Mm -hmm. um, CW Leadbeater, and uh, there was a book. Uh, it's been a while since I looked at this stuff, but there is a book I ran across that talks about. Uh, there's a some verifiable things that were said by someone else, of course, that Blavatsky claimed as her own. And there's there's a lot of weird things with her and her whole yeah. little Tibetan trip and stuff. I, I think there's a lot of a lot of a lot of uh sensationalism and uh and you know she's there's a few things here and there. But overall I I I, 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 I think did, yeah. I did find reading her book. I mean I got like Isis unveiled mm -hmm. and I think there's another one. I can't remember the name of it, but um, I did find reading it pretty interesting. It was like talking about all the mythology and sure. she was very knowledgeable about all that stuff. I mean, whether it's the truth or not, I couldn't begin to yeah. tell you. But yeah, sure. Yeah, that um, was something I read years ago too. It's just uh yeah, I mean at the time it was it was definitely a good read. Yeah. But sure. obviously she's talking about Isis and Veil. She's talking about, you know, the moon goddess yes. Isis, which yeah. is a nana and one of the prime players in all of this, which mm -hmm. we've talked about before. But um I was going to go on next to the Kabbalah. Um, not a lot to say about it, but um, yeah, I just want to put out. Just want to say something really quick. Oh, just, yeah, just not. It just is just for the audience mainly. Wayne. Yeah. Just to clarify, yeah. I do not like Blavatsky. I, so <laughs> just to clarify, you know, right. I just want to make sure that is known. That's all. <laughs> well, I think a lot of the the people are are age. I don't want to say agents. They're just maybe they're just. Um, they're picked, maybe, you know, pick the, yeah, maybe they're not even the, aware. Maybe they have good intentions. Maybe they don't. Yeah. But possibly it just doesn't mean that everything they say is the truth. Like, I don't think everything I say is the truth. I mean, I'm bound to be wrong about certain things. And yeah. we all have our flaws. And yeah. um, no one like person our, is, is right about uh, everything. Yeah. It's just impossible. But it's, it's like you. It's been a while since I read her stuff. Mm -hmm. And I remember there were things that turned me off and, and maybe it was just my Christian upbringing, but she was, I know she was talking about Lucifer. Like when didn't she have like a journal? Yeah. The, Lucifer yeah, the Lucas something. trust. She, she oh, was the behind Lucas the Lucas trust. trust yes. And that's, and that's still going today. Yeah. Uh, and that, that has, I, uh, at least it did. I don't know if it still does. I'm, Cause I think they rename it. It was, was it initially, I think it was called Lucifer, Lucifer's trust. Yes. And then they changed the name. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Cause they were getting Lucis. pushed back. Yes. And uh, and then I, I know there's links to the UN, or there at least was, and I'm sure there still is because they're they were doing uh, global meditation days, and I yes, um, yes. I still see those pop up every once in a while. So I'm sure they're still linked with the UN, which is interesting, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it is. I wasn't going to mention that it was like, uh, since uh, you did. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so according to Wikipedia, and I'm probably going to butcher the the pronunciation of all this stuff, but it's I in an means nothingness, and this is according to Kabbalistic teachings. Before the universe was created, there was only a ion, and the first it's a y i n, and the first manifest sephira uh, wisdom comes into being out of ion, and it's ein sof or ein sof, uh, and Kabbalah is understood as God prior to any self manifestation in the production of any spiritual realm, um, called the endless one, and ein sof may be translated as unending or is there, there's no end or infinity. And it was first used by Azrael, who's sharing the Neoplatonic belief that God can have no desire, thought, word, or action, emphasized it by the negation of any attribute. Of the Ein Sof, nothing can be grasped. It is the origin of the infinite light of paradoxical divine self-knowledge. And then they talk about uh, the withdrawal of God to create an empty space and... Ein Sof is the emanator of the 10 Sephirots, which are energy em emanations found on the Kabbalistic tree of life. Name it too. So the Ein Sof, the popular. unknowable aspect of God is empty space, and this infinite emptiness is the emanator of all the energy emanations. And then there's this lecture by a rabbi, uh, I'm not going to give him this, this name, but uh, why not? Rabbi sure. Yitzhak Ginsburg begins by saying, 
we've learned that the soul, because I, you know, I don't know anything about this guy. I just, I found his quote interesting. I'm not oh, like yeah, trying to all. promote his work or anything. I'm um, just, he said, we've learned that the soul has three levels to it. The highest level of the soul, its absolute root is called I in the divine nothingness. And it materializes, uh, it teaches us that the divine nothingness is the mazal. Mazal is the shoresh, <laughs> the root of the soul. And in the glossary of his book, Body, Mind, and Soul, Kabbalah on Human Physiology, Disease, and Healing, he writes, the Baal Shem Tov teaches that the divine nothingness itself is the true mazal of the Jewish people. And this probably should be in another section. <laughs> but Israel Rigardi, author of many books about the order of the Golden Dawn, writes in What You Should Know About the Golden Dawn, quote, so far as concerns the boundless light, the Kabbalah teaches that it is an abstract and personal principle, an exalted condition of consciousness rather than substance, an essence or spirit which is everywhere and at all times expressed in terms of light. Though wholly impersonal in itself and without characteristics cognizable to our human minds, Ein Sof Or is to all intents and purposes what is commonly thought of God. In the system of Tibetan Buddhism, the concept analogous to this is the void, sunyata. The realization of the void by means of the processes of yoga and the technical meditations of the Shanga is to, quote, uh, the Tibetan Book of the Dead has to attain, quote, the unconditioned Dharmakaya or the divine body of truth, the primordial state of uncreatedness, um, Buddhahood. In man, the light is represented by a mighty activity within his soul, the intrinsically pure essence of mind, the higher and divine genius. Even the rituals incorporate the void, quote, thus at the altar, the pre- Three principal officers form about the can candidate a triad, representing, again, the supernal clear light of the void. And these, again, are represented by the number of the circum circumambulations, <laughs> end quote. And um, one last thing, the in the complete golden dawn system of magic, Israel writes the Quote, the ceremony of the neophyte in the outer order of the golden dawn will, on various considerations, remain one of the most important of the system because it corresponds to the first enunciation of the spiritual light in the void of the universal darkness. Now, I wrote a whole article in the void because I was looking for a way out of this matrix, and I thought, hey, this is beyond space and time. This is the beginnings before anything. Seems like a likely candidate, but I don't know. Maybe it's part of the, you know, all these religions are talking about it. Maybe it's part of the matrix. Maybe it's a, a miss, what's the word? Uh, you know, uh, the, direction. Yeah, misdirection. Yeah. So, so yeah. I don't know. I'm just, it's interesting one yeah, way or the other. It is. It is. Yeah, I think. Um, all right. We're, let's, uh, we're a little over an hour here. So, how about we take five minutes? Everybody relax. Wayne, take a break. And uh, we will see you all in a few minutes. Thank you for joining us. Perfect time we'll for be, break. I was we'll about be to back. get an Gnosticism. <laughs> Great. We'll time. be back in about five Alrighty. minutes with, with Gnosticism. Good. Thank you. All right.
Five, four, three, two, and Oh, you know what? Um, I'm sorry. I was talking yeah, and I had us muted. Oh. Okay. So, all right, everybody. So let me just redo that. All right, everybody. Welcome back. I apologize for that. Okay. So uh, before we hop into this next section, I just wanted to give a special thanks to the Last Timers Club members, that's AA, PKOSB, T, Lindley, Lone Traveler, Dave Larson, Miss Ellie, Vegan Skeptic, Shannon Jones, Mike D, Donna Gay, JJ Mormon, and Sugar Seas. Thank you so much for your continued support of the channel. And just a reminder, tomorrow is the Last Timers Club members live stream. So that'll be 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for our monthly uh, meeting for December of 2021 to close out the year. If anyone's interested in joining, feel free to check the um, pinned comment for a link. And Wayne, uh, let's get into Gnosticism. Thanks so much. Looking sure. forward to um, digging into this one. Yeah, it's going to take a little longer. Um, sure. I just want, I should have mentioned maybe at the beginning that um, I'm also going to do a critique of the soul trap theory, our own theory. Okay. That we, um, because it's it's not a religion per se, but it's a belief system it's or a, a philosophy at this point. And um, I'll, I'll critique it a little bit. Sure. And, um, 
sure. You know, it's a fair game, right? Of course. Yeah. T- take shots at other religions um, and other <laughs> philosophies. Why not our own? So stay tuned for that. Sure. <laughs> so at the very end, that's like a little carrot to keep people tuned in. <laughs> <laughs> so the Gnostic Christians were declared heretics by the mainstream church for their differing views on Jesus and their belief that this world is a prison. They were killed and their writings were destroyed until a repository of writings were discovered in a cave in Egypt in 1945. These writings are called the Nagamadi Library. They describe this false god and his archons, which is a Greek word that means rulers. Um, These archons are shadow beings created from the bile of his hate and jealousy, and they can shape shift and appear as what we call aliens, potentially, you know, grays, reptoids, Mm -hmm. insectoids, manis types, at least. I'm making this inference. I'm not saying the texts are saying all that, but um, I think you're right, man. It's just, we, we've seen so many of these different entities through times too. And some of them seem to stick around and are still here. And then there's other ones that are new, which we can, at least from a modern perspective can be, you know, interpreted, interpreted as aliens if they were here before or part of the system the whole time, who knows, but uh, they seem to be more recent because we don't really see them. We see the mantis a little bit in older uh, de- depictions, but the grays seem to come with uh, right when actually when Crawley was doing his thing yeah. with uh, Nam or Lamb. What was it? Lamb. Lamb. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, that that's an interesting thing in and of yeah. itself. If he yeah, we, manifested and connected that and brought that, that was, to our world. That was way before Whitley Strieber. I doubt that Strieber yeah. was verse. I know that like the um, Betty and Barney Hill case, some mm-hmm. of those were like before, but I think Whitley Strieber brought a lot of it into the mainstream. Attention yeah. And, and Crowley movie. was, you know, years and years before that. So, yeah. So we'll like in the next episode, um, when we do experiences, we're going to, I'll put uh, alien abductions and all that stuff. Right. We'll get into do commonalities between the light and the alien scene and mm-hmm. these and all that stuff. So that'll be interesting. Um, where was I anyway? <laughs> oh yeah. Because, because I think they, they feed off our life force and emotions such as fear, ecstatic frenzy, excitement, and even praise and worship. And they put false ideas in our heads and create illusions and hallucinations. They can even be heard by people. Such, um, some people as voices, Christians might call them demons. Muslims call them jinn. Everyone has a counterfeit spirit that's been assigned to them, according to these texts. And some call these guardian angels or spirit guides. Maybe that's new age. Thing, I, think. I don't know. But nah, there are tremendous spirit. parallels. Yes, we'll get into that. We'll touch <laughs> on the new age. There are tremendous parallels between the gods and stories of the Sumerian tablets and Gnostic texts. For example, major characteristics in common between the Gnostic Sophia and the Sumerian Nama are both regarded as first goddess, mother of all gods, created the world, created things in chaos, created the gods in the midst of heaven, all powers taken by her offspring and her power used to create the heavens and veil. Now, Gnosticism, here's how the Gnostic text, the Apocryphon of Thomas describes the monad or one. Quote, it has nothing over it and no Lord above it. Everything exists within it alone, illimitable since there is nothing before it to limit it, invisible since nothing has seen it, unutterable since nothing could comprehend it to utter it, for no one can understand it, is perfect in incorruptibility, its eternal realm is incorruptible, at peace, dwelling in silence, at rest, before everything. The one is a sovereign that has nothing over it, it is God and Father of all, the invisible one that is over all, that is incorruptible, that is pure light at which no eye can gaze. The one Mm. is the invisible spirit. We should not think of it as a God or like a God, for it is greater than a God because it has nothing over it and no Lord above it. It does not exist within anything inferior to it since everything exists within it alone. It is eternal since it does not need anything, for it is absolutely complete. It has never lacked anything in order to be completed by it. Rather, it is always absolutely complete in light. The one is illimitable since there's nothing before it to limit it, unfathomable since there's nothing before it to fathom it, immeasurable since there's nothing before it to measure it, invisible since nothing has seen it, eternal since it exists eternally, unutterable since nothing could comprehend it to utter it, unnameable since there is nothing before it to give it a name. The one is the immeasurable light, pure, holy, immaculate. The one is unutterable 
and is perfect in incorruptibility, not that it is part of perfection or blessedness or divinity, it's much greater. The one is not corporeal, nor is it incorporeal. And the Gospel of Thomas mentions uniting polarities. It says, they said to him, shall we then as children enter the kingdom? Jesus said to them, when you make the two one, and when you make the inside like the outside, and the outside like the inside, and the above like the below, and when you make the male and the female one and the same, so that the male not be male, nor the female female, and when you fashion eyes in the place of an eye, and hand in place of a hand, and a foot in place of a foot, and a likeness in place of a likeness, then you will enter the kingdom, end quote. Mm. So the paroma, in Gnosticism, the paroma is the fullness, and below it is the void, or kenoma, into which the spark or light of man has fallen or was stolen. Wow. Accor yeah, wow. according, well, they say that Sophia fell. Yeah. Sure. According to Wikipedia, the word itself is a relative term capable of many shades of meaning. According to the subject with which it's joined in the antithesis to which is contrasted, it denotes the result of the action of the verb pleuron. A pleuron is either to fill up an empty thing or to complete an incomplete thing. And it's the fullness of real existence in contrast to the empty void. So there's contrast between Gnosticism and um, most of the other religions, actually. Sure. Um, yeah. Like hermeticism, people think Gnosticism and Hermeticism, I mean, they're both Gnostic in a sense that they teach Gnosis and mm -hmm. stuff, but it seems like Hermeticism maybe is teaching that everything's connected, and but the Gnosticists are saying that, like they said, anything below it is, is I guess, corrupt. I don't know. Oh, yeah, it's but all, uh, all pure, There's this pure light, these eternal light realms. And, mm. uh, yeah. Anyway. So Gnosticism was its own distinct brand of Christianity, which grew out of the Egyptian mystery schools, most likely, and Greek philosophy, and emphasized knowledge and wisdom over faith. Some Egyptians and Gnostics, uh, specifically the Valentinians, favored the idea of an Ogdod. And Wikipedia says, quote, in the earliest stages of the evolution, we have eight primary ions consisting of the first Ogdod. Um, and they talked about depth and profundity, silence, depth and silence became become the cause through yeah. a process of emanation Depth and and a lot silence. Of this, yeah a lot of this came from my my article on the void so i'm talking a lot about nothingness and emptiness but um yeah that's great they they literally say nothing is nothing okay the swiss psychologist carl jung which i think they they actually mentioned him as being a huge part of the new age who had Gnostic leaning spoke of the Paroma as being simultaneous nothing and everything. In his seven sermons to the dead, he begins by saying, quote, the dead came back from Jerusalem where they found not what they sought. They prayed me, let them in and besought my word. And thus I began my teach and hearken. I begin with nothingness. Nothing is the same as fullness and infinity full is no better than empty. Nothingness is both empty and full. And he says, uh, a thing that is infinite and eternal hath no quality since it hath all qualities. This nothingness or fullness we name the pleroma. He says, in the pleroma, there is nothing and everything. So that's young. I mean, take it for what it's worth. Yeah, I um, think, um, yeah, I mean, yeah, I like Young's synchronicity work. And I like a few yeah. of the Red Book's awesome. Um, right. There are what? I, different I, archetypes and stuff. Oh, yeah, like yeah. Shadow archetypes, great. all that stuff. For sure. Um, I don't think I mentioned this. Maybe I did. So if I did, just feel free to stop me. Um, I was on a forum. I think it was a reincarnation forum or a past life regression forum or something like that. And, uh, you know, I was, like using my keywords. So like, I'll search reincarnation or, or whatever the heck I was searching that day. I don't even know. Um, but anyways, I, I ran across someone who talked about how some of Young's works and thoughts on reincarnation were not fully published, if at all. Wow. Um, and so then what was even more interesting is a guy came into the forum. I should try and dig this up and send it to you. It might take a little while, but I'll try and find it. And so he, he this guy shows up in the forum. Come to find out he is was like a like a 
I think like a curator for Young's family or something like that, mm -hmm. going through all the documents and things that weren't published. And yeah. he confirmed that, yeah, there was there was something he wasn't allowed to publish. Now, of course, we can go and theorize to the hills what the heck that was. But I found it interesting that it had something to do with reincarnation of all things. So, yeah, you well, know, it reminds me of the Gnostic texts themselves because they had to bury him. Um, when you're like when you've got like the ruling authority and we're going to say something that they don't necessarily agree with or don't want mm -hmm. to get out to the masses. Yeah. You know, you have to bury the text, I guess. I yeah, mean, and Young had same, massive publishing. You know, and yet in the and and uh, 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 Tibetan Buddhism, you had the same thing with uh, yeah that Sam, book. Samba, Samba Samba. I can't even say his name right now, but um, yeah. So yeah, it, no, so, that, so I, that that yeah. gives me a little more credence. It's like you know, if they're being persecuted mm -hmm. by this authority that seems to be doing you know, things that against our wishes or, you know. Yeah. And I mean that with that, with the, that book you're talking about, the Tibetan book, it, um, it just so happens to be like all about liberation. Yeah. Pamba Sabava. I mean, hello. I, have... I mean, yes. Exactly. Why is that being suppressed? You yeah. Know, it's That's, why, I mean, that was the Tibetan book of the dead. And then that other, yeah. it's got like a couple others, like that one seeing through naked awareness, mm -hmm. whatever that so, yeah, title yeah. was. Uh, liberation. Or, yeah. Seeing yeah, through yeah. naked awareness, liberation through naked awareness, yeah. something like that. Something yeah. like that. Right. Yeah. So the Gnostics spoke of a false God, a, a chief ruler named Yadavioth, who's called the Demiurge. And as the leadership on earth changed, the first chief ruler or Demiurge may have been on the first sky father. And, you know, so these names may have changed throughout the cultures or maybe even different people took on the role of the Demiurge. It might be like a position or something. I don't really mm -hmm. know. But um, so the Gnostic texts say that Sophia was an ion from source and accidentally created the Demiurge by mistake without her consort. It was not created in full and was described as a lion faced dragon. He thought he was the only being and proclaimed himself God. And Sophia realized her mistake and came down to inform the Demiurge. The Demiurge then surrounded Sophia and held her in chaos and stole her light power. Thus, the Demiurge was without spirit, perhaps a way of saying it was an AI creation or having sure. consciousness, but no soul. Sure. And here's one example of false light um, on the origin of the world. This is from the Nagamati. It says, quote, after the natural structure of the immortal beings had completely developed out of the infinite, a likeness then emanated from Pistis. It is called Sophia, which is wisdom. It exercised volition and became a product resembling the primeval light. So it's a copy of the real light. Mm -hmm. right? And immediately her will manifested itself as a likeness of heaven, having an unimaginable magnitude. It was between the immortal beings and those things that came into being after them. Like she functioned as a veil dividing mankind from the things above, end quote. And um, <laughs> yeah. The veil so it's like, above. I like reading the actual text because I don't want people thinking that I'm just saying sure. misinterpreting or saying stuff. Uh, yeah, no, and the Nag Hammadi is just incredible. Or just parry because if yeah. you try to paraphrase something, it, you lose some meaning. Yeah, yeah, and it, it's it's a lot of it there, a lot of it there. Definitely, my my Nag Hammadi's tabbed to the hills. <laughs> Yeah, so the, well, another Gnostic description is, um, quote, and what she had created became a product in the matter, like an aborted fetus, and it assumed a plastic form molded out of shadow and became an arrogant beast resembling a lion. It changed into a form of a lion-faced serpent, and its eyes were like lightning fires which flashed. And when she saw the product of her will, it was different. A model of a lion-faced serpent. Her eyes were like flashing fires of lightning. And another one says it changed into the form of a dragon with a lion's head and eyes flashing lightning bolts. And the last one says self-willed uh, uniteth itself with the rulers of the 12 ions and emanates a lion-faced power to plague Sophia. So um, that kind of covers it. Sure. Mm -hmm. right. And then it all, the text also mentioned these ionic copies. 
right? So you may be talking about like a simulation. AI yeah, yeah, simulation. Yeah. yeah. So like the Demiurge's heavens are a copy of the real heavens. It says, quote, and she established each of his offspring in conformity with its power after the pattern of the realms that are above. For by starting from the invisible world, the visible world was invented. End there quote. you go. There yeah. you go. So I the agree. Demiurge's yeah. realms are a copy of the real thing. Yeah. He's stolen light from Sophia. So they have no so they have light to use, right? Sure. And the the real lights from true source, according to them, and the and those light realms would be set up similarly, right? So he's um, yeah, and they uh, sorry, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Yeah, no, say? and I again we talked about this before, but I think it's this is a better time than ever to to bring this up again that you know, we see in in the DMT, ayahuasca, especially the breakthrough experiences, the high dose mushrooms sometimes, really high dose, um, and uh, past life regressions and pre birth memories. We we hear again that you know similar scenery. So if they're you know like megaliths, like something like Greek statue greek gods or rolling meadows and hills with flowers and big megalithic buildings type thing all sorts of different things <clears throat> and so you know it crosses over between here and there but you know for all we know it came from there and was brought here and it's just got that comparison uh that familiar sight to keep us entrenched in the matrix and lost so that's all i just wanted to yeah in there oh, yeah. i'm glad you did <laughs> so uh when sophia contemplated the stars she emitted the darkness fleeing what is subject to the r constants it's an invisible mold a principle of the insubstantial substance i just want to say sometimes they're they're putting words in brackets because they're guessing what the what the is. translation is because there's yeah. there's missed missing. And missing fragments and stuff yeah. and um it says uh so she emitted the darkness, fleeing what is subject to the archon, since it's an invisible mold, a principle of the insubstantial substance and the formless form, a shapeless shape. It makes room for every cosmic thing, the corrupt product, since it's a rational principle that persuades the darkness. He sows from his reason, since it's impossible for the archon of creation to see any of the eternal entities. He saw a reflection, and with reference to the reflection that he saw therein, he created the world. With a reflection of a reflection, he worked upon the world, and then even the reflection of the appearance was taken from him. It says, but Sophia was given a place of rest in exchange for her repentance. In consequence, because there was within her no pure original image, either pre-existing in him or that had already come to be through him, mm -hmm. he used his imagination and fashioned the remainder for the image belonging to Sophia is always corrupt, deceptive. But the archon, since he simulates and embodies by pursuing the image because of the superabundance that inclined downward, looked downward i know it's a little awkward and it's the sure. way it reads but um it's all right I, I'm, I'm with you on that one uh. yeah so it says now the ionic copies exist as follows they have not attained an equipotent form but they possess eternal glories and they exist as judgment seats for each of the powers but when souls are illuminated by the light within these copies and by the pattern which often arises effortlessly in them then she the soul thinks that she sees the truth and the eternal cause and the blessed idea that exists as the single unity each of the light that all there's some missing pieces and she whole anyway it's so mm. they're talking about inferior souls are trained by ionic copies which receive a replica of their souls while they are still in the world it goes pretty much into a lot of detail yeah about that's copies really and, deep that's really deep and, and yeah. you know and it coincides with the uh with i just don't want people to think i'm pulling this shit out of my ass you no, know <laughs> you're, you're, you're not you're not at all i think your your years of documenting all this stuff has proven that and anyone who you know, all I have to remember, go to your, go to Wayne's website, my friends, www.trickedbythelight.com. You can find a description. I mean, you can find it in the link in the description tab if you'd like. And after the show, we'll also put up the show notes. Did you save those today, Wayne? Or I have them right in front of me. So okay. um, 
Yeah. I'll put it up for a little while. I actually took down my page on religion, which this yeah. would be on. I took down my page on even science. I took down my page on, um, what was the other one? Politics. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be canceled, man. Mm -hmm. I mean, other people talk about politics and religion. Um, do I really need to? Because I, I, you know, there's not that many people talking about um, what happens after you die. And mm -hmm. it's from this respect here about the soul trap and all that so i don't think um i don't know i don't i don't know if you necessarily be canceled but you might you know get pushed back i mean the question is this you want to deal with that crap i guess right well it takes this i mean i go on a show and, and speak five hours or i hmm. say a bazillion words on a website i mean all they got to do is find one little paragraph yep. that they twist out of context and boom down, down goes the site there's hmm. an injunction whatever hmm. i just don't want to take that chance no, I, so, I don't blame um, you i don't blame you the the i i, I respect that decision uh, it's not my intent to hmm. um i don't know i don't I'm just trying to find the truth and I'm not trying to belittle anybody's religion. Like I said, I once was a Christian. I mean, you can arguably say I'm a Gnostic Christian now. I mean, I don't really know. I don't put labels and stuff. I don't follow any one religion, but yeah. I happen to believe a lot, a lot of this resonates with me. It's mm -hmm. maybe the truth. I don't know. Yeah. But yeah, a lot um, resonates with me too. So I'm not, so I'm not trying to attack anybody's personal yeah. religion or anything. I just, I just want to, look at hmm. the content and to yeah. say, Hey, does it make sense or not? Even though they are stuck in the matrix way. <laughs> you know, I sorry. Don't really know. <laughs> I'm sorry. Maybe I thought it was bad when, timing. <laughs> when, when I went on great Carl was show at the end, he asked me uh, what percentage I thought I believed in my theory. And I said, Oh, uh, 60%. You know, mm. I just don't know. It's a huge, vast cosmos out there. Mm. And I'm not the smartest person around. I mean, I may, be wrong I, we'll go into this when i critique the, the whole yeah well yeah well, so anyway we have um, to push back on that a little bit but oh, sure. that's fine that's cool um and obviously i i i lean this way i believe of course i mean this is if i have to make a you know a gun to the head is it or is mm. not this the truth i would have to say yeah but mm. it's not so cut i mean it kind of i don't think you'd make really a website that in depth right or, you know if you really weren't passionate about it and felt more on the side of it being the case but anyways yeah yeah and like i said i, I want to bring balance to it everybody's mm -hmm. saying go to the light go to the light mm -hmm. when you die it's wonderful and it's like you know i just want to bring say wait a minute let's hold the horses for a second let's yeah. consider the, the data is all i'm saying exactly man and that, and that's exactly oh. that's what i say to people who listen i say it doesn't even matter we can talk about all the weird details we can show all the examples but in the end of the day, all that stuff really doesn't matter because the decision that matters is when, what you're going to do when you die. So you can throw all this stuff away and just say, okay, well, I choose to take a sovereign approach just to see what happens. I you think know, that's the smartest that's thing. That's it. I mean, what's if, if we're right, then we've got total freedom, total yeah. sovereignty. If we're wrong, there ain't gonna be nothing you can do about it anyway. Yeah, so screw it's like it you might as well, yeah. might as well try, might yeah. as well go for it, right? Yeah, I, I think a the consensus. Somewhat sorry. respectful, humble mm -hmm. way. You know, you should, yeah. I don't think anybody should be just arrogant and go, I'm gonna go tear down the dim I mean, no. if you want to, no. if you want to go for it, man. But it's like I just think you're enabling this is I mean, you're you're perpetuating because I think this is all like uh, from consciousness. I mean, mm -hmm. Max Planck talked about consciousness being, I mean, you get in, the, in these Eastern religions too. It's all about consciousness and awareness. And mm -hmm. I think uh, we can get into it later, but a lot of them teach that this is just a, a fabrication. It's a hallucination. It's, it's not real. And so if you keep perpetuating that belief, then you're going to keep perpetuating the reality of it. So yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Very good points. Yeah. Very good points. So yeah. anyway, in the Gnostic text, uh, Pista Sophia, it's written, quote, she, Sophia, had been deluded through the self or through the godlike self-willed demiurge and had not been deluded through anything else save through a light power because of its resemblance to the light in which she had had faith. So that's pretty, I apologize, uh, Wayne. I got to turn off my camera. It keeps coming back and forth with this error with the with a uh, you got the Aurora Borealis right. behind yeah. you or something. <laughs> eh? <That's good. laughs> yeah. All right. I'm going to turn off my video for a little while, but I'm still oh, here. Oh, yeah. That, that's cool, man. Yeah, I'm just getting the notifications on the stream. Yeah. So she had uh, 
been diluted um, through a light power because of its resemblance to the light in which she had had faith. And here's a quote from the secret book of John, which is also a Gnostic text from the Nagamati library, quote, Yada Bayath, Demiurge, said to the authorities, archons, with him, come, let us create a human being after the image of God and with a likeness to ourselves, so that this human image may give us light. That I mean, gives us light. And that sounds so much like the Bible, too, like created in our image. Created in his, our, our image, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's like... Uh... <laughs> Almost exactly the same. <laughs> like Jordan Maxwell and others have said, well, you know, they're saying, let us create us. Well, who is mm -hmm. us? You know, is it the angels? Is it, um, you know, whatever? Yeah, so, it's, it, it's interesting how you, you brought him up. And then we're talking about also the solar myth and how he's all on board with that stuff. But yeah, he's, I did he's... not include that part in this <laughs> in the notes, but okay. I can. I can go over it. Yeah, too, no, no. I is. just thought I'd throw it in there because, uh, you know, Ma I, I interviewed Maxwell twice. And, uh, you know, he said some things, uh, on the stream that, you know, I, sh this was, you know, a few years ago and I was kind of new to interviewing people and stuff. And I just only had a little bit of time with him and I, I, sh I meant to say it in the moment and I did it, you know, he was peddling the Anunnaki gold thing and the Sitchin mm. stuff and, you mm. know, and, and. And then I found out a lot more stuff about him. But the point is, is he's got some really good stuff. And then he's got the really, really questionable stuff. But yeah, yeah. I like how he, yeah. he mentioned um, well, Hollywood. Actually, false stuff, I should say. How, how the Hollywood, that the wand was always made out of Hollywood. Holly tree, and yep. the, Holly, the wood of the holly tree. And um, so, yeah, he's got a lot of Yeah, he's really got a lot of good stuff. stuff. Yeah, he's got and the interesting stuff. thing about him, because I read, I remember him when he was on like Art, Art Bell and stuff like that. And he would, he supposedly came from a family of, I believe, judges and, well, I mean, people that were like deep into the system. And he would sit around and he would listen to their conversations, right? Mm. So it's not like he's just a researcher. I mean, he's got some inside. Oh, yeah. There's, yeah. He's, I, actually, there's a lot of stuff I can tell you about him, but we'll yeah. leave that oh, out yeah. for another time. We'll, Take a yeah, note well, and tell you some stuff. It'll, well, when we get to Christianity, away. if you remind me, when we get to Christianity, we can revisit the, the solar myth and how, sure. you know, Jesus is the son of God mm -hmm. and walks on the water and, you know, that all goes into the uh, uh, winter solstice and all this stuff. But we can touch on it when I Great. get there. So, uh, Yahweh the Oth said to the authorities with him, come, let us create a human being after the image of God and with a likeness to ourselves, so this human image may give us light. And in the secret book of John, the revelation of the mysteries hidden in silence, it says, because she had unconquerable power, her thought was not unproductive. Something imperfect came out of her, different in appearance from her, because she had created it without her masculine counterpart. She gave rise to a misshaping being unlike herself. And Sophia saw what her desire produced, and it changed into a form of a dragon with a lion's head, which we already went over. Mm -hmm. um, the shadow perceived that there was one stronger than it. It was jealous, and when it became self-impregnated, it immediately bore envy. And this is a direct quote, too. Since that day, the principle of envy has appeared in all of the ions in their worlds, but envy was found to be an aborted fetus without any spirit in it. It became like the shadows in a great <laughs> watery substance, end quote. And mm. when the arrogant one took a portion, he sowed it. He placed powers and authorities over it, and he confined it within the mortal realms. Mm. So, um, yeah, I mean, we're talking light and shadow and um, ruling and Rule, all yeah. that stuff yeah. lying a little place. hierarchy up in here yeah so the gnostic texts describe the shadow beings quote now the eternal realm of truth has no shadow outside outside it for the limitless light is everywhere within it but its exterior is shadow which has been called by the name darkness from it there appeared a force presiding over the darkness and the forces that came into being subsequent to them called the shadow the limitless chaos for, you know, this may tie into the void too. I mean, the void may be what they're talking about, the shadow limitless. Very, but, yeah, see, the very void, but the limitless. void is not, it's it's a misnomer. The void is not dark, it's darkness and light. So, mm. anyway. Well, people, the darkness makes up the, the light. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. It may be that you don't have, you can't perceive, uh, it may, the vibration may be too high yeah, or the, something. The frequency. You just perceive it as, as yeah. darkness. Yep. Yeah. So um, it says, and the forces that came into being subsequent to them called the shadow of the limitless chaos. From it, every kind of divinity sprouted up together with the entire place, so that also shadow is posterior to the first product. It was the abyss 
that it appeared deriving from the aforementioned pistis. Now matter is made of the bile of the shadow. Now as for that jealousy, it was found to be an abortion without any spirit in it, like a shadow. It came into existence in a vast watery substance. Then the bile had come into being out of the shadow, was thrown into a part of chaos. Uh, so, mm. yeah, I don't know. That's interesting about yeah. the, all that stuff, I thought. And, oh, um, that's a, that was a good one to bring up. Fair. Sure. And here's one that talks about uh, now all this came to pass according to the forethought of Pistis in order that man should appear after his likeness and should condemn them because of their modeled form. And their <laughs> modeled form became an enclosure of the life. And oh. it is they who were taken captive according to their destinies by the prime parrot. And they were shut into the prisons of the modeled form until the consummation of the age. I mean, there's no doubt that Gnosticism, at least some of the texts are talking about spot on. Just being a prison yeah. and, and they're stealing our light and yeah. capturing it and using it. Nothing and, to see there, Wayne. Yeah. So it's not like, you know, <laughs> the matrix wasn't like the first movie to, or I mean, maybe in the first movie, but it's not like it just came out of nowhere. Yeah. I mean, this, all this stuff has been around for, for. Yeah. I mean, I think uh, the, those movies, the cube, uh, that I think the first one was in the late sixties that showed a lot there was some twilight zones that showed a lot uh, you know obviously different versions of the interpretation but uh nonetheless it's it's been out there for quite yeah. some time and so another it says uh, a veil exists between the world above and the realms that are below and shadow came into being beneath the veil and that shadow became matter now here's a section body as a container of light and he answered and said, yes, but if you wish that he not be able to ruin our work, come, let us create a human being from the earth, according to the image of our body, according to the likeness of this, of this being to serve us so that wherever this being sees his likeness, he may become enamored of it. Then he will no longer ruin our work, but we shall make those who are born from the light our servants through all the time of this age. <laughs> so, and they fashioned their, their fashioned bodies became fences for the light enclosures for the light whatever mm -hmm. um so right in our it's face. pretty yeah and there's also this uh the gnostics uh call the virgin of light there's a virgin of light in the text and it's like a judge and there's like these seven maidens or judges but um i don't know maybe i'm getting that confused Got another Manich seven Manichians. again yeah but we're all born with what the Muslims call the uh, Karan. Gnostics call it the counterfeit spirit. For Gnostics, we were born with three things, counterfeit spirit, soul, and light power. And most psychologists call the counterfeit spirit the ego. You will not be able to remove the counterfeit spirit. All that can be done is to make it powerless. This according to my friend. I don't know. Who knows? I, I think that's spot on. I think that's <laughs> pretty says, close. Yeah. Deny your selfish acts. Follow the light power inside you, and the counterfeit spirit will wither away and have no influence over you. I mean, that's a lot of what Castaneda mm. was saying, too. Yeah, with, um, good point. Discipline yeah. And, and everything. So Yeah, really good point. Yeah, I think it's just it goes back to, you know, your authentic true spirit essence which kind of um sh you know dare i say it shines more as you awaken and the soul which you know is always misinterpreted as spirit here um being the you know the the attachment the parasitic attachment that kind of just comes with us when we're born or right before we're born and possibly over multiple lifetimes and it edits itself you know to the new life script that you have after each incarnation and then you go into a new one and it's you know i think i think it that that same parasitic spirit uh attachment attaches itself and it just kind of the script has changed that's all and then you know it's it's a, a, a battle of the you know the matrix attachment soul and then our true spirit and they're just colliding with each other and it's like who is gonna you know win it out or is the matrix uh parasitic attachment gonna win or are you gonna wake up and start to overpower that it's yeah, it's almost like that movie the host that we mentioned from andrew nicole which did truman show so mm -hmm. yeah a lot of, par a lot of parallels uh, there truman um, show is just oof. So the overview of all this is that if you do not integrate your own light, it's taken back and put into the collective treasury of light. And maybe just maybe the collective is the treasury, but since no one's reported ever getting past that point, maybe their light power is taken away until the next incarnation, which 
kind of like what you're saying right there, mm. then merging would be to voluntarily give your power up. It has to be deception to make the humans do it with free will. It is not the true light. It's just the collective light for that realm, or maybe even stations with them in a realm now. But Absolutely. Yeah. The, the texts talk about these uh, servitors. Mm -hmm. It says, uh, now, therefore, the rulers seal the counterfeiting spirit to the soul so that it does not agitate it every hour, making it do all sins and all iniquities. And they give commandment, moreover, unto the counterfeiting spirit, saying, if the soul comes out of the body, do not agitate it, being assigned to it and transferring it to all the regions of the judgments, uh -huh. region by region, on account of all the sins which thou hast made it do, in order that, see, this all the sins that Unreal. it made you do, in Unreal. order that it may be chastised in all the regions of the judgment so that it may not be able to go on high to the light and return into changes of the body. So they're like antagonizing us, trying to get us to, so they can hold it against us later. Of course, you know? of course. It's, 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 it's just, it's so pervasive, Wayne. It's just it, it, all over the place. And uh, according to Gnosticism, at least. Well, that's, uh, I mean, according to Gnosticism, but also just us kind of looking at these things and and uh how like well we can go down the whole list of all the things we look at near-death experiences pre-birth yeah. memories but all we go on and on and on about that stuff so, and so, how we see this you know this overarching uh thing wanting to control the person who's having the experience yeah and this will tie into the new age stuff too because it's, mm -hmm. it's like this Merging. means all these spirit guides who take people all over heaven it's yeah. actually your enemy because it's your counterfeit spirit yeah. and the archons told the counterfeit spirit to pretend and be nice when the soul comes out of the body so they'll follow it around <laughs> so because this quote right here the retri the retributive servitors follow the soul being witnesses to it for all the sins which it commits that they may convict it in the judgments end quote um and then they talk about purification. Part of, their, part of their system is all about purifying the light. So it's like, it says, this is from Pista Sophia too. And it says, uh, I want to say it's chapter, God, I think I, I erased that somehow. I think it's like chapter 25. But it says, quote, and Melchizedek, the receiver of the light, purifies those powers and carry their light into the treasury of the light, while the servitors of all the rulers gather together all matter from them all, and the servitors of all the rulers of the fate and the servitors of the spear, which is below the eons, take it and fashion it into souls of men and cattle and reptiles and wild beasts and birds and send them down into the world of mankind. Mm. And further, the receivers of the sun and the receivers of the moon if they look above and see the configurations of the paths of the ions and the configuration of the fate and those of the sphere then they take from them the light power and the receivers of the sun get it ready and deposit it until they hand it over to the receivers of Melchizedek, the light purifier, and the material refuse they bring to the sphere, which is below the ions, and fashion it into the souls of men, and fashion it also in the souls of reptiles and of cattle and of wild beasts and of birds, according to the circle of that sphere and according to all the configurations of its revolution. And they cast them into this world of mankind, and they become souls in this region, as I've just said unto you, end quote. Oh. I mean, that's just outlining the whole yeah. system right A there. A to Z. Um, A to Z. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. chapter 102 of Pista Sophia says, Of the proclamation of the disciples, Jesus continued again in the discourse. This is what Jesus talking. And mm -hmm. said unto his disciples, quote, When I shall have gone into the light and herald it unto the whole world and say unto them, Cease not to seek day and night and remit not yourselves until you find the mysteries of the light kingdom, which will purify you and make you into refined light and lead you into the light kingdom. No, thank you. <laughs> and the Savior answered and said unto Mary, Quote, if they receive the mystery when still in life, and if they come out of the body, they become light beams and light streams and penetrate all the regions until they reach the region of their inheritance. But if they're sinners and they come out of the body and have not repented, and if you perform for them the mystery of the ineffable, in order that they may be removed out of all the chastisements and be cast into a righteous body, which is good, and inherit the light kingdom, or is brought into the last order of the light, then they will not be able to penetrate the regions because they do not perform the mystery themselves but the receivers of melchizedek follow them and lead them before the virgin of light and the ser servitors of the judges of the rulers make frequent haste to take those souls and hand them over from one to the other until they lead them before the virgin of light 
I mean, that kind of reminds me of the whole near-death experience with sure. light and going before this feminine, possibly energy. Um, I don't know. Yeah, no, I, I see that. Yeah. As the parallels to transmuting the shadow into light, one of the Emerald Tablets talk about, which um, I may touch on a little bit later. But um, right. according to my friend, that? he says, so we're, um, we have the counterfeit spirit that's influencing and recording inside of us and is rarely seen. And um, these retributive receivers and servitors. So we're born composed of soul, a counterfeit spirit and light power, and destiny is assigned to us. As we grow, retributive servitors help to help the counterfeit spirit at times to ensure the soul to sin. And when we die, these retributive servitors and counterfeit spirit make up the experience that you deal with in NDEs. They know your weakness and they know what pictures to show to appease you at a minimum. They are the lower level entities that human humanity deals with as being a separate conscious. They are the voices, astral beings, shadow people, aliens, channeled entities. They cause turmoil to gain energy and cause the human to sin. The ultimate being those that kill themselves or kill others because of their influence influence between the counterfeit spirit and the servitors they already know you pretty well and probably have developed a scenario to try and win you over he says the virgin of light is an archon i was asking him he's like <laughs> the virgin of light's an archon if you read nungal's hymn she allowed all those that were good to become immortal if the virgin of light sees you have found the mystery she allows you to go to the realm before the eternal light realms so Oops, sorry there's um this is, quote, it will snatch your way out of all the regions in which it is and lead it to the region of the midst before the Virgin of Light. And the Virgin of Light prove it and seize the sign of the kingdom of the ineffable, which is on that soul. So, I mean, they may have this, they may be playing this God game where they, you know, like the Sims or something, and then, you know, come before me. And then maybe they let some beings graduate and go on. Who knows? I mean, yeah. are you going to take that chance? I'm not. No, but, hell no. Um, and... Honestly, I think uh, I with the sophistication of how well everything is set up here and my very base, base, base knowledge of what the hell is going on in the astral realm, these are it is a massive operation going on be beyond our anyone's comprehension. And so I look at it as this way in this kind of perspective that if um, I'm the chief Pumbaa, because that's how I kind of like to look at all this stuff. Like if I was some parasitic piece of shit, how would I try and control as many spirits as possible, as many creator beings as possible to have them bend to my will and just be drones? I would run it like this. So, but what I would do also is in order to keep them in the system, I would give them the illusion that they have graduated and have like another realm. Yeah, another realm somewhere over there. You know, it might be a little cooler. Or the whole landscape will be different, but you know, it'll still maybe be like a physical louche farm that you end up incarnating to. And got to have that opium. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then and then you end up going through that whole thing again. You know, you just say, oh, you, oh, well, you know, you you did bad last time, so we got to send you back. Oh, the same old song and dance. I would just keep it going on and on and on. I mean. Really, if you, if you if you look at all this stuff, is if you're in the driver's seat of these nasty archonic scumbags, then uh, yeah, it makes it easier to see like you know how, why you what would, would you do if you were there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, sense. it's the best approach. Yeah, yeah. So that's all. And. So the uh, Apocryphon of John says, and the whole ion of the chief archon trembled and the foundations of the abyss shook and of the waters, which are above matter, the underside was illuminated by the appearance of his image, which had been revealed. And when all the authorities and the chief archon looked, they saw the whole region of the underside, which was illuminated and through the light, they saw the form of the image in the water. So here's check out this. Um, this is Manichaean. It's not Gnostic per se, but it's called the hymn of the captivity of light. <laughs> and it says, quote, she seizes and binds the light in the six great bodies in earth, water and fire, plants and animals. She fashions it in many forms. She molds it into many figures. She fetters it in a prison so that it may not ascend to the height. She weaves a net around it on all sides. She piles it up. She sets a watchman over it. 
So Good Lord. the Manichaeans were another group that, that believed in this, this prison of the light and all that. True. I wanted to add something. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, I got a, uh, I got a comment here and it just, uh, before we move on. And then there's some questions I'm putting aside too for later. Um, but this mm -hmm. one, let's see. I'm sorry. I don't know how to pronounce your name. Um, anyways, uh, says I see. I would like to add something. In the Islamic tradition, there are these two angels who are recording your misdeeds every moment and will be your angels at death. These bastards are telling us right to our faces. Also, the Quran mentions the jinn, who are invisible beings that also eat and drink. Eat and drink our spirit energy? Question mark. Jinn were created from the smokeless fire. And he says, yeah. can you just tell Wayne that you, the two angels, demons, stay with you until you yes. die and are recording your misdeeds throughout your life? Yeah, it's the same thing. Yep. And I haven't gotten to Islam, and I don't, I'm going to talk a lot about that about that religion. I'm a yeah, little, I remember I told I'm a little scared, I'm a little scared to do so, to be honest. But um, No, I hear uh, you. I hear you. But yeah, they, they say the same thing. And I did mention the jinn. I said they were like the Islam... Um, demons of yeah. christianity and the Gnostic, and you know i was talking about the galu and the shades and all that stuff and how they, they yeah anyway oh, so yeah that, thank you for sharing that i mean that's it's yeah i, I wish dead, um, i was gonna say dead on it's probably a bad choice yeah no it, it is because it, i was talking to and i told you about the the guy who used to share a bunch of stuff and was living in a muslim family and if you're out there brother i hope you're doing well i was a little worried about you 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 left out of nowhere and deleted your reddit account and uh discord account um i just hope you're okay and uh i learned a lot from him wayne i mean he yeah. he talks about how you know the simulation and the archon all that stuff is just baked right into the cake with islam and he he helped teach me a lot and and we're seeing further confirmation too um i wish i could pronounce your name i apologize but uh just, yeah, well, there was this guy I used to work with, a really nice guy, and we talked a lot about. I knew I saw that he's in a religion, so I, I really respect. I knew we could talk about a lot of stuff, and so, but he was uh, Muslim, and not like a, I don't know, fundamentalist Muslim. Um, I think it's Ahmadiyya or something like that. I can't remember the name of the, the sect or whatever. But um, I was telling him about all this stuff, and he tells me one day he's like out of the blue. He tells me about Star Trek Voyager, the episode Coda. <laughs> this was like. 10 years ago, 12 years, I don't know how long ago it was, but it was a while okay. back. And I was like, my jaw, when I watched it, it's like, holy cow, man. And then, then like later, he was asking me how, how difficult it was for me to leave Christianity, because obviously he was thinking very hard about, about leaving Islam. And But to this day, he's still, as far as I can tell, he's still, um, you know, pretty deeply into the Islamic, which is fine, you know, but um, I... I one of the things I wanted to mention while it's on my mind is that a lot of these religions like Christianity or Islam, it's like a lot of the time you're a product of the family you grow up in or Absolutely. the region that you're born up. Like, like these Christians that, that are devout Christians. And a lot of the times it's because their family, not always, but sometimes it's because their family are, or the friends or somebody influenced them. But if they were born into an Islamic country with surrounded by into an Islamic family, surrounded by Islamic friends and culture, they would most likely be a Muslim today. And Absolutely. that's just the numbers bear this out, you know? So yeah. And with what we know about, you want to touch, do you want to finish anything else on that? No, that's no it. I just wanted to add, like, just with how early childhood development works, how we're just these sponges for information and our surroundings, that alone, you know, it doesn't matter if whatever environment you grow up in, whatever uh, surroundings you're, you're hearing, whether it's from your parents, your teachers, your um aunt your uncle grandparents friends friends parents doesn't matter what it is you are a sponge for information you're just taking it in taking it in and taking it in and then it's gonna help be a catalyst for for the bulk of people their entire adult lives until they die and then you have the people like us who question 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 and don't accept those things and we get out of the the haze that we're in at some point and continue to question, question, question until we die. So, um, yeah, I mean, you're, you are a product of your environment and, and that's scientific. There's, there's, there's no, with that, there's no debating. You may have some, you know, uh, subconsciously been 
questioning things because I know I was one from a very young age saying this doesn't make sense. This doesn't make sense. I was peer pressure is real. (laughs) Absolutely. Comply, 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 comply. This is the way it is. You're supposed to go through this narrative, blah, 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 blah. blah. And uh, it's so easy to get lost. That's why the whole NPC thing is weird for me. It's 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 human nature to want to be accepted into a group and have others like you. And if you don't tow the party line, so to speak, then you get ostracized in some cases. And um, the other thing I want to mention, maybe while I'm thinking about it, I don't think I put it in here, is that a lot of the things I have issues with are like mainstream fundamentalist denominations of religions, where it's the authority, where I'll get into Christianity later, but the kings are throughout the whole thing. And um, and what I, I... give them more respect for what are called like mystic type sex, you know, mm. and every group has them, you know, in Christianity it's the Gnostics yeah. and in Islam, I think you've got the Sufis, Sufis like Rumi yeah. has some inter- really good stuff. And then, uh, and, and, um, as opposed to Judaism, something you've got the Kabbalah. Mm-hmm. They've got a lot of mystic. Um, I read from some of that. And yeah, you have so the Protestants, you have the, all sorts and then, of different things. Well, and you have the Tibetan. Well, that's Buddhists. not mysticism, I mean, so. But, yeah. yeah sorry, I kind of trailed off there for but, a minute. But group, oh, the, the, yeah, the Protestants yeah. are. No. Yeah. But like in Tibetan Buddhism, but you'll have these groups that are kind of, they go off the beaten path and they get um, persecuted for it. Mm-hmm. And so I put a little more emphasis in, on that. Uh, anyway. The Cathars, just a, Gnostics, just to the I side. like those. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, so we're coming up on the, well, actually we're past the second hour. Is there anything you want, you want to finish off on something here? Good time to take a break. Yeah. Let me just read just one last sure. paragraph yeah. where, from the Gnostic text where it says, well, we can keep going about, if you want. No, 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 no that's <laughs> fine. And Sophia, they're talking about Sophia and it says immediately her will manifested itself as a likeness of heaven. And with the wish that substance should come into being like the light that first existed, immediately her wish appeared as a heavenly likeness with an incomprehensible greatness. Immediately her wish appeared as a heavenly likeness with an incomprehensible greatness. And they also say, quote, Sophia saw what her desire produced. It changed into the form of a dragon with a lion's head. And so anyway, it's talking about wishing and desire that you have to be careful with your, with these things, your intention and all that. Oh so, yeah. The, the intention important. and that, and that's why I think having that intention to be sovereign when we leave here is the safest bet because we are creator beings and I just, I am not taking any chances. Remember, you can always change your mind. That's why, again, I keep saying that because I say it for a reason, because it's, you know, I would imagine, obviously, you know, you agree with me, Wayne. It's just, it's like, play it safe. That's all. Just play it safe. You don't yeah. have to believe shit. You don't have to believe anything. Nothing we yeah. say here. And this will be a good segue into the next section, which is going to be basically Christianity. But is it, even the Quran identifies God as light. There's a, yep. I think, uh, yeah, a Sudoth. I can't I remember <laughs> what they call these things. It's like the Sudoth or something. This says, um, quote, God is the light of the heavens and the earth. And that's the Quran 2435. So anyway, right. we, yeah, we'll, we'll get into Christianity in the next section. All right, my friends, Wayne, thank you. Audience, thank you so much out there. We're going to take five and a half minutes. So go take a stretch break, uh, grab some water, do what you got to do. And we will see you back here in, in a few short minutes. Thank you so much. Thanks, Wayne. Sure. Yeah, I'm trying to find my microphone. I don't know what happened to it. <laughs> I think it fell off. You heard, you're able to hear me on it?
Hey, how you doing over there, Wayne? Oh, pretty good. You know, I went. To, I did a whole section without my microphone on. It was like laying over on my table. Oh, uh, well, it sounded good. Okay, cool. Yeah, sounded fine. Okay, I'm I'm adding in the uh, Jordan Maxwell thing here. All right. Okay. You need a, another minute or two? Or are you all right? 
Um, give you a little bit longer. Kurt, you got anything to talk about when you come in? Um, okay, here it is. Um, I'll just add it like. Uh, I could shoot the ship for a minute if you need. Yeah, let me just, I'll throw it in right here and then save it and refresh and we'll be good. Huh, take, take so, your time. Yeah, go ahead. All right. We're good. Five, four, three, two, and one. Okay. All right, everybody. Welcome back to Forever Conscious Research Channel. Thank you for sticking with us. And it's great to have you. And we're moving into, I don't know, what is this, segment three, I think, when? <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> Something like that. I think it's, uh, yeah. Okay, so. Sounds about right. Um, yeah, I am collecting questions for later. And I just want to let the audience know out there that if you do have any questions for Wayne, feel free to pop them in there. And if you can grab my attention by doing the at thing that would be great but i'm still trying to keep an eye on the text as it flies by and uh copy and paste them in the notepad to ask wayne later so um yeah uh so uh where where we had it wayne well in the christianity and you know I've, i had my microphone sit over here on the table while the whole last segment and i didn't put it on my shirt so that's, well, you know so... happened to you happened to me so yeah <laughs> I don't know if there's other play, other forces at work here, but I don't know. Maybe I'm just forgetful. <laughs> so um, Christianity, um, there's um, John 1.5. Uh, there's it says, this is the message we have heard from him and announced to you that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. And in John <laughs> yeah, sure. 8.12, this is again, Jesus spoke to them saying, I am the light of the world. So there, um, and also King James version, Isaiah 45, seven, it says, I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord do all these things. So, you know, obviously they they may not be talking about the true God, like mm -hmm. the Gnostics were talking about that one that's invisible and you can't see And here. They're talking about their God is, is light that you, you know, you can see. So, um, for what it's worth. And of course you got, um the, the and no wonder for satan himself masquerades as an angel of light i don't know how that one slipped in there but <laughs> in corinthians uh that's yeah, yeah. do you ever see that um uh, i think it was like a, a claymation like a mark twain claymation on lucifer you ever see that no no i haven't oh, let me write that down for you i'm gonna send that to you yeah. it's from the funny thing is, is I saw the the whole thing as a kid, and it, you know it basically shows how um, the cycle of life and death. I'm just trying to come off the top of my head, so I don't know. If I'm gonna say it exactly right, but uh, shows the cycle of life and death, and. Uh, how uh you know everything is an illusion and uh and it's all in this really creepy claymation thing and i think it was from the late 80s but anyways you know i don't want to go too far off track with that but um it was really really interesting i'll try and put that in the description tab if i can run a if i run across yeah, it'd be interesting it. to watch and, it but... uh, i'll also email it to you from what I remember, Lucifer seems like it was a creation of the church. Like they had yeah. ascribed Lucifer to Venus. And if I remember correctly, which I probably didn't, it was like some kind of mistranslation of uh, Jerome, yeah. the text in Jerome or something like that. And how Lucifer, Helio or something. I can't remember the words. But, yeah, I mean. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I had a, I had a really good book um, about, it was like the story of Lucifer or the history of Lucifer or something like that. But it's been so long since I've read it. But um yeah, I think anyway, th mm -hmm. there's so much manipulation that's that's been done that's hard to trace all these entities throughout time. If there even is, I mean, there probably is a Lucifer. Well, I, I mean, don't know about I, the devil. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think it's just like a, a representation of of the archonic forces, you know, just because uh, yeah. I, I don't like to just subscribe that there's just one pulling all this off i mean there's the whole big operation going on and 
Whether, yeah, there's someone, some being at the top of the pyramid, who cares what the hell the name is? Who cares right, what right. all these other things are that are attached to it? The point is, it's happening. And, you know, we're having the wool pulled over our eyes with all these illusions. And that that's what I really um, uh, was, that what I really liked about how uh, this showed it. So, yeah, it's... Uh, the title of it is called The Mysterious Stranger from the Adventures hmm. of Mark Twain. And the, the clip actually um, aired on TV, and it, it shows these kids just basically being taken for a ride by an illusion. And mm -hmm. it ended up being banned, I think, after the first time it aired, uh, yeah. if I recall correctly. I mean, it's it's been a while. So let me just pop this in here. And uh, I'd love to play it for you guys, but uh, oh, I remember as a Christian when I was researching, I, I had heard that in Freemasonry, which I'm not going to talk about in here, but since we're mm -hmm. talking about, I'm mentioning it. Um, they said that you get to the 32nd, 33rd degree, they give it like a sermon or a lecture in each one. They it, supposedly from an ex member, right? That supposedly they find out that Lucifer is God, right? Mm -hmm. Or God is Lucifer, right? And um, but I don't know. Anyway, the word yeah, Lucifer. No, it I believe, seems is from they a... openly say that too. I mean that that I mean that I think that's spot on from what I can tell. Well, I, I know there's there. quotes from like Albert Pike and yeah. all the and and uh, what's the other Man, Manly P. Hall. Mm -hmm. They a lot of them literally say it basically. Um, but yeah, they Lucifer, build them up to it. Lucifer is a Latin word, I believe, and it means light bearer. Light bearer. Some say light bringer, but I think it's bearer because the the fur, like if something's coniferous, it's, it's bearing a cone. Anyway, um, so yeah, when I started looking into the different religions, I was looking on Wikipedia just to get a just base level thing, and I was reading about Buddha, I was reading about Krishna, I was reading about these the major religions, mm -hmm. and I realized I saw that all of them were princes you know they're all yeah, isn't that from the royal family and the royal family's out disseminating these yeah. these major religions to buy into yeah. and so I, I wrote all major mainstream religions were given to humanity by princes of the elite royal families or nobility krishna was a prince <laughs> Buddha was a prince. Moses was supposedly found by the Pharaoh's daughter and raised in the Pharaoh's court as, you know, the movie Egyptian Prince. Burke's peerage says the Queen of England is descended from Muhammad and the royal family also believes they are descended from Jesus, who was, uh, as the Messiah, would have been expected to come from the line of King David. And there's the whole thing, you know, the king and all that kind of stuff that they put on him. And, and the king, you have the King James version of the Bible and the very uh, first I was going to get off the t on another subject here, but the first three verses of Genesis declare, quote, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth and the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep and the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters and God said, let there be light and there was light. So this is the creation story of God from the Old Testament. He's creating, this going over how he created heaven and earth. And so it mentions a formless void and darkness, and then spirit moves, so there's vibration. And then God spoke, so there was sound. And then finally, light is mentioned as a product of voice and sound. So light, according to the Bible, was not source. Doesn't seem like to me, at least. Um, so, but yeah. yeah uh, we could talk about, there's this creation story, and the story of the flood was taken from the Babylonian text and the Sumerian text, and the whole story, birth story of Moses is taken from the Akkadian tale of King Sargon, which is 2400 <laughs> BC, and it says, listen to the story and see if it sounds a little familiar to you, it says, quote, Sargon, the mighty king, king of Agade, uh, am I. My mother was a changing, my father I knew not. The brother of my father loved the hills. My city is Asuparanu, which is situated on the banks of the Euphrates. My changeling mother conceived me. In secret, she bore me. She set me in a basket of rushes. With Budiman, she sealed my lid. She cast me into the river, which rose not over me. The river bore me up and carried me to Akai, the drawer of water. Akai, the drawer of water, lifted me out as he dipped his ewer and took me as a son and reared me oh. and appointed me as his gardener. While I was a gardener, Ishtar granted me her love. And for four years, it's a missing fragment, I exercised kingship. See, and then, I mean, he he got, that is so loaded, that whole damn thing of Ishtar. I mean, it's, it's, 
Yeah, it's, it really it's is. Jam packed. Do you mind just repeating that one one more time? The whole thing, um, yeah, just like so the last few. I don't know, yeah, four she, okay, so four she set she set me in a basket of rushes, which is like reeds. So I mm -hmm. put it in a basket of reeds, and she sealed my lid, and she cast me into the river, and the river bore me up and carried me to A K K I Ekai, the drawer of water, and he lifted me out as he dipped his ewer and took me as a son and reared me appointed me as his gardener while i was a gardener ishtar granted me her love and for four and missing text years i exercised kingship and then there's a line which i'm not going to read after uh, that okay i th yeah but, I, th um, I thought that was the, the i mean it's just i had to type a little bit as you said it because there's so much there you have cast into the river drawn of water took me as a son so i mean you have the, again the water representation of uh, a possible incarnation or taking you under its wings and being a being its minion i guess you could say and then appointed me as the gardener issued King. love so you got the love bomb there sorry go ahead and exercise kingship. Exercise kingship. Yeah, that's I mean, the, the big, but it's basically the tale of Moses, is it yeah, not? I mean, it's yeah, very, very yeah. similar enough that it's like you can see how they took the tradition and and just changed it, oh, yeah. repackaged it, changed the names, and which is all the cultures, all the cultures do that. I'm not singling out any one in particular. No, just the way things it's, go. It's, it's huge. Yeah, I mean, it's all yeah. over the place. Yeah, I'm just pointing out that a lot of this, all of these stories, creation and the flood and all this stuff, is not originated um, from the Bible. It's no. they they knew that these previous um stories yeah, from other and, cultures um so. and cultures that had well at least according to what we're told had no communication with each other uh who they all had these flood myths you know yeah all everyone. over the world i mean even little small tribes in the middle of you know nowhere you know cut off from society had some sort of uh flood story uh, or cataclysm story um and it's just it's all over the place i i started taking notes on all this stuff i have a <laughs> huge yeah. huge uh yeah. thing i was writing on it because i was going to do a video on it it's it's there's mm -hmm. so much i mean it's it, it cannot be denied that there was something going on i mean and in the sumerian happened. in the sumerian text they talk about inky he put a partition between him and you know, basically a Noah figure. They didn't have the name Noah, but it was their name. And he basically told him to build a ship because there's going to be a flood coming. And he told him to build a ship and the dimensions and how to do it and all this stuff. I mean, so even that story of Noah building the ship was, um, but it's different because there's Inky and he wanted to save his creation, mankind, while the other gods were wanting to let mankind die, die in the flood, destroy him. But in the Bible, they all these gods get synthesized into the Lord God or God, you know, so they don't differentiate, you know, yeah. so we're missing some information there, it seems to me. Yeah, I'm, I agree. And why would they do that? So, you know, you got politics is throughout the entire Bible. The, Try and make their the, own versions of it, I guess. Sorry, the, sorry. The, the, yeah. yeah, the kings yeah. have their grubby little fingerprints over everything. So you got the King James, he commissioned the translation of the King James Bible. There are even two books in the Old Testament named Kings 1 and Kings 2. Kings were major characters throughout, such as King David, King Solomon, you got the Pharaoh, Caesar, and the emperors with all the councils to decide what content would be, you know, uh, included in the Bible. And, and Jesus was in the line of King David and was the source for the controversial books, uh, Holy Blood, Holy Grail, and the Da Vinci Code. And we can see how much power the royal family had in the creation of Christianity and the very fact that Emperor Constantine, a sun worshiper and murderer, officially made it the state religion. So you see Christianity in the Bible is very much rooted in politics. In fact, Councils were held to decide which books to include, which I mentioned. But uh, which and we can get on. Take out, yeah. yeah. So you can see that politics is. So how can you trust something that has so much political, um, yeah, you know, I mean, influence to it? Sure. I mean, just look at today. I mean, uh, we have. I mean, not like there wasn't book burning and and all sorts of weird edits of uh revisions of old books okay that that can lead me into the whole thing that's going on with google are you aware of this one where where google has you know this massive i don't remember what they call it it's it's 
I don't really use it because I use archive, but sometimes I'll use it. It's uh, Google. Um, maybe it's Google library or something like that. Somebody, could... I'm using Swiss cows now. Somebody told me. Yeah, about Swiss cows. It's, that, yeah, it's in yep. um, Swiss. Uh, yeah, that's a yeah. good one to use. Yep. It's private. Mm -hmm. So. And uh, so I what's... was using DuckDuckGo, but. <laughs> uh, yeah, I use. Yeah, I, I still use DuckDuck. I, I use a and star page. Few. Yeah, star. I'll say a star page, I think, is. Star yeah, page, I think, is Google, isn't it? That's I don't know. That's why I went to Swiss Cows and yeah. use that. Swiss Cows good. Yeah, a little more privacy can't hurt. Yeah, yeah. I'm using Proton Mail now, so well, I just um, like seeing the ver the the varying degrees of results you get. You know, so if you use Duck yes, Duck uh, Swiss Cows, yeah. you know, you, you're you're getting something completely different. Like if you use, uh, and this is really really important, everyone listening, um, if you're using the YouTube um, search engine which is Google, you're going to get uh, all the algorithm results no matter what you do. If you go to DuckDuck, and you could do this yourself. You go to DuckDuck and search the term, the same term that you did on YouTube search engine, you will see different results immediately. And it's it's great because that's how I found find a lot of good stuff because I'm, YouTube's search is so yeah. scattered and off that it's just it's it sucks so use uh alternative search engines especially if they have the the video button you know you go to you, you go to duck duck use the search term you're going to put in google click the video tab if you want longer videos you can hit uh uh short length or long length so if you know like maybe you're looking for a lecture or something uh you just hit long and then you'll get longer i think 20 minutes or over results and all sorts of great stuff so i'm using uh brave as a browser too mm, that's yeah. my browser and it's noticed it's got yeah. the lion's head yeah. right there every, every time i look at that thing i'm like eh, I don't yeah think I trust and this it, thing. it's brave rewards is the pyramid symbol and all I, I, I and yeah. it, you know it's chrome based so is yeah, it really? yeah, uh -huh. it is. It's uh, it's based on Chrome, and uh, oh. yeah, I, I mean, it, it's, and you know, you know what else is really interesting is when that browser came out, when all tons and tons of channels were just promoting it. Why, why mm -hmm. all of a sudden out of nowhere uh, were interesting. all these channels just promoting it? We're talking, especially in the truther and spiritual areas, but any almost anywhere. I mean, it, but it was really, really pumped. Uh, especially yeah. set by some well-known shills out there so you know right out the gate and they seem to all be promoting it at once so i you know make of it what you will but yeah you really got to do some deep digging and yeah. and uh, to find stuff but um we could talk about the jordan i well I went, during the break i copied and pasted some of the stuff i had on jordan sure. maxwell on, on my old religion page which i took down but there um I said, uh, Jordan Maxwell has revealed that Christianity mm -hmm. and all the other major world religions are, in fact, descended from earlier solar, lunar, and stellar cults and represent the sun. In his book, Fat Old Time Religion, and his video series, The Naked Truth, he <laughs> explains, since no one on Earth can claim ownership of the sun, it must be God's sun. Since it provides daylight, the Son of God is the light of the world. Ancient man feared the cold dark conditions of the night and waited each morning for the risen sun and without the energy which the sun sacrifices to sustain life on earth we would die so it was said that the sun was our savior and sacrifices his life for us so that mankind can have everlasting life on earth he continues by explaining how in egypt the sun was known as horus and at daybreak horus had risen on the horizon horus risen and was said to be born again when the sun died at night, we were ruled by the prince of darkness, who the Egyptians called Set, because God's sun had set at sunset. When the sun died, it was said to wear a crown of thorns, thorns or a corona. The sun is said to begin its ministry at the age of 30 because it enters each house of the zodiac at the 30th degree and is said to die at 33 because it exits at the 33rd <laughs> degree. He further explained, and of course, you got Freemasonry at the 33rd of course, degree, right? Yeah, that's he, the biggest red flag right there. He further explains how you can draw a cross over the circle of the sun, dividing it into the four seasons comprised of two solstices and two equinoxes, which is why you can look at the cross on top of most churches even today and see a circle over the top of it. God's sun is on the cross. And to quote Jordan, quote, mm -hmm. on December 22nd, the sun going south reaches its lowest point in the sky, our winter solstice. At that lowest point, the sun stops moving on the sundial for three days, December 22nd, 23rd, and 24th in the southern continent 
constellation known as the Southern Cross. Hence, our Savior, dead for three days, died on the cross, the Southern Cross constellation, that is. That is the only time in the year that the sun actually stops its move in, in our sky from our perception, right? Mm -hmm. On the morning of December 25th, the sun begins its annual journey back to us in the Northern Hemisphere, bringing, of course, our spring. Therefore, on December 25th, our sun is born again, and to this day, his worshipers still celebrate his birthday. Right. So that's pretty pretty powerful stuff. It is. I remember as a Christian watching his uh, Naked Truth video, and I was pretty... Um, perturbed by it of course you <laughs> were showed all the and you know and i still look back and i think they took a lot of liberty and I, I don't agree with everything they have in it but it was enough of a point to make me go wait a minute yeah there's something to this mm -hmm. now what was the documentary that they put out back in the early 2000s the naked, the naked truth no oh well, there's there naked had truth more than there was some um... They had one on. Um, it was huge. Illuminati or something yeah, like that. They, I can't remember. Had, they, you know, I don't know if that was them. Yeah, they had the who's who's of uh, Shillery in there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, I can't think. Of, I can't believe it. it's. Nah, whatever. I'll, I'll think of it eventually. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. So some of the issues. I mean, I used to be a Christian for a good ten years. I mean, I was pretty deep into it. I mean, I was mm -hmm. looking at the interlinear Bible where you got Hebrew and Greek translations i was getting pretty deep into it but some of the things that caused me to eventually move on were i mean one of the things as a christian you know they're like talking about chosen people and there's i remember singing the song in church about you are a chosen generation or something but there's this quote it says uh you are a chosen generation a royal priesthood a holy nation a peculiar people that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light which in time past were not a people but are now the people of god which had not obtained mercy but now have obtained mercy dearly beloved i beseech you as strangers and pilgrim abstain from anyway they're talking about um you know a chosen people or a chosen generation and that I just didn't sit too well with me. No, no, it doesn't um, sit well with me. Yeah, and there's uh, there's a few of those out there that do that. I would use another word, but I'm just going to say favoritism. Mm -hmm. And so, and then there's the submission to authorities. Um, in Romans, it says, submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether it be to the king as supreme or unto governors as unto them are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers and for the praise of them that do well. For so is the will of God that with well-doing, ye may be put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. Um, yeah, anyway, so that's like another thing. Servants, be subject to your masters. Um, you know, that's almost like, slavery there abraham tested uh sometimes later god tested abraham he said to him abraham here i am he replied then god said take your son your only son whom you love isaac and go to the region of moriah sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on a mountain i will show you and of course just as he's about to do it he's like ah, ha, ha, just kidding uh, you know, just playing they're just testing you it's like <laughs> can you imagine putting somebody through that if you're oh. the father you have to kill your own son oh, i mean God. that's just Twist. um Twist yeah and then you got the anuna and the flood and basically he was going to wipe out all of mankind except for like a handful of people right and just because of their so quote unquote you know wickedness or or whatever and there's a passage where god kills twenty seven thousand people it says and there came a man of god and spake unto the king of israel and said thus saith the lord because the syrians have said the lord is god of the hills but he is not god of the valleys therefore i will deliver all this great multitude into thy hand and thou shalt know that i am the lord and they pitched one over another the seven days so it was that in the seventh day the battle was joined and the children slew the syrians and a hundred thousand footmen in one day a man of god said and then later they killed uh so they, they killed a hundred thousand syrians one day and there's another one where twenty seven thousand syrians are killed by a falling wall so anyway it's just if you search the um the old testament for like the word love and then search it for like the word pestilence or something like you're gonna find like way more occurrences of pestilence and all the the bad stuff then you won't find a whole lot of love in there and yeah yeah no it's uh i i completely agree it's uh we have the the how it, how love is uh misunderstood or 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 twisted <laughs> as right. it should be just you know that... everyone kind of should have a general understanding about what love should be uh it sure likes to go out of its way to uh 
throw the the wrench of confusion in there and the further back you go the more interesting it gets yeah one of the very last things i added to this section on christianity and i was just sitting there waiting to do the show and it came to my mind i got i have this this is a huge thing so i said but ultimately the idea of because you mentioned this love ultimately the idea of a good loving god sending his so-called children to an mm. eternal hell or pain suffering and torment for just for not believing in something that happened two thousand years ago <laughs> it's something i can't buy into i was like yeah. there's got to be better ways too of getting your message out. i mean think about god like he'll come down to this one group of people that are in the one section of the world and he comes down later another dispensation to this other group and to another group and they're like they're calling him different names he's telling them different things it's like why not project yourself holographically in the sky for everyone yeah. to see I mean, he's got that power he's got right yeah yeah why, why, why is it, it so selective why pit each other against each other yeah. it just seems so divisive and why, and, why there are always these uh these middlemen between you and 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 uh just uh yeah it's ridiculous totally so ridiculous. i had i had too many questions and issues to to yeah with good i mean what's good conscience to stay in that and the last thing uh is christianity pushes original sin and we are programmed that we will meet our maker at death and be judged so some will say accepting jesus changed that but if jesus were to ask them to return to save souls you know they would right that he's yeah. their lord and savior if he says lord look man savior. good job but i really need you to go back and save souls i mean are you gonna are you gonna say no to the, your lord <laughs> Oh man, God, talk about just uh, no pun intended. Just talk about uh oh god, the, the, the deception. It's just so sick, so sick. And in and, and what are they going to do? Use the same excuse every time, you know? Or are they? Or it's going to be slightly modified each time? And it's just what? like boom, boom, boom. And here's another thing that came to my mind as a Christian. Well, there's another thing. He was his name was supposed to be Emmanuel. In the old testament the prophecy and well you know which means god with us but mm. his name wasn't emmanuel it was jesus right i mean or yahoo i mean there's different but it's not yeah. emmanuel as far as i know yeah. and then um how was the thing you just said about um i was going to piggyback on that basically do you remember what you said uh talking about how there's different uh how uh, uh, it's oh boy brain fart um, <laughs> I had another point to make, but I guess it doesn't matter at this point. So it's just piling on, right? Um, uh, just to add really quick, uh, the, the documentary I was talking about with Maxwell was Zeitgeist. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah they took the whole religion section basically from, from him. Yeah. That was a good documentary. And there's like two or three parts, right? Yeah, it was okay. Um, I, 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 I was, um, I liked, I liked it money. years ago. Oh, yeah. The, the whole the financial section of money. Part, the, yeah. 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 So. Yeah. yeah I, unfortunately, I forget what I was going to mention, but uh, yeah. Well, we were talking other... about. Um, we we're talking about how, uh, you know, how there's like a always a middleman for God. God's not projecting himself holographically yeah. to to the to more or the whole crowd or the whole world or the whole realm, and he has us. You know, he is God after all. So why is it so inclusive with these? with these special receivers of his energy yeah i can't remember it's that's all right no so, deal. Uh, the next section i was going to go into i was just going to real briefly mention scientology because i think it's important mm. oh, because yeah. like i mentioned the story in the very first episode well not the first episode but my awakening where i just listened to art bell and courtney brand was on and i was there to get the book and this guy comes in and asks the lady behind the desk do you have courtney brown's uh cosmic voyage i'm like oh you must listen to art bell huh and anyway so i started talking to him and i eventually mentioned my idea about not going to the light and he told me that in scientology that um l ron hubbard or the scientologists believe that uh, don't go to the light that it's an implant station uh, implantation or yeah. uh, implant station yeah engrams or whatever they say yeah, yeah yeah so that was interesting yeah. i guess he mentioned that in like a lecture so um he actually but, mentioned it in a lecture yeah i think so yeah from what i was you know wow. researching way back but um I, I met this guy that, that I met this guy that um, just this last week who listened to our last episode and um, I met with him and talked and found out that he said he was ex he used to be in Scientology right mm -hmm. and so he was telling me um, that L. Ron Hubbard was one of the first people to or uh, 
he, um, what was I going to say? Oh, that he was most likely naval intelligence. Oh, he yeah. Says he yeah. certainly was in the yeah. Navy. And as a yeah. boy, he was mentored by a commander, Joseph Snake Thompson, who was undoubtedly naval intelligence. Mm -hmm. He also was steeped in Freudian psychology, who pioneered the technique that Hubbard later incorporated as Dianetics auditing. And Freud ended up abandoning the technique because he found it to be problematic. And he says, I'm sure you're aware that even Aleister Crowley was a British intelligence uh, during WW2, if not before. Some believe he was a double agent. Agent. And I was mentioning, it's just amazing how all these intelligence people are, you know, you've got, I don't know if I should mention names, but it's pretty important. Like, okay, like when, well, okay, well, Robert, uh, Raymond Moody was like the first person recently, like 1975 or mid 70s, when he came out with the book Life After Life, mm -hmm. which he detailed the near death experience and brought the whole thing to the public eye. And he's got this documentary called life after life. And it, it features like five or six people that are telling their NDE experience. And like literally two of the five or six were like intelligence agents. Daniel Brinkley was one. And in his own book, saved by the light, he says he was CIA. He was an assassin yeah. for the CIA. And then another guy, George Rodania, I can't remember his last name starts with an R. He said that he was, killed by the KGB. And I looked it up online and come to find out he was a member of the KGB, I guess. <laughs> so like, what's the deal yeah. with, with that? And then you've got like people suppose I saw somewhere where they said Val Valerian was, um, yeah, like, yeah, was a captain. And then you've got John Lear, who I think was flying, oh. was flying flights for the CIA. Yeah. But you just got all these intel people all over mm -hmm. the place. Yeah. And my fr and my friend says he goes, what intelligence does is confuse, gaslight, and play games of cointel pro i'm not sure if i'm saying that word well, right but he said true yeah no that's right yeah he would say uh, he said i would think that the archons have their agents and intelligence agencies especially cia Mossad, mi6 mm -hmm. so of course they're going to do what they can to cointel pro and gaslight the crap out of any don't go to the light narrative absolutely no absolutely and, but, and, and like we were talking about with val valerian think about how there's no doubt in my mind that he, he, he is disinformation. There's no doubt. But th I'm not saying there isn't some great sections in some of those books because yeah. there are. I mean, there's some he really saying don't go to the light. <laughs> yeah. And, and he's, all, you know, his stuff on consciousness is really good. I mean, he's got some good stuff in there. But the problem is, is it's packed, packed, dense yeah. stuff. And, know. you know, it's what, five books? And you got to yeah. go through yeah. that stuff. It's yeah. this is not short reading material. This is really, you know, you're mm. gonna spend oh, yeah, some they're time. This, they're this thick. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. 800 pages here, a few of them. I don't know, but it's been a while since I looked at them. But <clears throat> uh, it's just interesting. I mean, it, it's it just is something you got to wade through and try to figure it out. And you got people saying both. I mean, like Danians telling everybody, "Go to the light, go to the light, go to the light." And then John Lear comes out and says, "Don't go to the light. It's a mm -hmm. trick." So it's like. You know, well, they yeah, they, which they is which. play both <laughs> both sides. I mean, you know, Lair's father, what created the or invented Bill, yeah. the Lear jet. You know, yeah. I mean, uh, Lear was involved with the whole Area 51 psyop. I mean, and yeah. you know, that links with Bob Lazar and it links with um uh George. I don't know the guy who reported it. He 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 also covered um, George Knapp. George Knapp, yeah, George Knapp. He, he's an agent. There's no doubt. I mean, uh, come on, it, the stuff on air. Yeah. As much as I hate to say it, Art Bell probably yeah, you know I, had a lot to do with it too. But I no I like doubt a lot of these people for sure, and well, they presented us good stuff too through yeah, there. So yeah. I mean, you got good stuff, and then and you know, as you're going through your journey, Wayne, right? I mean, stuff like that's you know part of the primer because our bell got to start as a dj like in the air force or mm -hmm. one of those um academy arms and um, and he got not, on... that, not that it makes him you know an agent or anything i'm just it's just oh. something i know? think he's an agent but that's mm -hmm. you know i mean I, anyway, I think a I lot was... of people are agents but <laughs> i just did some of the connections but still he you know he he had how many great guests i mean the, he was such yes. a huge part of my awakening you know it, you can't take like if if everything is going to have interference or at least large sections of things are going to have overwhelming interference, then it is what it is. I mean, 
it's all about you sticking your guns and not just clinging on to one thing here, one thing there, one thing, you know, it's all about retaining information, hearing different perspectives and moving on. And, you know, even going back and revisiting those things, that, especially the ones that you are really connected to. And that's it. I mean, it, 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 so they, they have their place. I mean, Art Bell was awesome. I loved listening to him. Loved it. George Snorri, yeah. on the other hand, that's a whole nother, that's a whole nother story. <laughs> when, when George came out, first came out, I actually liked him because Art would go on these, he would just keep regurgitating the same stories about his out-of-body or the other mm. car. I mean, he'd just go on and it's like, let the <laughs> guests talk. You know, I want to hear what he, and Snorri, at least, you know, in the beginning, I don't yeah, know. I don't, George, listen, like, I, don't, I don't listen to it anymore. So yeah, I, no, I can't yeah. listen to, to George Snorri. I'll go back and listen to our bell stuff though. Once in, well, a while. in the beginning, I liked him. I mean, I, I put the personality aside and it was fine, but um, anyway, mm. that's neither here nor there. Yeah. So the next section I was going to go to was uh, hermeticism. Great. Uh, which I would like to learn more about. I, you know, since it's supposed to be not, you know, gnosis and stuff like that, but um you know, once I got on this theory, I just kind of put all the other religions aside and just said I went down researching paths. So, uh, but anyway, it's based on Hermes Trismegistus, and it's supposed to be Hermes and Thoth combined, uh, which is the gods of wisdom. And some of the main books they have is the Corpus Hermeticum by Hermes Trismegistus, Hermetica, the Greek Corpus Hermeticum, and the Latin Asclepius by Hermes Trismegistus, The Way of Hermes by Hermes Trismegistus, The Emerald Tablet of Hermes by him, The Emerald Tablet of Thoth the Atlantean, which is by Marie Storial, Kabbalion, Initiation of Hermetics by Franz Bourdon, The Hermetica by Timothy Freak, um, The Golden Dawn, um, which is by Israel Regardi. But it, the Corpus Hermeticum is a um, collection of 17 Greek treatises attributed to the legendary Hellenistic figure Hermes Trismegistus, a syncretic combination of the Greek god Hermes and the Egyptian god Thoth. The Hermetic tradition represents a non-Christian lineage of Hellenistic Gnosticism. The tradition and its writings date to at least the first century BCE, and the texts we possess were all written prior to the second century CE or AD. The surviving writings of the tradition known as the Corpus Hermeticum contain a broad variety of treatises dealing with astrology, medicine, and pharmacology, alchemy, and magic. I took this from um, this video called What is Hermeticism on the YouTube channel, Let's Talk Religion. And it says it's, it consists of 18 separate treatises talking about the individual soul and its potential sent to the world of the divine, noose, or mind or intellect through what's known as gnosis. And I was doing an open transcript, so I copied and pasted this, and sometimes they don't get the words. That oh, correct. yeah, I get and I didn't have yeah. so I didn't have time. I thought we were doing this tomorrow, so I didn't have time to go through, and I'm, Sorry, I may... Tr oh, no, was, that was my fault. I didn't check the, uh, the schedule. It was <laughs> definitely Saturday, but I, I made an assumption. Um, but so I may trip on a word or something, but it says, her medicine, hermeticism today can be a lot of different things. It's often very loosely connected to any general esoteric wisdom or occult knowledge, mm -hmm. but it all stems back to the ancient collection of texts that's attributed to the figure of Hermes Trismegistus. Today, we know that texts most likely didn't originate with Hermes himself, that's interesting, and that the stories yes. about him and his role in history of philosophy and religion is probably mythical, but that doesn't change the fact that, the, so which makes you think, well, who was writing this stuff, right? Or were they yeah. you know where's it coming from things, yeah why are they wanting us to believe this stuff it's pro uh, but that doesn't change the fact that the hermetic literature has been immensely influential and played a central role in the history of esotericism occultism as well as religion mysticism and philosophy in general much of what we associate with occult sciences magic astrology and alchemy is very strongly connected to the hermetic tradition it says the very first treatise of the cormus hermeticum known as the poimandras in which Hermes is the one being taught by this other character called Pomandres, which the teacher treatise is named after. And this character is identified in the text as the noose, the divine mm. noose. Now, noose is a <laughs> word that's noose. based. I know the noose is going to hang you, right? It's like, that's interesting, <laughs> the, the name of that. I noticed that too. Hello, hello. It's a word, <laughs> it says it's a word that's basically impossible to translate, but is usually rendered as the intellect or the divine mind 
Already we get a glimpse into exalted and complex religious philosophical worlds of Hermetica or the philosophical America to be exact. The texts were probably used as spiritual aid for people who were initiated into her Hermetic group. Although again, some scholars will doubt this, this idea. And these initiates were probably being led by a spiritual guide much like in the text themselves, it seems that if there was this initiatory hermetic group, the teacher-student mm -hmm. relationship seems to play a very important role. Um, and then it says it would be a very important factor in the spiritual ascent of the student towards the divine world. So you got these guides and masters and teachers telling them how they can ascend to oh, this yeah, always divine the, divinity. The, you know, the pyramid of power, the you know, the the hierarchy. It's always it's it's everywhere we look, and it. Yeah. it, it Oh, I mean, seeing it in the astral is just insane. It's just, it's mind blowing to me. It just, so, it just kind of really cements my inner knowing that something is really, really rotten. <laughs> it says uh, divides reality into various spheres. There's God again. There's the intelligible world, the physical world, and the human being in a kind of descending order. The human being, however, is the microcosm of creation, and thus, at least in his spiritual or noetic intellectual reality, is exalted above other inhabitants of the cosmos, including even lesser deities and gods. This idea of the human being as a microcosm of the larger macrocosm of the universe or divine world is a theme that will recur continuously in history and even outside of hermeticism as well. Um, it talks about different planetary spheres, um, a hierarchy of sorts. Mm -hmm. um, it says, uh, everything is part of God and God is in everything. His creative activity continuing unceasingly, all things are one, and the pleroma of being is indestructible. Despite this, the human being is especially exalted as having a divine spark, or in a sense being divine in nature, at least more so than other things, the soul of the human being can ascend through this hierarchy of being to reach communion with the divine noose and with God himself. It is with this that the philosophical hermetic is primarily concerned and it talks about it being initiatory and that practice that's aimed to purify the soul of impurity, to shed attachment, not a bad thing, and connection to the body and the world of matter and to ascend, to become unified and assimilated into the one God so that the person himself becomes divine. In other wow. treatises or sections, the picture is a lot more dualistic with the world being seen as the opposite of God and it's a kind of curse or a kind of prison that's to be escaped. <laughs> Once the practitioner reaches a higher stage of development and ideally of gnosis, he can transcend this perspective as he sheds his connection to the world of matter and form. And when the soul ascends enough to reach perfect gnosis, he will be reborn, not in a physical sense, of course, but in a spiritual sense, he will become one with the noose, the divine mind, <laughs> and with God himself, transforming his soul into divine status. And then the last thing, Hermes was often identified with the Quranic prophet, Idris, you might ask your Muslim friend about that, and the biblical Enoch, and thus seen as one of the great messengers of God and originator of hid hidden wisdoms. So. That's great. That is great. Ooh. And then you've got another book is the Kabbalion. It, yeah. it, it entails like the seven hermetic principles. Yeah, did, first... you, did you want to hold off on the Kabbalion? We'll take a break. Yeah, well, yeah, well, yeah. That'd good. be a good time to take a break. All right. So, uh, yeah, we will take five and a half minutes, my friends, and we will meet back here with Wayne shortly. So take a stretch break, grab yourself some water, do what you got to do. Thank you, Wayne. Much appreciated. And if you could just mute your mic on the way out, that would be great. All right. Thanks.
All right, Wayne. Yeah. 
How are you making out? You okay? Yeah, I'm fine. I got the okay. mute mic, mic unmuted now. Yeah, yeah, you're good. Yeah. All right, so we're going to head back into it. All right, five, four, three, two, and one. All right, everybody, we are back. Thank you for hanging in there during the break. All right, Wayne, where we leave off. And I'll, before we get started, I just want to let everyone know if you have any more questions for Wayne, feel free to send them on in. I've been trying to log them uh, in Notepad as I go along. But if I miss any, feel free to just pop them in again, especially if it was earlier on in the show. And uh, we will get to those when uh, later on. So. After you, Wayne. Uh, did I pull a, a Lieutenant Frank Drebin from Naked Gun last time I went to uh, the bathroom during break? It's like, whoops. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> Naked Gun 33 and a third or whatever. Or <laughs> right, right. Yeah, just pop that uh, the, in there. The Cabalion. Uh, I guess that's how you say it. I don't know. From mm -hmm. I got this from the Spirit Science uh, YouTube channel. And it says the uh, goes over the seven hermetic principles. And the first one is mentalism, which allows you to grasp the laws of the mental universe. And the axiom embodies the idea that all is mind, something today we know is idealism, but basically everything that happens is a result of a mental state which precedes it. For anything to exist, thoughts had to form first. And the law ultimately says it's our consciousness that allows us to interact with reality. The second principle is correspondence. Um, but there's always a correspondence and link between the events and the various planes of existence. And it's where we get the phrase as above, so below. Um, so if there's something happening on a physical level, chances are there is a relationship to it, mm -hmm. like energy on a higher frequency. Oh, so yeah. you can see the difference between that and like Gnosticism, you know, where everything down here is evil, yeah. you know, kind of thing versus that, which they're trying to integrate. The yeah, principle, they, it's amazing how it carries over between the bo both of them. Well, the principle three is vibration. In short, nothing rests. Everything in existence is in a constant state of motion and vibration. Even things that appear motionless and still like a rock on the ground is still moving on a molecular and atomic level and beyond. To quote Walter Russell, which I really like this quote, in the wave lies the secrets of creation. Mm -hmm. I wish I would have put that in my uh, article on the parasites, but in yeah, the wave like lies wave. the secrets of creation. It explains that the distinction between manifestations of matter, energy, mind, and spirit are all just the result of different different vibrational frequencies. Uh, the higher a person or thing is on the scale, the higher the rate of vibration. In fact, spiritual alchemy in the Kabbalion is described simply as the practical application of this principle. Principle four is polarity. Um, everything has an opposite. All manifested things have two sides, two aspects, or two poles. Opposites are identical in nature, yet different in degree. Extremes meet, and all paradoxes can be reconciled. Um, it says, suggests that we can change the polarity of a degree of emotion by recognizing it as a spectrum and choosing the degree which best suits our needs. I don't know. Mm. Principle five, rhythm. This one builds upon both the principles of vibration and polarity. It states everything is manifested as a measured motion to and from, outflow and inflow, swing backwards and swing forwards, just like a pendulum. It also reminds us there's a rhythm between every pair of opposites or poles. Uh, blah, blah, blah. The last uh, principle six is causation. Um, it says, uh, again, it's overlapping previous laws that makes sense that they fit together. It says, for every cause, there's a cause for every effect and an effect for every cause. It also argues there's no such thing as chance or coincidence. That might be that synchronicity thing from Jung. I don't know. Sure. The last sense. principle seven is gender and explains how gender is manifested in everything. But this doesn't necessarily relate to sexual gender or how you identify yourself. It's more about the masculine and feminine energies that lead to creation, procreation in the universe. I wonder if they had to update their page for that one. Yeah, it, <laughs> but, you know, Wayne, would you please not assume my gender? <laughs> I'm being serious. Yes. <laughs> it's it's <messy> <laughs> So that's the Kabbalion. And, and then the Emerald Tablet, I think, of Hermes, it's uh, very short, but it's, um, it says Hermeticism. This is not the tablet, but it says Hermeticism mm -hmm. today can be a lot of different things. It's very loosely connected to any gener uh, general esoteric wisdom or cult. Uh, says it didn't likely originate with him. But anyway, man, I must have lost it when I was. Oh, here's. No, I lost it, man. Is there a way you can look take, it up? <laughs> take your time. Take, take your time. Okay. I think I copied and pasted over it. Ah, uh, okay. What are you, are you missing a paragraph or something? Yeah. 
figures. Oh, anyway, figures. it was only it was only okay. like six six lines. It's interesting. Oh, well, you well. could search for whatever the last if you if you just do if you copy and paste really quick. It basically, I remember the, the line that said that the sun and moon are our father. Yeah. in this creation or something like that. And it's just some interesting stuff that talked about the light and kind of dovetailed with some of the stuff I've been talking about. Um, then I got this section on the Emerald Tablets of Thoth, uh, probably pronounce it different than other people, but um, there's just too much uh, for me to go through all of this. Yeah, because I, but, um, whatever, whatever you feel comfortable with. Yeah, we just don't got enough um, time to do it, but it talks about the time lore. Well, no, I talk about the time lords. Time lords are good <laughs> uh, ones, yeah. Well, it's talking about the halls of the many and be free from the flower of light and of life. And um, the children of light look down on the world. There's a, it, it says, chosen was I from the sons of men taught by the dweller so that his purposes might be uh, fulfilled. And it talks about the temple. And it says, uh, I too approach the light emitted from the great fire, taught me he the path to a many, the underworld where the great king sits upon his throne of might. And it um, talks about the nine and the lords of karma, but it says custodians and watchers of the force of man's bondage, ready to loose when the light has been reached. First and most mighty sits the veiled presence, Lord of Lords, the infinite nine over the other yeah. from each of the lords of the cycles. Three, Council four, five, nine. Yeah, it says each with his powers, guiding, directing the destiny man. There sit they, mighty and potent, free of all time and space, not of this world. Uh, elder brothers, they of the children of men, judging and weighing they with their wisdom, watching the progress of light among men. Um, yeah, it's just flowers of fire. <laughs> it's just flowers a lot of judgment and that kind of stuff. But uh, it says, when yeah. you've gained the light of all wisdom, free shall you be to shine in the ether. One of the suns that light outer darkness, one of the space born grown into light. Uh, but he talks about meditating on these symbols that he gives people. And there's, yeah. I remember there's, yeah. And I he don't talks do of, that. He says, list ye again, O man, to my wisdom, that hearing you might live and be free. Not of the earth are ye earthy, but child of the infinite cosmic light. Um, though ye are not truly the light, son of the great sun, when ye gain wisdom. Um, I trod the path that leads to the stars. Out of the darkness shall you rise upward, one with the light and one with the stars. Follow yeah, raise, me ever. Sorry. Yeah, I mean that's no. It just seems like programming. Like go to the light. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Raise, raise upwards, or who, however the heck it was worded. It's all about just keeping, keep you in line. Be one know? of the space born, grown into light. You know. Mm. I mean. It says, long ago, long ages ago, the sons of the morning descending found the world filled with night. There in that past began the struggle, the age-old battle, darkness and light. Look to the light, oh my brother. Keep ever thine eyes on the light plane. And uh, know you must become formless before you are with the light. Some interesting yeah, stuff. Yeah, be one with the light. Tear can't, open the can't veils. Wait. <laughs> the wisdom's hidden in darkness. When lit by the flame of the soul, find thou the wisdom and be light born, a son of the light without form. I mean, some of this stuff is actually resonating with me, you know. Yeah. Tear open the veils of the darkness, shine a light on the way. It's like saying kind of be your own light in that sense, be light born and uh, be a light without form. I don't know. Um, hmm. Speak in the words of the dweller. I don't like how that sounds. The chant yeah. that calls down the light. Sing thou the song of freedom. Sing thou the song of the soul. Create the high vibration that will make thee one with the whole. Blend all thyself with the cosmos. Grow into one with the light. Grow into uh, one with the light. Yeah. Let's test that one out. <laughs> <laughs> So anyway, the whole text is, is goes on and on about the you know the light and growing to be one with the light and. It says, know ye that ye are threefold in nature, physical, astral, and mental in one. Three are the qualities of each of the natures, nine in all, as above, so below. In the physical are these channels, the blood which moves in vortical motion, reacting on to the, continuing its beating. Magnetism, which moves through the nerve paths, carrier of energies to all cells and tissues. Akasa, which flows through channels, subtle yet physical, completing the channels. It's beating. Uh, and the last thing, oh... 
On Earth, man is in bondage, bound by space and time to the Earth plane. Encircling each planet, a wave of vibration binds him to his plane of unfoldment. Yet within man is the key to releasement. Within man may freedom be found. So some of the stuff, it's almost like they might be mixing some lies with truth. It's difficult yeah, to it figure seems, it all out. Seems like a mix for sure. I think the unfoldment's interesting because whenever I think about... Um, the unfoldment is almost like, uh, I don't know why I think this, you know, I'm not saying this is accurate at all. I'm just saying, I think of the unfolding of a cube, how you have the cross that folds up into a cube and, and how it's just a pervasive symbol here in the matrix. I mean, I'm just saying that I'm not yeah. implying that's what's being conveyed, but it's just something I thought of. I don't know. Yeah. 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 And then I found this um, this interview with a former Buddhist monk, and maybe you should hold this off to like next week with uh, experiences and stuff, you know. Sure. But um, whatever you want to do, it's an interesting one because he's talking about yeah, cosmic electricity there. and the Holy Spirit and stuff. But um, yeah, I'll save it for next week. You sure. Um, yeah, okay. yeah. But I found something from Blavatsky and Theosophy on the cosmic electricity. And it says a term and concept which appears throughout the secret secret doctrine. That was the other one I was trying to remember by Blavatsky, and especially in the first volume titled Cosmogenesis, Cosmogenesis is Fohat. What is this mysterious yet vitally important thing called Fohat, which happens to be the key in occultism, which opens and unriddles the multiform symbols and respective allegories in the so-called mythology of every nation? And it says uh, it comes from Tibetan transliteration, but it's spoken in terms of cosmic or universal electricity, vitality, energy, and life force. Well, the thing about the, 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 the ex-Buddhist monk, he was talking about a wind. He calls it a subtle wind. Like when you're in meditation, he feels this subtle energy and it's a subtle wind. And that got me thinking about the, um, when I was talking about Pan and the wind in the willows and the stairway to heaven, oh, they yeah, keep talking about the, the, the wind. Yeah. And here they are talking about this wind, and they're even mentioning the, the electricity too, which I was talking about with the archons and how I thought they were might be related to electricity. But um, uh, yeah, I mean, we can go off on a whole tangent about yeah. that one. I mean, uh, we kind of touched on it, I think, before, but yeah, I mean, it, it that's how I think they do it. I mean, it's even I'll bring up a couple examples. It's even represented in soul. Um, yeah, this is where yeah zapped, that too. but even when um what's the guy who does the checks and balances oh god oh uh, yeah terry or something terry terry yep, yeah yeah yep, yep. terry comes down and he um you know go, he goes through a lot of the um metal fences through the tv through the electric yes. cords yeah, right. through the tv yep, yep you yep. know pipes all that stuff and then um it, it it reminds me and feel free to check these out if you want uh, uh anyone listening uh i interviewed uh jerry marzinski a couple times and he talked about uh he he really quickly he basically was a psychologist 35 plus years did multiple employments uh in uh a hospital and then a prison where he spent the bulk of his time and he was helping schizophrenic patients uh who were in prison and uh some wanted to um you know rid themselves of these entity attachments and others were just you know too far gone and too connected with them anyways really really short he was working with this patient for from what i remember quite a few months and um he's in his office when he makes a breakthrough with one of his clients where in my opinion it was like the entity kind of fighting back and i think jerry implied that too if i remember um where the entity was uh going through his desk and he had it and i asked him you got a did you have a metal desk and yes he had a metal desk so it's conductive i think and it made this like snapping sound this popping crick you know crackly sound um and then he also had a metal waste paper basket too uh so you have those kind of as conductors for yeah. uh 
experience, you know, those types of phenomena experiences. So that's it. Yeah, no, that's a good point. I, uh, interesting. Uh, uh, th going on with like theosophy here, um, it's also kind of ties in with the Wiccan stuff. It says uh, the Summerland is a name given by theosophists, Wiccans, and some earth based contemporary pagan religions to their conceptualization of an afterlife. So like Wiccans, they believe that you go to this place called Summerland and Emanuel Swedenborg um, inspired Andrew Jackson Davis in his major work, The Great Harmonia, to say that Summerland is the pinnacle of human spiritual achievement in the afterlife. That is, it's the highest level or sphere of the afterlife we can hope to enter. And then you mentioned Leadbeater, a theosophist, yeah. also taught that those who were good in their previous earthly incarnation went to a place called Summerland between incarnations. Only if you're good, though. Yes. And in <laughs> theosophy, the term Summerland is used without the definitive, definitive, definite article, the... And it's also called the astral plane. Heaven is depicted as where souls who've been good in their previous lives go to. Uh, but here's cool. Here's this interesting. Theosophists believe the Summerlands are maintained by hosts of planetary angels serving Sanat Kumara. This is the stuff that started getting me because Sat Sanat is just an anagram of Satan. Satan, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it's all yeah. It's serving these angels serving Sanat Kumara, Kumara, the Nordic alien from Venus, who Theosophists believe is the governing deity of Earth and leader of the spiritual hierarchy of Earth. Sanat Kumara is believed to rule over our planet from the floating city of Shambhala, believed oh, by yeah. Theos Theosophists to exist. And here's the crazy thing: I, I really like that song by Three Dog Night. They got a song called Shambhala, and it's so. Oh, it's a great but it's, song. But it's yeah. How can you know? The Theosophists are also also believe there's another higher level of heaven called Devachan. I don't know how to say this. Also called the mental plane heaven. Yeah, that, mental uh, plane, but anyway, yeah. so yeah, it goes on and on. And the but the Wiccan Summerland. It's yeah, like, I, sorry for to continue. Oh, I think ahead. the whole Shambhala thing is just a representation. Um, it ties into Buddhism. Too. Yeah, to ask it the big time with the. With the Tibetan mountains and mm -hmm. Dalai Lama talks about it. Well, the yeah. uh, Shilly Lama. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, there's quite a bit on that. Um, there's some interesting books of of some quote unquote, people who claim to go there. But I, I think it's the astral realm. I do. Um, I don't necessarily think it's a physical place, although it's been implied that it is. I mean, not like yeah. I would have any way of knowing anyways, or anyone would, but uh, it's a really, really interesting thing to look into. Really, yeah. you, could, you could get lost in that one. Yeah, I found this article called uh, What is the Summerland uh, by Patty Wigginton. And she's saying that it's uh, in some modern magical traditions, it's believed that the, the, the dead cross over into a place called the Summerland. Um, but the, this Wiccan author, Scott Cunningham, described the Summerland as a place where the soul goes on to live forever. But he says, this realm is neither in heaven nor the underworld. It simply is a non-physical reality, much less dense than ours. Some Wiccan traditions describe it as a land of eternal summer with grassy fields and sweet flowing rivers, perhaps the earth before the advent of humans. Others see it vaguely as a realm without forms where energy swirls coexist with the greatest energies, the goddess and God and their celestial identities. He says, uh, another Wiccan uh, said, the Summerland is the great crossover. It's not good. It's not bad. It's just a place to go. We go where there's no more pain or suffering. And we wait there until it's time for our souls to return in another physical body. And then we can move on to our next lifetime. Some souls may be finished incarnating. They stay in the Summerland to guide newly arriving souls through the transition. Um, you know, it's Through the transition. Yeah, and these Norse pagans believe in Valhalla, and the ancient mm -hmm. Romans believe that warriors went to the Elysian fields. Um, and in the Norse, Valhalla, according to the Encyclopedia Britannica, is a hall of slain warriors who live there blissfully under the leadership of the god Odin, and is depicted as a splendid place roofed with shields where the warriors feast on the flesh of a boar slaughtered daily and made whole again each evening. And uh, my mm -hmm. friend who I met in Austin, he, he seems to know a lot about the early paganism and stuff like that. 
And he was telling me about this guy, uh, Varg, Varg Kearns is an expert on the Scandinavian view of Odin, which isn't entirely like the Greek. But he says regarding Loki and Pan, Varg said that it was a later Christian misunderstanding and then slander, which equated them to the devil. There are no devils in ancient Euro paganism. And he gave me this quote from a book that says, uh, Odin is our honorable forebears and we are Odin. Odin teaches us to tap into this spiritual resource and to remember what we knew and what we were before. He teaches us to become ourself and in a sense to give ourselves to ourselves when we say hail odin we salute our forebears and ourselves the greatness in us we salute the strength of our spirit end quote and he says when the ancients say hail odin they were not in their mind invoking a god invocation had nothing to do with it i don't think they even had a word for invoke that's a western christianized non-pagan viewpoint to assume they were the gods to them at that time were nature or all things natural they were symbols or metaphors he says i'm not trying to get you to embrace this by the way i don't practice norse paganism myself but if you want a more accurate explanation of euro paganism apart from non-pagan filters he's a good uh resource um but anyway so the next i was going to go on yeah, to spirits. I, love, I love the whole norse aspect of things i do it it's Really, really. Yeah, and he makes a good point that maybe the, I mean, I've, I grew up in Christianity and maybe I've kind of been indoctrinated or brainwashed into thinking um, a lot of this pagan stuff is, you know, of the devil and all that stuff. Oh, and yeah. Maybe, that's what I thought too. Originally, maybe they were just, I always thought they were worshiping like, you know, like the devil was the God and, you know, the, the lady and stuff but maybe they were just more into nature and nature deities i don't know it's well, that, just that's a, what, yeah that's what it that's how it's mostly represented but i mean just like everything else there's different sects of them too i mean what's what you know i i i have i've spent some time digging through it but you know i, I see yeah, a lot of worship there let me put it that way i'm not it's a Crapping on anything, but it's a, it's a big yeah. labyrinth. <laughs> no yeah, pun intended. It's just another <laughs> another one to add on the pile. That's all. Yeah. So spiritualism or spiritism um, from Wikipedia. Spiritualism is a new religious movement based on the belief that the spirits of the dead exist and have both the ability and the inclination to communicate with the living. Because this is like a whole ripe field. I mean, we we look into all these near death experiences, but there are people that quote unquote supposedly talk to the dead and all that stuff, and, which. I don't really put a lot of trust into, but there may be some legitimate ones that are hearing something and maybe they're genuine. Like he was saying his mother went to see this medium and, you know, she was saying that there's, you know, all these different guides and levels of counselors and stuff like that. But, um, so, it. but it's interesting mm -hmm. to hear, I'd like to hear more of what they're getting, what the information they're getting from these so-called entities that they're ch supposedly channeling. Well, yeah, but, uh, I mean, the information always seems to be subpar at best. Um, general, sometimes. Yeah, I, I mean, it's... <sighs> and a lot of these I mean, people, the newer yeah. people, they come from Hollywood. Some of them, like James von Prague and this other guy mm -hmm. I heard of. He, yeah, it's yeah. like, oh, he came up in Hollywood. It's like, really interesting. Yeah, I mean, if there if there's like a mainstream connection to them, I just, I'd rather find some... I, I, we have a... Uh, oh, what's his name? Uh, we have Trippy Viking who comes in here every once in a while and hope you're doing well if you're listening, brother. Um, and, and he's I he's just open to all sorts of different things and uh, trying to find his way just like we all are and uh, you know the 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 Viking kind of I guess you can call it subculture or religion if I dare I say it, it is a fascinating one it, it 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 I've watched a few people on YouTube who take that approach and they're just most of them just seem to be about expanding their consciousness and and connecting further within um and from some of the things i can tell like a sovereign approach too which is really awesome but uh uh you know the the whole norse thing i i feel is uh has a a lot of interesting thing things tied into it too my my girlfriend is uh spent a lot of time researching it and uh she's really familiar with it and kind of was going down that road for a while a few years back and um 
Yeah, I mean, it just, uh, but, you know, we see the some correlations with other uh, religions, too. And, you know, the problem is I'm not, I can't, I, I'm not in tune enough with that information to really say what the connections are, but I know there's other connections out there that kind of link to Norse within other areas. So I'll just say that I'm not going to say exactly what they are because I just don't remember, so. Yeah, I yeah. mean, a lot of the early spiritualism, as I understand it, I mean, a lot of it came, uh, Emmanuel Swedenberg was one guy that was had, I mm -hmm. guess, a near-death experience or something, but he was like telling everybody about what heaven looked like, and yeah. he was very Christian-based. I would actually yep. started reading this like 700-page book he had. But, oh, yeah, I went through uh, some of that, too. I never finished it. Was it was called it, Heaven yeah. and Hell. Heaven I actually hell, got a yep. quote yeah. from it here, but um, I wish I'll get to in a little bit. And then the other guy... Um, was uh, Franz Mesmer, which got yeah. people into from hypnotism and Mesmer, all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but so all that stuff. I think from what I remember, there was a lot of fraud that was rampant within yep. it, and people tried yep. to make money, and they would have table lifting, and it was just all rigged and oh, yeah. and stuff. And so the kind of died out. And then I believe who was the, uh, the the Houdini? Houdini was into all that, and he was mm -hmm. trying like he had a deal arranged with his wife that you know, whoever passed first they had like a Seances. password or, yeah. you know, they had like a password or something that they yeah. would give to each other after they died and they were going to come back and they, they never did i think she passed and she never came back with them well word. i think yeah, so he think, set out trying yeah. to expose all these frauds you know? yeah actually i think he yeah i know he passed first and oh, was it that yeah, yeah yeah and then she would on his birthday go and have these seances with you know some of his close friends or family or something like that they go to a certain spot and do this whole setup and try to contact him and she said that um if, if i recall again this is this is something i looked into a long yeah. time ago um she said that she never got in touch with him maybe i'm wrong but that that's what no, that's, that's what, what i remember, I remember. Too. I remember yeah. one of them yeah according to the show i had seen that said that that um so mm -hmm. some of the more recent people um well, let me i, I a, just want to i'm sorry oh yeah we're we gonna yeah, just yeah, houdini just one more thing yeah, yeah um uh really fascinating thing with houdini is um i think he was an intelligence agent did you did you see those those connections no i, I mean think about it he's a guy in in that time who was able to travel all over the world and from what I gather, and there is a strong case for it. There's some good books on it. There's, I think, even a documentary on it. Um, not really too well known, but where they talk about how Houdini would basically take this traveling magic show all over the world. And he was an intel agent, but so was his whole operation. So if they were looking for certain information in a certain country, they would take this traveling circus, so to say, just to cover all over yeah. the world, and they would send out their men, and they would go in, try to get their information wherever they were going, you know, palaces or government, office, who knows what they were doing, and then they come back, and then boom, go across the border to a new country and continue their operation for the next country. I mean, really fascinating stuff. You know, can I say that definitely is happening? No, but I mean, it, there, there's it some interesting. Connections it would make, there. It would make for a good cover. That's yeah, true. I mean, especially in those times, he he was able to go yeah. to all these places that, you know, from what we're told, are were off limits. Yeah. So, yeah. so I had some books on by uh, Ruth Montgomery, who was fairly recently, and I, I, at the time when I was in the New Age stuff, uh, I found yeah. a lot of her books interesting and she would talk about what the afterlife's like over there and i don't remember but i remembered some of these people talking about well, well they got jobs over there mm -hmm. and um no thank you the other one is i, th <laughs> I think i'm gonna say his first name is arthur but there's his last name is ford uh sylvia brown was another popular one oh, james yeah. von prague um who went used to go on the art bell show john edward of course crossing over a lot of people knew that and then rosemary uh, atea but for, I, I took this quote from heaven and hell by swedenborg and it says Quote, that the Lord is actually seen in heaven as a son, I have not only been told by angels, but it has occasionally been granted me to see it. And therefore, what I have heard and seen respecting the Lord as a son, I shall be glad to tell in a few words. The Lord is seen as a son, not in heaven, but high above the heavens and not directly overhead or in the zenith, but before the faces of the angels at a middle height. 
He is seen at a considerable distance in two places, one before the right eye and the other before the left eye. Before the right eye, he is seen exactly like a sun, as it were, with a glow and size like that of the sun of our world. But before the left eye, he is not seen as a sun, but as a moon, glowing white like the moon of our earth and like and of like size, but more brilliant and surrounded with many little moons. Mm. Anyway, there's more of the quote about the sun. Many but Many um, little moons. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. So, and there's, uh, I'm going to say these for next week. Um, but Jeff, Jeff Mara has, uh, Scott Taylor, this guy that was, um, I want to say he runs like the Monroe Institute or one of these places. Yeah, and, I think he was like the interim president or something like that. Or, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, that, there, somebody had a really, really good quote, but it's, I will save it for next week. But okay. there's this whole show called We Don't Die radio show. Have you heard oh, of yeah, this? yeah. I've Sandra listened to it Champlain. Yeah. And I, I was trying to get some experiences for next week. I was getting ahead. And um, there's a few good, interesting ones I ran across, but we'll, we'll talk about that next, Great. next I week. Great. forward to and, that um, one. Yeah. So let me just scroll down. Um, that's pretty much, I think, what everything I was going to talk about on the spiritualism. Um, okay. But but there's this book I ran across called Beyond Duality by Lawrence Gallian, and it's Beyond Duality, The Art of Transcendence. And he says, most people do not live from a deep place within themselves, but instead so float true. around on the waves of the surface of the ocean of life. The magician, or he says magician, dives deep into the ocean, swimming below the surface commotion and traveling deeper and deeper into the stillness until he or she reaches the bottom the ground of his or his, her being. In your ultimate truth, you are one with the stillness. And another there quote, you and, go. And the, and the caduceus, the two serpents are called Ob and Ode. As they twine around each other, they create the magical wand of double power. Unific unification of Ob and Ode is pictured by the globe that crowns the caduceus. The globe which climaxes the caduceus symbolizes the Nur Muhammadi or light of Muhammad. The R in Hebrew, which is the result of the state of equilibrium existing between the two serpent forces, this light is the supreme essence. William Wright called the serpent energy the organ. Has also been referred to as ki, kundalini, mana, prana, vril, animal magnetism, the odic force, the astral light, the libido. Anyway, the, we get into the theosophy. And I don't know if is Eliphas Levi is he considered theosophy, but he gets into all this magical stuff and he talks about the astral light and and Blavatsky did too. Mm -hmm. And I have some good quotes from that, but I for some reason I didn't have time to pull it in. But um, it's all right. No, no, it's all right. It's, but it, it st starts getting me in, interested in this solar wind stuff. Um, I was talking about Pan and Stairway to Heaven and you know, the wind and the willows. But I started thinking, what about the, the solar wind? They call it all these particles the that come wind, from the sun. Yeah. They call it a wind, right? It's a stream of energized par charged particles, primary electrons and protons flowing outward from the sun through the solar system at these tremendous uh, speeds, right? And, um, but it, it got me thinking about Wednesday, which is Woden's day, you yeah. know, Odin, Odin's Odin is, day, yeah. is Woden and it's Wednesday, you know, the, the day of the wind, you got the day of the sun, the day of the moon and the, you know, Saturn day, all these, they, and you got Wednesday and that's from Woden or Odin. Yeah. And yeah, this is the Norse God of the wind <laughs> and the dead <laughs> raises a sword and command of his wild hunt across the Midwestern sky. But Woden is the same being as Mercury or Hermes. Thank it's the son you. of, son of Osiris, you. son of Osiris. And it says, uh, Hermes Thoth, the, you know, really the Mercury important. threesome, the Hermes Thoth and Mercury in the form of Trismus, Trismegistus. He's, but he's a trickster god who prized cleverness and amusement above all else and was willing to toy with mortals and immortals alike. Conductor of souls, commerce, messenger of the gods. And Hermes or Mercury's relation to business and speed survives in words like mercurial and mercantile. Because of his speed, he was sometimes considered a god of winds. And Wikipedia says Hermes plays the role of the psychopomp or soul guide, a conductor of souls into the afterlife. Hermes began as a god with strong Catonic or underworld associations. He was worshipped in ancient times, the god of the road between the under and upper world, and uh, his role expanded. But he's uh, from boundaries, travelers, sailors, and commerce. Psychopomps, conveyor or conductor of souls, um, conductor, of conductor souls. or leader of souls into the underworld. And the Re Romans identified the Germanic god Odin with Mercury. 
And so anyway, it's very interesting connection there. Absolutely. I think. Huge. Definitely connects them directly with the wind. Yeah. And um, others, oh, according to this Jungian that. psychologist, everything Hermes thieves, he later sacrifices to the gods. He's identified by some with the archetype of healer as the ancient Greeks described ma healing magic to him. But he says, who's this god of wind? And um, yeah, so anyway, this pot, Pan was also known as Faunus, a nature god, the god of the forest, shepherds, flocks, played the pipe or pan flute. Uh, but his parents were sometimes said to be Hermes and Aphrodite, and of course the Caduceus. But the Corpus Hermeticum. Which would was, make sense. I mean, Aphrodite's especially. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Rosicrucianism is a movement which incorporates the Hermetic philosophy and, of course, the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn, which is uh, Crowley, I believe. Yeah. And it, um, yeah, so then I want this kind of ties into Native American shamanism and paganism. Um, because uh, the guy I met, he said that after hearing our shows, he says originally Pan was not worshipped and he was not a devil. He only became evil because outsiders changed the narrative. It's very difficult for us in the Christianized Western world to understand paganism, true paganism. American Indians were pagans. You know how they often were... I've read that? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, I, you know, I'm not saying he's wrong. I'm just saying mm -hmm. it's, uh, it seems like choo-choo, uh, the excuse train. Right. I don't know. I don't know. Just, yeah, just I don't either. Other. I'm just I like, saying. I like balance. So, like, I've been yeah. kind of demonizing Pan a lot, you know, in my stuff. And, you know, this maybe this is the other side. But mm -hmm. Pan, when I started researching this, I ran across this term, wind ego. It's called windigo. Wind ego. It, oh, like... it says wind ego. And it's the same thing as Watiko. Yeah. That Native American, and I don't know if you've heard of the Watiko with yeah. Paul Levy yeah. and stuff like yeah. that. But yeah, the word appears, uh, Wendigo, it's a half-beast creature that appears in uh, Guanquian uh, mythology. The word appears in many Native American languages and has many different translations. Uh, the source mm -hmm. of the English word is the Ojibwe word, Wendigo, in the Cree language. So they go to the different very variations of it, they're very similar. You just but, made um, me think of um, uh, Winnebago's, you know, the... <laughs> Wow. And, you know, they, yeah. they coast through the wind Winnebago. as they wow. as they drive. I never made that connection. That's, uh, yeah, that's a good one. Uh, but the Wendigo is part of the traditional belief system uh, that other well, descriptions can vary. They view the Wendigo as a malevolent, cannibalistic, supernatural being, often said to be malevolent, sometimes depicted as a creature with human-like characteristics which possesses human beings. The Wendigo is known to invoke feelings of insatiable greed or hunger, the desire to cannibalize other humans, as well as the propensity to commit murder in those that fall under its influence. And there's a fictional character in the Marvel Comics universe called Wendigo, I guess. There's a film from 2001 called Wendigo, in the movie, in the television series Supernatural, there's an episode called that. There's a song on a Sharon Needles album, Taxidermy, called Windigo. And, and all this stuff, I think, maybe comes from this 1910 horror novella by Algerin Blackwood called The Windigo. But um, he has a short story, and uh, it's just probably too much to go into. But um, according to, to the you. book, it's a, according to the book it, War or... in Heaven, the legend says it eats the souls of the dead on the astral plane and can sometimes kill living people and devour their souls as well. The mm. Wendigo is one of the most frightening spiritual monsters in human mythology, end quote. Um, and there's this article from the journal Cosmos called Seeing Watiko. It says, quote, many spiritual traditions, including Buddhism, Sufism, which is the mystical branch of Islam, Taoism, Gnosticism, as well as many indigenous cultures have long understood the mind-based nature of creation. These worldviews have at their core a recognition of the power of thought forms to determine the course of physical events. Various First Nation traditions of North America have specific and long-established lore relating to cannibalism and a term for the thought form that causes it, Watiko. We believe understanding this idea offers a powerful way of understanding the deepest roots of our global poly crisis. It says it's a word for, uh, can, same thing I was saying before, it short circuits the individual's ability to see itself as an enmeshed and interdependent part of a balanced environment and raises the self-serving ego to supremacy. And it's interesting, it's called wind ego. <laughs> wind ego, yeah. 
Wendigo, yeah. yeah. Um, says so the origin of Wetiko is the human psyche. Psychologically speaking, shadow projection is at the very root of Wetiko disease. That's from a book called Columbus and Other Cannibals by Jack mm -hmm. D. Forbes, which was first published in 1978. And he was a Native American uh, writer. And it says, paradoxically, Wetikos both try and destroy others' light as it reminds them of what they've killed in themselves while simultaneously mm. trying to appropriate the light for themselves. And their convoluted, upside-down, flawless illogic, Wetikos react to their own projections in the world as if they objectively exist and are oh other than themselves, God. thinking they themselves have nothing to do with creating that to which they are reacting. Oh, um, wow. they you become want, to, you want to repeat that, that those last two sentences? <laughs> Paradoxically, Watikos both try to destroy others' light as it reminds them of what they've killed in themselves while simultaneously trying to appropriate the light for themselves. And their convoluted, upside-down, flawless illogic, Watikos react to their own projections in the world as if they objectively exist and are other than themselves, thinking that they exist, uh, thinking that they themselves have nothing to do with creating that to which Damn. they are reacting. It kind of gets Listen into the Abogors, right? Yeah, of course. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. But they, they become unreal to themselves, a simulation of themselves. Yeah. It's like a virus that, like a vampire, if left to its own devices, Damn. would die. So it's deep. Only, able to exist if there's someone outside of it itself on whom it can feast. And here's a song called The Priests of the Golden Bowl by Buffy St. Marie. And it's called, it says, who brought the bomb wrapped up in business cards, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> the lies vary from place to place, but the truth is still the same. Money junkies all over the world trample us on their way to the bank. They run in every race, Wendigo. Their tongues are silver forks. There's a lack of wisdom. You can hear it on their breath. Wendigo. There was a crooked man who walked a crooked mile. He raised a crooked sixpence to hide a crooked style. He won a crooked vote and smiled a crooked smile. Wendigo. <laughs> that was an interesting song. Oh, I, I love it. Should have had it last yeah. week or, or the, <laughs> no, two that, weeks ago, no, but... that was perfect for tonight. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. And then Carlos Castaneda, you know, I don't know how much he, he may have been just researching a lot of that stuff that he wrote because they said that he never left and that, you know, he's a student at UCLA. But regardless, man, he certainly did his his, his uh, research. Absolutely. But, and I think he was having crazy amounts of astral projection experiences. Yeah. So he did a lot drugs. of he wrote about his training in shamanism mm -hmm. and he said about the parasites, quote, I did see some strange fleeting black shadow projected on the foliage of the trees. It was either a shadow going back and forth or various fleeting shadows moving side to side or straight up in the air. They looked like fat black fish to me, enormous fish. It was as if a gigantic swordfish were flying in the air. I was engrossed in the sight and it finally it scared me became too dark, but yet I could see the fleeting black shadows. He said, we have a predator that come from the deaths of the cosmos and took over the rule of our lives. Human mm. beings are its prisoners. The predator is our Lord and master and has rendered us dos docile. Um, but beating around the bush the whole time and sitting waiting knew that something is holding us prisoner. Indeed, we are held prisoner. This was an energetic fact for the sorcerers of ancient Mexico. They took over us because we are food for them and they squeeze us mercilessly because we are their sustenance. Just as we rear chickens and chicken coops, the predators mm. rear us in human coops, human narrows. Therefore, their food's always available to them. <laughs> and, I, and I know I read that in like the first episode, but I mean, it's, I know, it's, yeah, please, it's important. That's, that's <laughs> something that needs to be repeated please yeah and he says they are psychopathic handlers he's talking about are attracted to emotions mm -hmm. animal fear is what attracts them the most it releases mm -hmm. the kind of energy that suits them uh says so sorcerers believe that predators have given us our systems of belief our ideas of good and evil our social mores they are the ones that set up our hopes and expectations and dreams of success and failure they've given us covetousness greed and cowardice it's the predators who make us complacent and egomaniac mm -hmm. and egomaniacal predators give us their mind which becomes our mind he says the great trick of those sorcerers of ancient times was to burden the flyer's mind with discipline sorcerers found out that if they tax the flyer's mind with inner silence the foreign installation would flee and give any one of the practitioners involved in this maneuver the total certainty of the mind's foreign origins so so amazing yeah. it was incredible and then yeah, I'm and thinking, he, so they gave us their minds too. I yeah. mean, it's just, it's like, it, it, whoo, that these last few seg segments have been really, really powerful. Really, yeah. I mean, the whole thing well, has been powerful, Wayne. I got some you, really what you bring to the table is just, 
I just totally above and beyond. Like. Well, he, he talks about this inner silence in his book, The Active Side of Infinity. He says, inner silence is a peculiar state of being in which thoughts are canceled out and one can function from a level other than that of daily awareness. Inner silence means the suspension of the internal dialogue, the perennial companion of thought, and is therefore a state of profound quietude. Yeah, there's a lot. I mean, I can continue. Inner silence works from the moment you begin to accrue it. What the old sorcerers were after was the final dramatic and result of reaching that individual threshold of silence. Some very talented practitioners need only a few minutes of silence to reach that coveted goal. Others, less talented, need long, long periods of silence, perhaps more than one hour of complete quietude before they reach the desired result. Oh, the desired so result... True. So true. It's what the old sorcerer is called stopping the world, the moment when everything around us ceases to be what it's always been. This is the moment when sorcerers return to the true nature of man. The old sorcerers also called it total freedom. It's the moment when man, the slave, becomes man, the free being, capable of feats of perception that defy our linear imagination. Oh, um, damn. And the power of silence, he says, you can use inner silence to quiet them. You obviously don't want to give them a reaction to feed off, right? Um, yeah, I mean, it's perfect. Yeah, it's, uh, you can Eckhart keep Tolle. going if you if there's more. Yeah, um, up to you. Not really. Okay, uh, that was awesome. Just Eckhart Tolle said, "Be the silent watcher of your <laughs> thoughts and behavior. You're beneath the thinker. You're the stillness beneath the mental noise. You're the love and joy beneath the pain." And Nikola Tesla, maybe a little more up in people's uh, valuation, said, "Be in the stillness of yourself to connect with your reality." Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. And I think, uh, okay, I spoke with somebody and I'm pretty sure. Uh, I believe it was Night Sky, if you're listening. I, I, I'm sure she's asleep right now, but I think she's the one that told me that Eckhart Tolle had something about. Um, reincarnation and some sort of soul trap narrative that was supposed to be in one of the chapters of his book huh. or some sort of communication with an entity or, or something along those lines that was pretty freaky. Interesting. And it was the publisher said, you got to take it out. Wow. Yeah. Hmm. So just throwing yeah. that out there. I don't I, yeah. it may have been somebody else, but I'm almost positive it was Eckhart Tolle. Night Sky, if you're listening later on to the replay, feel free to to leave uh, clarification in the comments. Because I'm almost positive I, she's the one that's shared it with me. I do have a few more lines here that Great. from um, Castaneda. Fear, it fears that any moment its maneuver is going to be uncovered and its food is going to be denied. Through the mind, which after all is their mind, the predators inject into the lives of human beings whatever is convenient for them. That kind of reminds me of NDEs, possibly, mm, right? Yeah. <laughs> it proposes something, it agrees with its own proposition, and it makes you believe that you've done something of worth. So, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's uh, the, the setup job. Yeah, then I got like a little thing on fallen angels and demons, like yeah. the book of Enoch. But that's right. just you know the Watchers, and everybody probably knows about that stuff. Well, but. I mean, you could we can say that people know it, but I I think it's a really I think again it's important to if it's up to you, Wayne. Of course, like I want to respect you and your wishes too. But uh, I'd love to put out as much as you want to, and we are kind of pulling into the fourth hour here so that's what worries me <laughs> that's we're gonna <laughs> well, run out of time well i mean yeah, we can always make just... this multiple parts we don't have to you know we could always even well, if... what i could do is save a lot of the section on buddhism which gets pretty deep it's almost like to me could be one of the potential solutions as is mm -hmm. narcissism so yeah we could I, kind of yeah. waylay that a little bit um, yeah. into the solutions um, uh, so let's but... take a break we'll take okay. five and a half minutes and um Let's figure, you know, and if we have to do a part two to this, let's do it. Even if it's a short one, who cares? Right. I mean, I think that this is really important because it spans so much. And, it, you know, if you have someone coming here and uh, open minded and they see the correlations between this one, this one, this one and that one, it, it, it I think it's it's helpful to help them awake and just see 
how similar the narratives are and how it's just an ongoing uh, reveal in different sections of yeah. knowledge and religion. Yeah. We could touch on the, a little bit of the Book of Enoch when we come back, because um, right. I think some of this is in the, the Jewish mysticism, and so yeah. I'd like to speak a little bit. It contains a lot of truth here, on, I think, on some right. of it. So, Thanks, Wayne. Uh, All right, so yeah. yeah, let's take five and a half minutes. Wayne, if you could just uh, mute your mic on your way out, sure. that would be great, and I'll see you all in a few. Thank you, everybody, for joining us tonight, and we'll see you in about five and a half minutes. Thank you.
I'm doing good. Yeah. Sure. Is this the fifth one or the fourth? It's kind of. Oh, okay, good. And oh, we're fine then. Oh, depends how deep we get into the Buddhism stuff, though. <laughs> yeah. We've got tons of stuff on that. But yeah. All right. All right. So here we go. Five, four, three, two, and one. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Forever Conscious Research Channel. Uh, thanks for sticking with us, hanging in there through our breaks. Uh, this is like a, a po another power session with Mr. Wayne Bush. And um, I just wanted to remind um, Last Timers Club members out there, we have our meeting tomorrow at or our members monthly stream tomorrow at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And if anyone's interested in joining, please check the pinned comment above. And don't forget to go to Wayne Bush's website, trickedbythelight.com, for a uh, an absolute cornucopia of resources as it pertains to the Soul Trap. So, Wayne, uh, where are we headed next, my friend? Well, I was just going to mention that um, some sects of Judaism identified the sons of God that um, in Genesis 6... Uh, one, four through four is uh, fallen angels, like the so-called Nephilim. Mm -hmm. And also there are watchers, which may have been mentioned in Genesis as the Nephilim because they became enamored with human women and had intercourse with them. The offspring of these unions and the knowledge they were given corrupted human beings in the earth. A Jewish story of angels coming down to earth rather than being cast down. They are also in the book of Enoch, the book of giants. Yep. And the, get this, the Greek word for watchers is agrigori. <laughs> agrigori. Yeah, agrigor. yeah. I, mean, I don't know if that's true or not, but that's what this says. The watchers are Gilgamesh, etc., shown in the book of giants. And Gilgamesh was supposedly half human, half God. So he begs the gods for eternal life, but they say, no, he can be a judge in the underworld. Hence above humans, but below gods. Titans would be the first generation gods, Inki, Enlil, etc. But the Muslim jinn are akin to demons in Christian tradition. And the Quran says that the jinn were created from a smokeless and, quote, scorching fire. That's what you mentioned earlier, right? Yeah. Yep. So here, this is from the book of Enoch. And it's chapter 6, verse 1. It's interesting that Genesis 6, 1 and book of Enoch 6, 1, there may be some yeah, numerology kind of there. Yeah, correlation so. going on there. Yeah, it says, yeah. and it came to pass when the sons of men had increased, that in those days they were born to them fair and beautiful daughters. And the angels, the sons of heaven, saw them and desired them. And they said to one another, come, let us choose for ourselves wives from the children of men, and let us beget for ourselves children. And Simyaze, who was their leader, said to them, I fear that you may not wish this deed to be done, and that I alone will pay for this great sin. And they all answered and said, let us all swear an oath and bind one another with curses. So not to alter this plan, but to carry out this plan effectively. Then they all swore together and all bound one another with curses to it. And they were in all 200. And they came down on Ardis, which is the summit of Mount Hermon. And they called the Mount Hermon because on it, they swore and bound one another with curses. And these are the names of their leaders. Samyaze, who is their leader. And then there's just a bunch of names, which I'm not going to try to read. No worries. I'm like, these, that are the too. these are the leaders. These are the leaders of the 200 angels and all the others with them. And they took wives for themselves and everyone chose for him, um, self one each. And they began to go into them and were promiscuous with them. This is getting kind of dirty. And they taught them <laughs> charms and spells. They taught them charms and spells. And they showed them the cutting of roots and trees. And they became pregnant and bore large giants. And their heart was 3,000. Their height was 3,000 cubits. These devoured all the toil of men until men were unable to sustain them. And the giants turned against them in order to devour men. They began to sin against birds and animals, reptiles, uh. fish. They devoured one another's flesh and drank blood from it. Yeah, then transhumanism. And then the earth complained about the lawless ones. And Azazel taught men to make swords and daggers and shields and breastplates. And he showed them the things after these and the art of making them bracelets and ornaments and the art of making up the eyes 
and beautifying the eyelids and the most precious stones and all kinds of colored dyes and the world was changed and there was great impiety and much fornication and they went astray and all their ways became corrupt so that's, yeah, that's yeah. sounds sounds right to me i mean uh yeah. the whole the way the whole thing has been hidden from us too but you can you can see why that doesn't make it into the you know the, the, can, the typical canon of the uh, bible not not allowed wayne not allowed but it did kind of slide in there when, in genesis 6 1 4 it where did. they called them giants there were giants in the yeah, there were giants days. in these days yeah yeah so so anyway, the New Age, um, I'd like to take a little time to talk about the New Age movement where truth seekers are constantly looking outside of themselves for help and open up their energy field to spirit guides, gurus, channelers, angels, so-called ascended masters, even extraterrestrials. In my opinion, possibly all these are merely archons and masquerade. Reincarnation is also a common teaching in the New Age and that we need to do so in order to evolve spiritually. It pushes the idea of counselors, guides, or masters who help us pick out our next life. If life is a school, it seems to be a pretty bad one since people don't seem to be learning their lessons. Where did all these so-called flaws and shortcomings come from anyway? Were we just created as blank slates that need to learn lessons lifetime after lifetime for thousands and thousands of years through suffering? That is a pretty poor way to teach, if you ask me. And indie yeah. ears say there's nothing but love in the light, so why would there be a need to grow? And when is enough enough? Well, aren't they all knowing, too, sometimes, Wayne? Yeah, they can. Yeah, they're all knowing. Ask any question. It's like a go uh, universal Google over there. You just, you know. Yeah, but if they're all knowing, Wayne, then why would they have to come down here? Exactly. And I'm, I wish. I they were all next, knowing. The next episode, I'm going to find that that the guy that had the near death experience, and he said that he disagreed. He he literally said that he, you know, people say that the Earth is a school, and he said that I don't see how that. He said that. He, you just ask the question and it's like, it could be like telepathically like given to you yeah. or anyway, yeah. transferred immediately. So, um, how big do we need to grow? It seems like greed and ego to me and, and judgment that someone needs to learn more. We are going to analyze a bunch of the near death experiences in the next episode and point out issues. And, but why can't they just telepathically or empathically download the lessons or wisdom immediately for us? Some say, experience is necessary and the only way to learn well i don't buy that and after all mm -hmm. isn't it just all energy or light or information that can be transmitted or imparted yeah. instantaneously and so i've just recently been in correspondence well this this when i wrote this it was recent but now it's been a while right. <laughs> with, a, with a woman who attended such angel gatherings and wrote me about how in the end they had drained her of her energy she wrote quote i've had experiences with an et archangels and dolphins during various occasions i used to be very involved with various oh. spiritual groups and i'm very sensitive to energy and was able to connect with these beings my life and the lives of the other people involved turned absolutely terrible and now i have no doubt those beings were from the false light Jeez. i'm working on cleaning up my energy and reversing the pain and illness they inflicted on me it's not my intention to judge i just find it very suspicious that so many people who i've come across in spiritual groups are such a mess it feels counterintuitive shouldn't angels help us to make better choices and make us feel better at a gathering there are seven people it is based on sacred geometry and looks like two pyramids overlapping one upside down i forget what the shape's called six people form the two triangles and have certain crystals at their feet one person stands in the middle which is referred to as the well of souls allegedly while in the well of souls the angels oh, rewire your, your dna i'm not sure what this means but now it really scares me i know what it means <laughs> yeah each person took a turn in the well of souls i went last and it was crazy i left my body and felt amazing so much love and joy it felt so good i did not want to come back my physical body started to shut down and i started screaming that i was leaving my body and refused to come back it's hard to explain but everyone started screaming and trying to revive me because i'd passed out and then a beam of light comes shining down through the window, even though it was fall, cold, and no sunshine at all. And the light beam zapped me. I could literally feel the beam push me back in my body. We all became quiet and looked at each other, wondering what the heck happened. The woman who hosted the gathering said the angels told her that I was some kind of frequency carrier and that oh, I had God. some special mission. I was to be treated special. Yeah, yeah, and sure. everyone listened to what the angels instructed. That night, I went back to my hotel room, and that is when I made direct contact with the angels. I never saw their faces. What I saw looked sort of like flags. This really should be in the experience section. <laughs> oh, well, well. no, it's, it's great. It's it throwing into the in new there. age, right? Yeah, no, so each one, right. yeah. 
He said, uh, it looked like flags blowing in the wind. Each one had a solid color and was extremely vibrant, more so than earthly colors. They were communicating with me and the talk felt like incessant chatter. It was overwhelming. They opened my third eye, which appeared in my mind's eye to be as big as a house. I Wayne, felt as Wayne, though- Wayne, I'm, I'm sorry. Can you just maybe adjust your mic? It seems like it, I don't know if maybe the cloth is, there we go. Thank you. Does that, does that sound better? Yeah. They opened my third eye. They were communicating with me uh, I lost my communicating with me. And the talk felt like incessant chatter. It was overwhelming. They opened my third eye, which appeared in my mind's eye to be as big as a house. I felt as though I was under a spell or hypnotized. They were working on me. I suspect now they were actually speaking with one another. I felt like I was being prodded and I was completely limp and powerless. I asked them to stop, but they ignored me. It was not necessarily unpleasant, but I felt extremely vulnerable and confused. I felt dizzy or intoxicated, but I thought they were rewiring me and making me better. I thought I was being healed. The love I felt from them was more loving than I'd ever felt. Sadly, I continued being involved with the gatherings, having many crazy more experiences. I did angel healings on others, ugh, and hosted gatherings. The angels were no doubt later in my house. It stopped after I learned about stories of adultery, pedophilia, illness, stealing, and bankruptcy. I left the group, but I still trusted the angels. I'm so embarrassed. I think something to consider is that they use light beams to move us and they hypnotize us or cast a spell and really overwhelm our thought process after we die. Finally, my experience with an Arcturian ET, I, I joined a group, the guy channeled the fifth dimensional beings and we were told they wanted to help us ascend to either the fourth or fifth dimension, depending on a person's level of consciousness. I participated in various group meditations. The premise was that if you read the book and follow some instructions, you might get a visit from an ET. And I did. It occurred first thing in the morning when I was in between state of sleeping and waking. I opened my eyes and an ET was standing next to my bed. And I, yeah, so astral projection. Yeah, I immediately wanted to scream, but he quickly calmed me and told me to close my eyes so I'd not be afraid. He communicated telepathically. He was about six feet, looked like a lizard, and had huge bug eyes. It looked like something you might see in a movie. Have you ever watched Land of the Lost? It looked a bit like a slea stack. For about 30 minutes, the ET infused me with energy. I could feel it, and I loved it. I also had the sense he was scanning my body in some way, but I don't know. The energy I received was intense, but healing, loving, and joyful. After it ended, I was frozen for about an hour. I couldn't move, and I was afraid to open my eyes. When they tell you to do something, it takes a lot of willpower not to obey. They were very controlling, obey. or perhaps I am very submissive to them. They have a way of making you feel like putty in their hands. For days, I felt wonderful, the best I've ever felt. I wanted to jump from rooftop to rooftop because I felt invincible, but then I crashed. I became very ill. I laid in bed for about six months. My husband wow. would come home from work at 6 p.m. and make me some dinner. I didn't have the strength to shower most days. I was a mess. Slowly, I did improve, but I'm still to this day not 100%. I'm not able to work or function like I used to. Wow. Anyway, so these angel gatherings and... Um, yeah, no, I mean, I think group meditations in general are um, just extremely dangerous because you're, you're surrounded by people's psyches that you don't know where they're at. Um, let alone uh, borderline being involved with a cult. And, um, you know, I'm assuming that's what we're dealing with. But uh, sounds um, like it. Yeah. Um, but wow, talk about, uh, you know, eye opening. I mean, it's just, whew, right? All in our face. And the new age, I mean, we, we could talk about uh, merging with source. I mean, I'm sure we're going to get to that. But, yeah. you know, I mean, that that's a. That's a really creepy, creepy thing going on. You know, uh, you know, dissolve yourself and, you know, yeah. submit. I am not worthy. You know, just let, let's merge and be one. You know, I don't want anything to do with being one. I don't it want anything to do to with that it. Collectivism versus individual. Yeah, yes. Um, yes. Um, yep. Yep. Which we talked about in the Hollywood stuff. It's, yep. Yeah. It's out there for sure. Uh, and it, you're right. It's prominent very much in new age. It's also in the near death experiences, which. Yeah. Why we'll is it so prevalent? To. Yeah. I don't, it's you know. agenda driven. There's, there's no doubt about it. In my opinion, I just, I mean, I look at this and there's just too much. There's too much there, Wayne, too much. It's a lot. And then Taoism, the first chapter of the uh, Tao Te Ching, the book of the way, 
by LaSalle states, the quote, the, ta the Tao that cannot be told is not the eternal Tao. The name that can be named is not the eternal name. The nameless is the beginning of heaven and earth. The named is the mother of 10,000 things. Ever desireless, one can see the mystery. Ever desiring, one can see the manifestations. Mm. These two spring from the same source, but differ in name. This appears as darkness, darkness within darkness, the gate to all mystery. Tao can be infused into the nature and put to use without being exhausted. It's so deep yeah. and subtle, like an abyss, that's the origin of all things. Tao is so profound and yet invisible. It exists in everywhere and anywhere. Um, the, it's the empty space that gives the function of a vessel, while the, the emptiness of void is what can be utilized. What cannot be seen is called invisible. What cannot be heard is the inaudible. That sounds a lot like the Gnostic thing I read earlier. Hmm. Yeah, it does. In these it different does. philosophies um, it says the true void of Tao has no desires. All things in the world origin originate from the manifestation of Tao. The manifestation of Tao is the form of being which originates originates from the non-being of the void, the great Tao. That's chapter forty. It says the great Tao is formless, invisible, has no name. Um, yeah, so just a lot of stuff like that. That's the great. cosmic game of yin and yang um yeah, this is well, from a book yeah feel free to pop that in there if you want it's up to you I, you know i don't want i know i don't want to keep uh, saying it says the Tao says when you go into the dark and this becomes total the darkness soon turns into light which i found in my own med darkness meditation experiment um oh, when yeah you, when you enter this primordial state or force, you are reunited with the true self or divinity within. Eventually, we awaken within ourselves the awareness of the source, the spirit, the soul. We descend into the void, into the darkness, a deep inner space. The light appears. Um, so the light appears. And that, you know, yeah. what, what do we see in the void experiences? That's what happens. They'll be, oh, well, you know, I'm having this ND. It could be hell like, could be amazing. Uh, but what I find interesting about the hell like NDEs is they have that one pinpoint of light or that uh, I interviewed someone, which I still haven't put out, but um, he had an NDE, a hell like NDE, and he was seeing an altar with light. And uh, even though he everything around him was, you know, pretty crappy um he would concentrate on that altar and it would give him uh this relief it would you know it wouldn't be fearful but um and we see those in those void NDs too where you know they they see the light in the distance or the pinprick of light in the distance and uh it gives them solace and it's almost like it's sitting there say hey See this? Yeah, come to me. Come to me. You know, I'm okay. I'm nice. But you know, you got to give your permission to come here or, or something like that. I mean, that that's kind of just how I feel it's being represented, but Yeah, well, I'm yeah. definitely getting into the NDEs. There's a lot of uh, void experiences. Mm -hmm. uh, I got I actually had a page that had like 200 of them and not all. I mean, most of them are are good, I, I think. Um mm -hmm. but there's, you know, maybe a third. I don't know. I don't know the exact yeah. percentage that are negative but um i think it depends so, on their their what was going on in their mind. lives you know yeah. i mean yeah i mean that that's the that's the thing about all the nds it's like we're, we're not in we're not in their state of mind at that moment or that's leading exactly right. up to that moment and yeah. so everything can unfold in a certain way that we are kind of left in the dark but we get these yeah. you know glimpses of things we can label is truth but you know we're dealing with yeah. the astral here too so it's it's really complex well this next section could be super duper long <laughs> if i let it go it's um, up to buddhism. you the buddhism yeah, i'll keep going next... as long as you want to it's up to buddhism you. is the next section and it, it, i've Sounds got a ton good. of stuff on it but um right. it's probably overkill but um so I apologize if this art, oh, I was writing an article at the time, if these Buddhist terms and philosophies off putting, but once one becomes aware of the suffering in this world, and it's like a prison for our spirit. And once one discovers through new death experiences, that life is like an illusion and that separation is an illusion. And we have a hyper aware state. Once we shut our physical bodies, 
And many near-death experiencers report what have uh, been void in their own words, and some of them even recognize it as the bardo in the Tibetan Book of the Dead, that it's at least worth looking into the Buddhist philosophies. Buddhism, like Hinduism, teaches that one needs to become liberated from the cycle of rebirth, which is reincarnating onto Earth, which is based in illusion. They directly address the issue of suffering here on Earth, and they delve deeply into the nature of consciousness itself. Here's some interesting quotes from Buddha. Work out your own salvation. Do not depend on others. No one saves us mm -hmm. but ourselves. No That's one right. can and no one may. We ourselves must walk the path. Doubt everything. Find your own light. Well, we are light, right? Be a lamp for yourselves. Be your own refuge. Seek for no other. All things must pass. That's a George Harrison thing. Strive yeah, on diligently. Don't give up. And here's one. Buddha says the root of suffering is attachment. Stop, stop, do not speak. The ultimate truth is not even to think. I don't know about that one. A man asked Gautama Buddha, I want happiness. Buddha said, first remove I, that's ego, then remove want, that's desire. See, now you are left with only happiness. Life is like a harp string. If it's strung too tight, it won't play. If it's too loose, it hangs. The tension that produces the beautiful sound lies in the middle. Everything in moderation, including moderation. Uh, he says, don't go by reports, by legends, by traditions, by scripture, by logical conjecture, by inference, by analogies, by agreement through pondering views, by probability, or by the thought, this contemplative is our teacher. When you know for yourselves that these mental qualities are skillful, these mental qualities are blameless, these mental qualities are praised by the wise, these mental qualities, when adopted and carried out, lead to welfare and to happiness. Then you should enter and remain in them. Mm. And he talks about suffering. He says, but as for any Brahmins or con contemplatives who, know, who do know as it's actually present, that is, this is suffering. Who know as it's actually present, that this is the origination of suffering. This is the cessation of suffering. This is the path of practice leading to the cessation of suffering. They don't revel in thought fabrications leading to birth. They don't revel in fabrications leading to aging. They don't revel in fabrications leading to death. Don't revel in fabrications leading to sorrow, lamentation, pain, distress, and despair. Um, so he talked a lot about suffering um, being in desire and attachment mm -hmm. being um, things that lead to our misery, to our you know unhappiness. Um, yeah. Yeah. He says, um, form is like a glob of foam. Feeling, a bubble, perception, a mirage, fabrications, a banana tree, consciousness, a magic trick. Um, this has been taught by the kinsmen of the sun. However you observe them, appropriately examine them. They're empty, void to whoever sees them appropriately. Beginning with the body is taught by the one with profound discernment. And he goes on, he says, uh, form is rejected, cast aside. When bereft of these, it lies thrown away, senseless, a meal for others. That's the way it goes. It's a magic trick, an idiot's babbling. It's said to be a murderer. No substance here is found. Thus a monk, persistence aroused, should view the aggregates by day and by night, mindful, alert, should discard all fetters, should make himself his own refuge. Yeah. Um, Boom. Those who are ignorant of the void cannot achieve liberation. These confused minds wander in the prison of the six realms. That's the Bodhi Chattana Vivarana. <laughs> yeah. So the, there's different realms in Buddhism. Uh, this is from the Encyclopedia. Encyclopedia I can't speak anymore. Encyclopedia Britannica. Uh, there's a, a Rupa Loka which is the world of immaterial form. And Buddhists thought the highest of the three spheres of existence in which rebirth takes place. The other two are Rupa Loka, the world of form, and Kama Loka, the world of feeling. Um, in a Rupa Loka, existence depends on the stage of concentration attained, and there are four levels, the infinity of space, the infinity of thought, the infinity of non-being, and the infinity of neither consciousness nor non-consciousness. The Rupa Loka, which is free from sensuous desire, but still conditioned by form, is inhabited by gods. It's also further subdivided into spheres and inhabited by Brahma, the luminous deities, by the blissful gods, and by the deities of great fruits. Kama Loka includes the six heavens of the lesser gods and the five worlds, the worlds of men, demons, ghosts, animals, and purgatory. 
As superior as his rebirth in a higher world, such an existence is nonetheless temporary, subject to change, and involves the fundamental conflicts of existence within the limits of transmigration. This can be broken only by further spiritual insight resulting in nirvana and release from the cycle of rebirth. Wow. Um, Mm-hmm. Yeah. So then you got Zen Buddhism and it talks about crushing or any attachment to this illuminating consciousness and illuminating voidness. This illuminating void character, empty yet dynamic, is the essence of the mind. Sunyata is the Sanskrit word for uh, voidness. Um, voidness. I like yeah. that. Yeah. But I like the the teaching of like the middle way, the middle path and about balance and moderation and not going to too extreme. Because the polarity, right? You're going back between the light and the dark and the um, the hot and the cold, all that stuff. Yeah, that's how I've tried to live my life, Wayne. It's, uh, it seems the only way. I mean, when you're kind of jam-packed into a duality, it's just, uh, I, I kind of equate it to walking the tightrope in the circus you know they're up on the, yeah. the big tightrope trying to keep their self balanced and you, you know you're being far pulled way, this way yeah. this way yeah i mean it's uh that's how i've looked at almost my entire life at this point and more so since uh my progression through things like this yeah so here's some more on the middle path The four noble truths comprise the essence of Buddha's teaching. They are the truth of suffering, the truth of the cause of suffering, the truth of the end of suffering, and the truth of the path that leads to the end of suffering. The fourth noble truth is called the middle path because it's avoiding two extremes. Buddha found that the middle path gives vision and knowledge leading to nirvana, the release from suffering. It's also called the noble eightfold path. The essence of Buddha's teaching was not actually in the middle path, but in pointing to three problems or poisons of our ordinary way of existence. Ignorance, which is wrong interpretation and perception of reality, attachments and aversions. These are exactly what keeps us uh, reincarnating again and again in the samsara or illusion. So they have to be unrooted, removed, if we want to liberate ourselves from these compulsive rebirths. And his four noble truths and eightfold path offered a lifelong practice that can lead to liberation from compulsive rebirths in the samsara. Yeah, the wheel of samsara. Yeah, so it's um, his point was it's not the traps and deceits of Brahma, Mara, Demiurge, or whatever that keeps us trapped in samsara. It's our own ignorance and addictions to pleasures that forces us to agree to reincarnate. He taught about different realms beyond the material world and their rulers so that people are aware of what to expect when we die, but he didn't elaborate that much on that. But uh, mm-hmm. His monastic rules were pretty strict in denial of sensual pleasures, celibacy, no sex, no possessions. It was still a moderate way compared to extreme self-mortification practices of some of his contemporary ascetics. And here's how the middle path was given in the original Buddha words. Um, He says, avoiding both these extremes, um, the perfect one is realized the middle path. It gives vision, knowledge, and leads to calm, to insight, to enlightenment, and to nibbana. And what is the middle path realized? It's the na- noble eightfold path and nothing else, namely right understanding, right thought, right speech, uh, right action, right livelihood, right effort, right mindfulness, and right concentration. So, um, anyway, yeah, a it's, lot of accuracy there. Yeah. I mean, and that's, my, that's what helped me. I mean, <laughs> I mean, that was a path I walk and still walk in almost every way to this day. Oh, with a little rhyme right there, but. Um, <laughs> like <yeah>. that. You're <laughs> a poet and you don't know it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and, a, oh, yes, yes. I should uh, be published immediately. <laughs> right. Uh, but, but yeah, no, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's a, a good way to um, do you. You know, just concentrate yeah. on yourself. In uh, Mahayana Buddhism, the middle way refers to the insight into sunyata emptiness that yeah. transcends the extremes of existence and non-existence. Uh, and Dochen, the, what the Buddhist Dochen text has to say about it, quote, from the beginning, you beings are deluded because you do not recognize the awareness of the ground, and you are thus unmindful and indecisive, which is the very state of awareness, the cause of going astray. From this delusive yeah. state comes a sudden fainting away and then a subtle wavering fear. From that wavering, there arises a separation of self 
and the perception of others as separate beings and enemies. Gradually, the tendency of separation strengthens, and from the circle of samsara begins, then the emotions of five poisons develop, and the actions of these emotions are endless. You beings lack awareness because you are unmindful, and this is the basis of you going astray. May all you beings recognize your intrinsic awareness. So, yeah, the, the, yeah, that's a classic quote. Yeah, and the point is, yeah. if you see the ground awareness and you cleared your mind of all illusions and separation, you also clearly see that all things themselves are unreal. And in this situation, yes. yeah. it makes absolutely no sense to have any desire to reincarnate. It just seems very stupid thing to do. You do not develop the desire to become someone, but you do not get bored, although you can still do a lot of activities without falling into delusion of separation, but you're not drawn to these activities because of the impulse from boredom. You become truly free and liberated of any mental conditioning. Wow. I mean, so like, I go ahead, Wayne. Oh, yeah. If, so if the source manifested the astral and material planes out of boredom and desire to experience separation, this simply means he's not enlightened. He is in yeah. samsaric state of mind. Yeah. He doesn't know his own origin, the ground awareness, and which is what Nancy, um, the near death experiencer said, I forget her last name right now. He does not know his own origin. And um, what's the benefit of merging with him? Yes, you'll experience all sorts of unconditional love, bliss, and rapture. And then what? Become bored again? You'll not get enlightened and truly liberated from merging with him because he's not enlightened. And that's yeah. what the near death experiencer, Nancy, um, God, why can't I remember her name? But she I was saying you're talking about yeah. she merged with this being of light and the near death experiences, and she felt that he was not the end all be all, and that there were others that he was uh, like he was confused himself possibly, and that yeah anyway yeah so. no that's a, that's an interesting one, and then you have the um, you see especially with the uh, healing NDEs like the really really nasty uh car accidents or um you know just very very traumatic um events that someone might incur and um they'll talk about merging with the light going to another realm where there is a light that they're trying to chase or connect with they merge with it and um okay well I'll give you the the overall uh, point I'll throw out there is that it seems like that is a, a healing modality, especially for people who have really, really. I mean, we're talking about the specifically the cases I'm talking about are very traumatic. They're they're over the top, um, you know, car accidents or whatever, and um, and then you have other cases where. They're still chasing the light, chasing the light, trying to get with the light, and they'll merge with the light. And again, a healing will happen, but sometimes they're sent to a something that is like almost like a rundown hospital. I mean, those pop up, and I see those, and they're just weird. But the point is, is the only reason I'm bringing up any of these is that they're connecting with the light as... Um, a healing modality that's just going to bring them back here. Um, it's just, it's mind blowing to me to see those. Um, some of them are really interesting, especially the ones like the people who are in comas. You get a oh, yeah. lot, a lot of detail with those. I had a woman email me. She was in a coma in a hospital. And I hope I remember to put this in the experiences, but she sure. said that I had been reading your material and she said, and so I, at my moment of death, I decided I wasn't going to go toward any angels or toward any light. And so she stayed in this black void. And she said that all the nurses would come in because she, she said the room was so peaceful and they were getting so much bliss. You from bet it was. Her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so I, I'll make sure I, I read that. If Remind me if I don't. But I'll um, try and send you one, too. Like one of my favorite ones. Let me just. Uh, OK, so I, I took a note. Coma woman, her testimony. And then um, uh, I want to send you it's ND. I think it's from South America. I'll, I'll dig it up. I have it saved somewhere. All right. Yeah, and I think um, Dan from the Overwatch, Overwatch yeah. Park, she, he was here um, earlier. This this woman emailed me, and she was in a void too, and she didn't necessarily believe in like the afterlife and all that stuff, but she had more of a hellish experience. And I think Dan went on to interview her, 
And um, she was, yeah, he was saying that she was meeting with Sophia. He called the being Sophia. I don't know mm. one way or the other, but it's very possible. But uh, anyway, just, just to get balance to it, you know, that not all void experiences are you know blissful and great, but for sure, for sure. Yeah. And I just wanted to thank AA for her $2 super chat and uh, for uh, helping with the channel. And uh, she, she has a question for you, Wayne. And the question is, uh, Wayne, what is your view when Christians speak in tongues? Is this from the astral? Possession, maybe. <laughs> yeah, pos that's, um, that's what I think. Gloss it it's called glossolalia, I believe. And um, I, they're in this, they've taken up in the spirit. I mean, there's some spirit that's taking over them. I mean, I don't pretend to know the answer to it. But eh. the first thing that comes to my mind is like when musicians say that, uh, being or entity takes over their body and they're playing through them or they're being possessed. Yeah. Um, you know, the Holy spirit, they're like basically invoking the Holy spirit in a lot of cases, the Christians yeah. and, and right it. Yeah. So what, who is this Holy spirit or what is this Holy spirit? I'm not saying it's bad <laughs> and you gotta be careful with blaspheming the Holy spirit. I mean, I, I just don't um, know one way or the other, but it makes you wonder there's a spirit mm. that's coming in and, um, you know, taking over the, the body, I guess, because a lot of times they don't know the language you're speaking even. That's the crazy part, Wayne, right? They, it's a language you never spoke. They'll start speaking, spitting out Latin or something weird. It's like channeling, too. Yeah. I mean, something's taking them over and speaking yeah. through them. And, um... and I'll take over and just say that. Uh, well, I won't take over, but I'll just I'll just input that, you know. Yeah, they're they're being controlled by entities. I'm <laughs> just saying, you know, I think I think it. it it's ridiculous that uh i mean i've seen it um with one of my former neighbors who would do it high rolling christian um and she would come over you know anything that went wrong she would come over and start you know oh you know convulsing and and saying all sorts of weird things beautiful beautiful good-hearted lady but who boy i mean talk about you know just it, it wasn't her it's just it was not her so yeah that's all <laughs> oh, i i would tend to lean that way myself i mean like i said i think it's possession um yeah. so yeah so the tibetan book of the dead here's a, a quote from it oh nobly bone oh nobly born listen now thou art experienced the radiance of the clear light of pure reality recognize this is that death this is what's read to them at death Re you're now experience the radiance of the clear light of pure reality. Recognize it, O oh, nobly born, thy present intellect and in real nature void, not formed into anything as regards characteristics or color. Naturally void is the very reality, the all good. I know intellect, which is now voidness, yet now not to be regarded as the voidness of nothingness, but as being the intellect itself, unobstructed, shining, thrilling, and blissful as the very consciousness, the all-good Buddha. Thine own consciousness, not formed into anything in reality void, and the intellect shining and blissful, these two are inseparable. The union of them is the Dharmakaya state of perfect enlightenment, end quote. So that's their take on that. The clear light, which is different probably from the white light, according to mm -hmm. one of the ladies who helped translate one of the versions of the, one of the translations of the book of the dead or Tibetan book of the dead. Um, Thine own consciousness, shining void and inseparable from the great body of radiance hath no birth nor death and the immutable light. Buddha Amitabha, knowing this is sufficient, recognizing the voidness of thine own intellect to be Buddhahood and looking upon it as being thine own consciousness is it, keep myself, keep thyself in the state of divine mind of the Buddha. Um, secondly, it will cause the naked consciousness to be recognized as the clear light and it says liberation will be certain. The Tibetan book of living and dying, which I think is another good book. It's recent. Absolutely. It says, yeah. It says at the moment of death, the ground luminosity or clear light dawns in all its splendor. The Tibetan book of the dead says, O son or daughter of enlightened family, your rig pot is inseparable luminosity and emptiness and dwells as a great expanse of light beyond birth or death. It is in fact, the Buddha of unchanging light. The author warns, however, quote, <laughs> the reason the moment of death is so potent with opportunity is because it is then that the fundamental nature of mind, the ground losing luminosity or clear light will naturally manifest and in a vast and splendid way. If at this crucial moment, we can recognize the ground luminosity, the teachings tell us, 
we will attain liberation. This is not, however, right. possible unless you have become acquainted and really familiar with the nature of mind in your lifetime through spiritual practice. Thank and this you. Is why, and this is why, mm. rather surprisingly, it's said in our tradition that a person who is liberated at the moment of death is considered to be liberated, liberated in this lifetime and not in one of the bardo states after death. For Thank it is you. within this Thank lifetime... You that the essential recognition of the clear light has taken place and been established. This is a crucial point to understand, end quote. 1,000%, Wayne. One, yeah. one million zillion percent true. <laughs> I mean, it's, yeah. it's ridiculous. That, I mean, that's what really was a huge, huge turnoff for me with the Tibetan stuff. And, uh, you know, it, it it's disturbing. It's disturbing how... They have this set up in such a way to they they have thought of everything, right, Wayne? I mean, they, they've thought of freaking everything on how to handle this situation for all of us. And anyone who comes here, unless you are basically committing yourself to truth for years year in year out just non-stop questioning it's just demanding truth every single corner you go cor <laughs> walking by i don't know every single thing that you look at you're demanding truth 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 they have these cute little things set up for us to lose ourselves in you know hinduism buddhism gnosticism all these things are, and one of my golden rules is that is is if it has an ism, <laughs> there's deception. Right. I mean, I have not seen one ism out there that doesn't have deception. It, there's always something in there that is creepy and weird and system orientated, and I'm not going to. Uh, involve myself with that but i almost did but that you know we talked about that before but it's it's really fascinating to me how how well tuned how well defined all of this is it it, it this is a really really well thought out realm that uh, is just geared towards everyone and everyone, anyone and everyone, losing themselves and not thinking twice about it, reincarnating down the road, no big deal. Having the memory wipe, no big deal. Everything's cool. It's all right. And then, um, you know, new incarnation. You forget everything and rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. And all we're doing is just putting our faith into these things are we in really are we going to put our faith into these things that we have we do not know them we do not know them and they come at us at death causing a big stir uh, pretending to be in my opinion pretending to be family members pets really religious deities you name it roll out the red carpet Whatever the Matrix thinks it needs to keep us here, they will put it out there. And That's what Castaneda said. <laughs> it's sick. It's I mean, honestly, it, it infuriates me. The, these are the types of things that it, it shows just how methodical all this stuff is. It's pre-calculated. I mean, if we could put these... I'll be nice. These parasites... Honest on the stand, and they would fold under questioning because all they have are illusions and deception. I I I think the evidence is overwhelming, and you know I, I look forward to you playing devil's advocate later, Wayne. You know, I'm not yeah. crapping on you or anything, but um, I just I think there's just way too much there because uh, it's it's a combination of. Uh, it's a combination of just being here, existing here, going through the day to day here, looking back at your childhood, looking back at your teenage years, looking back at your early adulthood, looking at your adult years, 
in just seeing the big picture of just how methodical this entire system is uh, laid out for us to lose ourselves. It's disgusting. I think it's vile. Um, and personally for me, I, I, I won't, I won't play devil's advocate because I just, I see what it is. And, you know, I'm not crapping on you, Wayne. I, I, I appreciate the, the analytical side and the, you know, being able to put it out there and, and, and do that. That's cool. But I just think, um. Oh, I think it's smart to yeah. just reevaluate all at all times your position. I mean, I just think that's I'm, the sensible thing to do. Sure. I'm with you on um, that, Wayne. I'm with we you. We all on have that. our blind spots and biases, and I just want to make sure I, I'm not in that position. Yeah. To... Uh, respect, respect. It, it's, it's, much there's, respect. So much, there's so much at stake. But I mean, at the same time, no. I agree that, I mean, the more we entertain all this stuff and talk about it, I mean, we're giving it more and more power. Yeah. All the <laughs> yeah. time we're saying, we're yeah. crap trapped in this matrix <laughs> and they're doing this. To, every time we're, we're affirming that and, and yeah. you know, bringing it into reality if we have the power to create. That's so, the crazy um, thing about it, Wayne, right? Yeah. That that's that that's the thing that that kind of sits in the back of my head and says, OK, well, you know, hey, you know, me and Wayne Bush are talking today and, you know, we're both kind of on the same page on many levels. And, you know, are we just creating and manufacturing that's, and bringing this reality into that's our why I'm trying to take my emphasis away so much on this is we're in a we're trapped in a mate because really we're not. We can free ourselves. Yeah. At, yeah. At well, moment. let's we're not, not talk about that. But yes, you're right. Trapped. You're right. No, yeah. I'm not. No, yeah. I'm not talking about that. Yeah. I'm not yeah. talking about that because okay. I, I don't have it. I don't advocate that at all because I think we need to be here as long as we can to put ourselves in the best position yeah. in order to give us the best chance to leave. And I'm learning stuff every day. If, I mean, at least every year, every week, I'm learning more and more stuff. And so I want to be, I want to have the best chance to succeed um, when that time about. comes. Yeah. So I'm certainly not on board with that. No, I know. Notion. I, know. Yeah. I, I didn't um, mean to imply that, Wayne. I'm no, sorry. no. Yeah. I thought you did. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it would be easy to, to do that. Um, yeah. So. The Tibetan Book of the Dead says about that moment, it says, the nature of everything is open, empty, and naked like the sky, luminous emptiness, without center or circumference. The pure naked rigpa dons. So when it's talking about the clear light, it's talking about just being empty and naked and clear, not like necessarily a color or anything. Mm -hmm. um, so it says what happens then is we, we tend to react instinctively with all our past fears, habits, and conditioning, all our old reflexes and the habits of lifetimes still remain hidden in the background of our ordinary mind. Now, here's the lady I mentioned that helped translate the Tibetan Book of the Dead. I've got a section right here, and uh, it's titled Luminous uh, Emptiness. And her name's Francesca from Mantley. I hope I said that right. She helped translate Sounds the good Tibetan enough. She helped translate the Tibetan Book of the Dead and wrote a book called Luminous Emptiness, Understanding the Tibetan Book of the Dead. And in it, she writes, quote, according to the teachings of natural liberation, the instructions concerning this bardo are in three parts, illusory body, dreaming, and luminosity or clear light. The practice of illusory body trains us to see waking life as a dream and that to realize that our whole subjectivity experience world is the creation of the mind, just like a magician's illusion, insubstantial and impermanent. The realization is fundamental to all practices related to the bardos. It's a particularly necessary preparation for working with dreams because dreams arise from karmic traces deeply imprinted in the mind. I don't know so much about the karmic stuff. But, um, they, so they are very hard to influence directly. Only after our intense attachment to our ordinary concept of reality is loosened does it become possible to perceive the world of dreams too as our own creation and to control it. The practice of luminosity is simply to recognize and rest in the basic nature of mind itself in its emptiness, radiance, and clarity. Uh, God, I hope I should put that quote. Okay, she says, luminosity is often translated as clear light, which is a literal rendering of the Tibetan rather than the Sanskrit. Trungpa Rinpoche did not like that term, although he did sometimes use it in his talks, which formed the basis of his books because it's so well known. He felt it had become inextricably associated with such notions as the light at the end of the tunnel and near-death experiences, and that it gave too much of an impression of ordinary visual light, whereas what is meant is an extremely subtle concept that he thought would be conveyed better by the luminosity. 
The two terms, luminosity and clarity, are frequently not distinguished and are translated by the same word in English so that we find clear light, luminosity, or clarity for both. They are certainly very close since clarity is not just clear and transparent, but also bright and luminous, the illuminating potential of the mind. Yeah. Anyway, so you see how she definitely was not equating clear light with the white light of no. near death and tunnel because she literally told, she said it at the tunnel on the near death. So, um, yeah. That's a good one. Um, yeah, some more quotes from the Tibetan Book of the Dead, Tibetan Book of Living and Dying. Uh, you've heard of a uh, long chin, uh, Rob, but here's a better classic such oh. as Padma Sambhava's Self Liberation Through Seeing with Naked Awareness, or Long Chin Rob Chin's The Treasury, Precious Treasury of the Basic Sphere of Phenomena. But you know, read introductory texts like um, to get familiar with terminology and basic concepts. Um, there's David Chalmers, The Conscious Mind. Uh, Pama Sabhava, the author of the Tibetan Book of the Dead, wrote in Self-Liberation Through Seeing with Naked Awareness, quote, it is a single nature of mind which encompasses all of samsara and nirvana. Even though its inherent nature has existed from the very beginning, you have not recognized it. Therefore, your active dharmas and your inactive ones both should be abandoned. Now, when you are introduced to your own intrinsic awareness, the method for entering involves three considerations. Thoughts in the past are clear and empty and leave non-traces behind. Thoughts in the future are fresh and unconditioned by anything. And in the present mind, when your mind remains in its own condition without constructing anything, awareness at that moment is quite ordinary. And when you look into yourself in this way nakedly, since there's only this pure observing, there would be found a lucid clarity without anyone being there who is the observer. Only a naked awareness is present. It is certain that the nature of the mind is empty and without any foundation whatsoever. Your own mind is like the empty sky and is like the sun rising in a cloudless illuminated sky. This self-originated primordial awareness has not been created by anything. Amazing. Even though it exists within yourself and nowhere else, yet you seek for it elsewhere. Amazing. In this state, which is without meditation and without any distraction, it is a luminous clarity of the essence itself. This intrinsic awareness is free of the eight extremes, such as externalism and nihilism and the rest. Thus, we speak of the middle way where one does not fall into any of the extremes. And we speak of the intrinsic awareness as uninterrupted mm. mindful presence. Um, That's so such yeah, a so great book. Yeah, it says you should become intimately acquainted with self-awareness. So yeah. I mean, that, yeah. I mean that we want a the most. Uh, well, it, in my opinion, it's um, well, not my opinion. And my firm authority is I am going to have the most lucid death that's ever existed in the entire universe, and I will be fully aware of everything and anything and forge my own path so um yeah shed all the bullshit you know materialism and yada 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 and go yeah. about your existence and experience moving forward by your own path you know create your own reality create your own realm and and run with it yeah we're gonna definitely get into that with the solutions uh, i can't wait for that that episode is gonna be awesome I know people are, are waiting patiently for it and they're like, why are they doing talking about all this stuff? Because yeah, I mean, we wanted we're, we're, to do we're a creeping series there. Yep. of all these different topics. So oh. be, be patient, people. We're getting we'll, we'll there. Get there. Yeah. So I think another really good book is Long Chimpa's Precious Treasury, The Way of Abiding. And he talks a lot about the heart essence. And he says, from the standpoint of enlightenment, the heart essence from which everything arises, there is no duality and any attempt to quantify things would be endless. And he's yeah. talking about the single nature of phenomena, just as it is, and the awakened mind, the inherent radiance of the nature of mind, empty and non-dual. Um, abiding, he says, with no dualistic perception, in that very moment, there is abiding in the heart essence and no substance like illusions. Ineffability is shown to be the heart essence of what is ultimately meaningful. And the awakened nature of mind, which can neither be affirmed or denied, timeless awareness without dualistic perception abides. But I, I think, I mean, a lot of the books I've gotten into more recently talk about the heart essence of enlightenment. Yep. And um, that seems to be a Tibetan, uh, kind of uniquely a Tibetan thing as far as, I mean, maybe there's other... Um, yeah yeah and i think um it's it's even i think it's skirted around in the new age and and totally 
uh, misrepresented, but uh, occasionally, I think if, if someone's searching enough, they'll um, keep going and find something like what you're reading here and uh, see the, the sovereign path as, as uh, yeah. at least the answer for now. It says, although happiness and suffering manifest there within the heart essence of enlightenment, um, yeah. the heart essence of this secret of all Buddha is it's certain that original purity, the natural state of rest is enlightenment, the heart essence, Dharmakaya. So um, yeah. then I got a little bit about duality, according to Buddhism, that um, duality is an illusion, separation is an illusion. But see, all this stuff gets to be... Um, Debate. I mean, that's what the near, new near death experiences are coming back and saying that yeah. we're all connected, we're all one. And it's yeah, like, then you get into that collectivism that. stuff. Yeah. So that's yeah. why, even in Buddhism and even in Gnosticism, I have problems with certain areas of the text. I'm not saying they're not true, but I'm just, uh, for me, it hasn't resonated yet as yeah, true. Yeah, dude, uh, and Wayne, we are in the same ballpark with that stuff. It's, it's really just. Eh. Yeah, I just don't. I the way I see it again is you know I know I'm repeating myself, but it's just I don't want to uh, corner myself into anything without full lucidity and time. Time, even though it's not going to exist, time doesn't exist where we're going when we leave here. It's it's just about you know not submitting to something blindly and allowing it to control me and that's it that's the bottom line yep um well i was gonna go i guess the last segment would be the soul trap matrix theory great and, um, great that, um, is it a good breaking point or yeah i think that is at? probably good yeah i think that's a good breaking point yeah so and i'll how... bring up i was trying to like you're saying get into the mind of somebody else and i was thinking okay what about i've read some stuff on forums about the problems with this theory and stuff. So I'm going to present some of the stuff I've okay. read and heard. And then I was also trying to get into their mind and why would they have problems with, I mean, cause we can't prove yeah. anything any more than they well, can. Well, I mean, so. I guess if we're looking at it from, you know, a super materialistic level, sure. But, right. Yeah. I mean, but, okay. Let's talk about that. When okay. we, let's talk about that when we get back. Yeah. yeah just, uh, I'm looking forward to it. Wayne. Okay. Yeah. Just yet. Yeah, mute your mic. And, uh, Got thank it. you, Wayne. I appreciate you being here. Thank you. I appreciate you. I appreciate everyone in the audience, and we'll see you soon. Thank you.
appreciate it, Betty. So, um, I just wanted to check in, see how you're doing. All right. Yeah, we're going into, uh, I think, our, yeah, we're five hours and ten minutes in, so. All right, so, um, I got a, sorry? <laughs> Probably the longest stream that I've ever done. <laughs> we keep building and building. <laughs> Yeah, uh, there's a lot of people that have been sticking around, so it's good. Yeah, that that's step. Yeah, that's why I put the chapters in there too, so people can kind of break it down a little at a time. Okay, so um, let's head into it. I have, I do have questions, so we will, uh, I guess, finish up with whatever you're going to do, and then we'll take it from there. All right, five, four. Three, two, and one. All right, everybody, we are back. Thank you for hanging in there for the extended break time. Hope you're doing well out there. All right, Wayne, so uh, where are we headed next, buddy? Well, I'm going to try to critique our own uh, soul trap, oh, you know, so called right. soul trap, matrix theory. Um, I guess what's good for the goose is good for the, I don't know, whatever that saying goes. But Good um, for the goose is good for the gander. Yeah, I mean, I had somebody write and was questioning um, some of the aspects of the theory. So, and they were accusing me, like, if I don't answer, basically, then um, how do you, how, how can you live with yourself and your conscience? And don't you have a conscience? And, you know, you're just as, you know, if you don't subscribe to this, then you must be, you know, that kind of thing. So I thought, oh, all right, uh, fine. God well, bless you, Wayne. I wouldn't deal with that bullshit, but sure. No, I, yeah, I, yeah. I respect the, I, dude, I respect it. I, I, I think any theory that's worth its salt needs to be able to withstand any criticism. And yeah, I've certainly been yeah. criticizing a lot of other theories. So, um, no, you're, no, you're, you know what? You're right. I concede. Yeah. I concede. You're right. You're right. <laughs> And maybe we learn something in the process, yeah. but, you know, but so, you know, basically the light is a trick, a trap. Don't go to the light or you'll be processed by the demiurge archon counselors. It will mind wipe you and eventually reinsert you in the oh. matrix to feed off your energy. Is that a, is that a fair assessment of, of sure of your, your mic is kind of, uh, maybe tilt it up. Yeah. Upwards. Yeah. How about okay. this? Is this better? Um, is that better? No. Yeah. We'll just turn, take it off and put it back on. Yeah. Sorry. Tell so you what. The, I think it, you're um, good. I think you're good. It was on the table before, and it, you heard me just fine. Yeah, it so, was um, crazy how it worked like that. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you what, the, if I, I think you're good. If I put it here, you're gonna be able to hear it. Just... Yeah, yeah. I think sometimes it's the the clothing. I think you know it's. Uh, yeah, that's us. Awesome. So, so I put it on the table. As long as you can hear me, that's yeah. good. It's probably yeah, you're not gonna fine. Get up you're fine. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I first of all, I just want to say that I think all these elements I'm going to mention can be attributed to all the religions and belief systems, and not just unique to this theory. So, um, and I don't subscribe to this these points that i'm being devil's advocate here obviously <laughs> i don't agree with them because i wouldn't be doing what i'm doing if it, yeah. i did so um that being said some of the criticisms i've run across or could imagine people saying is that the it's a result of fear of the unknown like it's out it's fear we're fear mongering that oh, we don't that understand what's going on in sphere yeah. you know people were people who are negative or cynical and maybe paranoid. I mean, this can be construed as being negative, but then look at the world around us. We're, how are we negative when we're trying to fix the problem and uh, alert others to what's, you know, negative or what's wrong out there anyway? Um, and they might say we're paranoid, you know, but sometimes they really are out to get you, you know, there are <laughs> things in this world that aren't so great. 
Um, yep. They might say it's um, human ignorance or a lack of a complete understanding of a vast cosmos or reality. And I'll, I'll concede that. I mean, I'm not, I mean, I'm human. I'm not, I might, it might be something I'm not getting, but then that can be said of their belief system and any other religion yeah. um, that people who need to be different and think different than others to tell themselves they are superior to others. I mean, I know myself, I don't feel that way at all. I mean, I, I'm pretty, um, I don't know what the word is. I have a low self esteem sometimes. <laughs> so, or that there, there are people with big egos or who breed. And maybe it's it's just a losers or victim mentality. Like, my life sucks. So, it must be some evil force that's causing it and not myself. That's what I get. I get tons of comments. Yeah. Well, not tons, but I get enough, you know, enough. But there's tons, tons. a lot of people struggling in life. I mean, it's, I mean, it's not easy. So, I'll just say that. I'm going to bump them up here. Others will say people who propagate the theory are just into it to make money, get attention, or just playing crazy or deluded, or are being tricked by the same malevolent forces they claim are tricking them. <laughs> it's like an inversion of it. So, or maybe they have a messiah complex and need to save people who um, are being in control like a guru or something. I mean, I, I might have had a messiah complex when I was younger. I don't know. Maybe there's a little bit of truth to that. I'm going to try to avoid doing that when I, and I don't want to come back to save the planet anymore. I don't perhaps, feel that vibe at all with you. Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, at perhaps, all. The, <laughs> perhaps the biggest problem we have with formulating the theory is it's not based upon a complete set of evidence. Mm -hmm. There's four or 5,000 or so near death testimonies. And we usually cite only a small subset of cases. So some would say we are taking, well, I've heard this one, taking things out of context and we're cherry picking only the data points that support our theory. I mean, after all, those that mention aliens, soul contracts, et cetera, are often less than 1% of the cases. And virtually none of them say the light or beings there uh, are malevolent or deceptive. So, you know, when we're dealing with all these near-death experiencers who firsthand are experiencing it and saying, the light is wonderful, it's so great, and you know, we've never experienced it. So, you know, we're... Anyway, that's another criticism. Yeah, but I mean, I think if they're zoning in on that one, that whatever that 1%, 2%, yeah. that that's that's just a drop in the bucket compared to all of the other NDEs um, where you're just, you know, instead of just buying what they're saying point blank as definitive truth, you're listening and, and hearing interactions with some other entity that's basically telling them what to do. So, yeah. you know, I mean, that's, that's like the majority, if not all of them. And there's a lot of contradictions within their own testimonies yes. um, between yep. them. So, oh, I mean, loads. next next week or next not next week, but the next episode when we do the experiences, especially the the near death ones, we're going to give a lot of evidence that's probably going to blow all this stuff to smithereens. But I mean, these are I look forward to it. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> do, 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 um so we're left with a big conspiracy theory not based on firsthand experience. We have to extrapolate or make assumptions. Well, yeah, we have to do based on evidence, though. And not all the cases are alike. All are unique subjective experiences interpreted through the lens of their experiences and biases. And that's a, another major, huge major problem with their, with their testimony is they've got biases, and we all do. We all have. And I guess that can apply to us. We might have biases confirmation bias all kinds of stuff and it's the whole not... creator being aspect of things which is really freaky you know like uh intention creator being abilities and um you know maybe being uh directed towards a certain set of information um but I guess I don't want to get it too into too deep into it, but I, I had uh, a crazy experience before. Like I really, really was, you know, being vocal about any of this. And it was one of the most profound experiences I ever had in my life. It was, I, I mean, I think I told you this, but I was reading a, a particular NDE. I don't remember which one it was, but it was the most profound I mean, I, you know, Soul Trap was in my head. I'm listening, I'm con reading NDE after NDE after NDE, listening to NDE after NDE after NDE. And um, I remember exactly where I was in the room. I remember exactly where, you know, I was, I was 
sitting uh, on top of my bed with my laptop, reading a specific NDE, and uh, I had the most overwhelming uh, energy, inner knowing, uh, even like a, we could say like a euphoric type rush of of confidence and no just stone cold knowing and i wish i could take that moment and transfer it but then again like we could also say oh well you know uh uh you know uh, that could all be our cons or whatever whatever you know but the point is is that was the the turning point for me and that was after a lot of research because i was fighting this thing wayne i did not want yeah. this crap to be true because I, I personally feel it's it's absolutely true. I don't I don't so I'm not wa- I'm not wavering from it at all. Just because I, I just so that moment was so powerful, and that happened in 2016, I think. That it it just felt like that was like my true spirit essence saying, "Hey, asshole." Wake up, you know, you're, you're right, you know, this is it, you know, th- you're receiving this overwhelming uh, communication, this euphoria, this confirmation of all confirmations for a reason to wake you up. Like, I felt like it was my true self, but at the same time, I was like, oh, well, maybe it's something else outside, too. But the point is, is it felt like it was coming from me, but from the outside. So I just... I just Wanted to throw that in there. No, I'm glad you did. Thank yeah. you so much. Yeah. Um, so it's not a one size fits all thing. Some may be reluctant to share scary NDEs of hell or aliens. Um, that's actually not criticism so much, <laughs> but not all <laughs> went to the light or even remember any NDE. So I mean, there's. I mean, we're saying that you know the light, and but most people that have near death experience. I mean, I think only like 14 percent even communicated with the light. But we never hear from those who never come back as in the ease and actually died physically. So we don't know. I mean, some people may have gone on and got, you know, the Archon said, right this way, you were fantastic. I, mean, I seriously <laughs> doubt that. I seriously <laughs> doubt that. But hey, we never do hear from those who come back and actually died. Um, maybe some are allowed to stay and aren't forced to come back. Yeah, right. Maybe. Who knows? We just don't know for sure. The fact that many claim to be forced to come back against their wills shows there may very well be a violation of free will at play. So we are trying to piece together many separate pieces from many different accounts to build an overall theory, but some items might be out of context. It's true. I cannot prove the theory is true. Almost all the points I listed above can be said for all the religions and belief systems or philosophies. But for me, I see far more red flags that can't be so readily or easily dismissed. And my intuition tells me what is correct. Um, and I've made a bunch an issue, a bunch, a list of issues and dilemmas that um, we decisions we kind of have to like figure out. But um Sure. So some might say we're fear mongers, negative, paranoid, just losers, blah, blah, blah. But I feel the opposite. That we are the ones who are taking personal responsibility and not relying on saviors and guides, Thank counselors you. and masters to help us. Right? Empowering, um, right, Wayne? That, that yeah, It's empowering yeah. ourselves, not empowering something outside of ourselves that we have no clue what the heck it means, what it's doing, what its intentions are. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. So there's this whole issue of, you know, go to the white light that's, you know, so loving and, mm-hmm. you know, is the white light not God? How can we be against something that's almost universally said by all to be so loving and understanding? So that's like an issue. I mean, people really have to come to terms with like everybody's saying the light's God and it's all loving and it's just wonderful. Um, you got to make that decision. Are you going to go to that light or you're not going to go to the light? I'm yeah. not going to the light. Yeah. I mean, no matter what. I mean, but that's something it's an issue that people have to confront right i mean i mean just the fact that they're assuming it's god when it can portray itself as almost anything yeah i don't know if there's a remote viewer remote viewer i think it was lynn buchanan i might be wrong on the person but he had two ndes and the first one he saw god as like a i don't remember but it had like an ounce like a limit to it a border and then he thought, and he's like, well, how can God have a border? Yeah. And so Ooh. he decided that light is not God. Yeah. So that's just one. Wow, that's, that's said a that. big one. That's a big one. Yeah. Well, what about like even, uh, Wayne, what about the ones where, uh, you know, 
goddess towering over them, you know, a hundred feet, 200 yeah. feet, 300 feet, just towering over them. I think there's That's usually an an angels, but yeah, there's definitely an intimidation. An, and a lot of times, yeah. a lot of times God is literally shown sitting on a throne. Yeah, that's not, <laughs> yeah. Like it's a position of power <laughs> that we've come to accept yeah. in this yep. realm yep. as King sitting on thrones. Yep. And that, that programming. What is God, it's just like Kirk in, the, in that Star Trek movie. What does God need to do to sit on a throne? Is he that <laughs> egotistic? I don't know. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the programming transfers over from here to there. I mean, they they got a real good scam going on. I I, I get. I mean, seriously, I hate to give them credit, but they they got a really good operation going on. That is. Um, so the another issue is the whole interconnectedness thing. We're all one, and there's oh. no division, and we should remain as independent, sovereign individuals. I mean, it comes back with a lot of people saying that, but I mean, I don't, I don't think every single one. I think one guy that one guy I wanted to I'll save for next week, but he was talking about everything's like fragmented down here. Uh, but I guess over there they're saying it's all connected. So well, yeah, yeah no, I, I, I've. Um, so it's kind I've, of hard to be sovereign and go your own way when they're saying you're part of everything and you can't even do that kind of thing. You know. Great point, Wayne. Great point. Yeah, I'm with you on that totally. Um, and then you have. Um, but being in the void, you're you're independent of them at least. I mean, so there's at least something that's different you're not well okay here here's the thing i'll say i mean but i think as long as it's your own personal created void yes sure. because they the, there's no doubt in my mind I, i've looked at this it to the point where like the matrix has a void set up to make you think it's a sovereign experience or sure. an independent experience. And um, I mean, that that seems clear as day and end ease. Otherwise, why are they being communicated with? Why are they uh, being harassed and messed with yeah. or having the most blissful experience ever? I mean, it, it, and we can get into a whole conversation, sub discussion on that, about how it relates to the person's belief system and yada, 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 yeah. yada. The point is, is if they're getting all this outside interference, who the hell are those beings? Who are they? Yeah. I, I mean, that, 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 in my opinion, is not a sovereign void created of that person because they're being harassed. I mean, I mean, maybe yeah, it thing, is and they're just I've allowing it. I don't know. One thing I probably should have done with all those 200 void experiences was go down further and then detail how they came back, why they came back. Did somebody mm -hmm. tell them, hey, come back? Or did, was it just their physical body? Mm. The, the, the doctor resuscitated and back they came. Well, then you're not truly out of the system if that happens, no. right? I mean, I don't know. No. So, no. I don't think yeah, any of the people, yeah. I don't think any of the people having NDEs who are interacting with something are out of the matrix. I mean, I think there's very, very few examples. I think, um, uh, yeah, I mean, I just think they're far and few between. I mean, when you get to someone who isn't communicating with anything, but more or less in a void like state that could go through certain, um, um, that's the word I'm looking for. Like, uh, tunnel teleports, I guess, or some sort of teleporter. Um, it's just very unique colors. It's just they're in a pure existence state, pure existing state, and um, just going along. But they're so far and few between. It's like we don't have a big enough sample to to make a a judgment call on that and even then i mean making a judgment call on much of the stuff is difficult well, that's kind but... of one of my one of my points is that we've got only 4 to 5000 nd yeah. cases and we're yeah. taking pieces from it and we don't have an entire complete yeah. So especially when some of the ones that actually died never come back so we got a huge incomplete picture but for sure for but sure. based on the evidence that's there, there's too many red flags. And we'll get into that in the experiences yeah, yeah, episode. Yeah, I don't want to um, hold this up too long. We can talk yeah, about so, this one forever. <laughs> um, sometimes I think uh, we might be a little hypocritical of our cons for feeding off our energy when we turn around and kill animals and maybe even sentient plants. Um, 
when we, you know, we eat meat, essentially what the archons are doing as well, feeding off sustenance to stay alive. And yeah. so I had this whole article on the non-killing diet, blah, blah, blah. But um, yeah, that's another whole trail to go down. But um, so are people, you people, a vegetarian, vegan? I tried to subscribe to a non-killing diet. So yeah, I mean, um, I went off of that because I was actually starting to get some problems with my knees and I okay. thought maybe I'm not getting enough protein. And I mean, I was trying to do supplements. Sure. So it came down to my life or theirs kind of thing. And I guess maybe I'm hypocritical for, for going back, wow. but, but there's ways, um, I get it. I get well, it. if you go to eating plants, there's people I think could be hypocritical too, because plants, I mean, I'll, they I have cry. a bunch, well, no, I have a bunch of near death experiencers who said these, these plants are sentient and there's yeah. actually studies with Cleve Baxter where they hooked up stuff to the plants and that they're aware of a lot more than we maybe think they are. Maybe oh, they don't have nervous systems and stuff, too. but, yeah. but the problem becomes when you, um, eat plants, I mean, okay, like they, when the farmer goes through and harvests these crops that are killing a bunch of bugs and you may be killing way more bugs than the plants, but then the animals are feeding off the plant. It's, it gets to be very, yeah, no, and if the whole, if the whole thing's a simulation or illusion anyway, <laughs> and actually you're putting them out of their misery. I mean, uh, what are they, uh, I don't know. It gets yeah, to be very, but if they know to escape, I mean, yeah, I mean, uh, right, it's, right, it's you know. such a, it, yeah, it's such a, it's such a, Anyway, it messes it's, with it's, the mind. It really does. And, and, and I mean, I th I think plants are many, if not all, are sentient. I mean, yeah. I mean, it sounds weird, but I've had I've had very different experiences with plants where you can possibly be communicating with them. You know, it wasn't well, look anything. At the, look at the ayahuasca and all that stuff. Yeah, right? oh, mm -hmm. great point. Great point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a plant. Great point. <laughs> Mushrooms. Yeah. I mean, mushrooms yeah. mm -hmm. send you on a <laughs> on a journey. Yeah, um, yeah. It's so a, you know your dog eat dog eat dog uh, world system, as you say. Yeah. So another point is consent. Um, someone's saying that the movement's trying to brainwash people that they're giving their consent away. But how can an individual give consent if the individual is under duress? If an yep. individual is under duress, yep. does that remove the ability to give consent? I mean, look at. In our own court systems, there's, the duress is a key point. Like it, it doesn't hold up water if it was done under duress, right? And I think what's happening to us is definitely under duress. Either way, by can I just say, jump in yeah, yeah, yeah. really please, quick please. on this one? I, I think sure. I think you bring up a good point about being under duress too, because when, it, at least overwhelmingly in my opinion, from what I see, um, you know it's to rest not just with um ndes or i mean and these are obviously a big one but um to rest traumatic experiences just in general seem to bring on outside entities who are more than willing to come in interact with us doesn't matter what the situation is you Stress can, weakens the body. Yeah, and it's nervous like if, system. Yes, and something comes in and starts to interact with people. It, it, I mean, especially like with uh, grief, like funerals or wakes, or you know, your parents passing, your your grandparents passing, your brother, your sister, someone really close to you, close best friend. Uh, all those things are um you know and there's no physical injury there at least most of the time and uh something from the outside comes in and decides to interfere but the most egregious Wayne, i know we talked about this before but i'm going to bring it up again because it's really important is um those on their deathbed yeah or leading up to their death you know, who have had a miserable childhood, let's say for 18 years, they move out when they're 18 and, you know, live a whole life till they're seven, 70, 80, don't deal with their parents or whoever brought them up for from 18 to 70. And then all of a sudden, you know, the abuser come, the abuser parent comes down and says, oh, well, you know, I need to be forgiven, blah, 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 you know, and that's, that's a traumatic, that's like a traumatic experience, but it's also a vulnerable position of pain and suffering and, and what does the matrix do? Uh, okay, let's, uh, set them down, set them down. Okay, we got this person down here. We got to, you know, suck them back in, in their time of need. So it, 
It's mm-hmm. just so messed up. Yeah. I well, mean, either okay, way, by sorry. whether yeah. whether by consent or not, coming back is not good for anyone who loves no. freedom. <laughs> no. So the I, I will get to it next week, man. Um, yeah. But the from that what I said, we don't die. That show I was listening yeah. to this one. And she's a median, and she literally said they trick us to get us to uh, well, they trick us into coming back into our bodies. And she justifies. She said, "Oh, well, they got to do it to <laughs> to get us to exercise and grow spiritually." She goes, "It's like going to the gym, you know. That you don't want to go to the oh, gym, yeah, but they yeah. they trick you so that you'll go and and you'll 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 work out and you'll grow." And you know, to me, if that's the case, it violates free will basically, and it's akin to rape or unlawful arrest. Yeah, or you know what? But... <laughs> you know what I got, Wayne? I got I got Archon weights. Um yeah, so another one, it's uh difficult to know what parts of the programming are true and what are not true. And at least some into years are sent back against their free will, but some are definitely signing contracts or agreeing to contracts to come here. But what happens to the ones who didn't want to sign a contract? Are they sent back against their will anyway? I mean, it's hard to say. It's, we don't like we say the the stuff is incomplete. We, we can only make assumptions, and we don't know how much they were manipulated or how weak they are. All that stuff. Uh, yeah, I, well, that that to me is the is the the unknown factor, and I'm sorry to keep slowing you down here with this. Oh, but, um, it's important. Um, it is very. It's disturbing when you look at NDEs who are saying, you know, and this has been brought up a number of times in my in my comment section, and I try to explain my my opinion, a strong opinion on it, because I see consent being yielded in all different things. But at the same time, when when you hear someone who has an NDE say, oh, well, you know, I, I was forced back. I was, I mean... People are naturally going to say, well, hey, you know, FC, Wayne, uh, yeah, you know, we're supposed to be able to consent to this, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. So why are they saying force? Literally, they use the word force. I've you know heard that. that a couple times in this recent times, yeah. which I'm not going to get into specifically, but I heard somebody said, well, they forced me to do this. And it's like, well, no, not technically. They didn't. They coerced you. They exactly. under duress you. Yeah. Thank so, you, Wayne. Yeah. Anyway. I mean, if you want to keep going, feel free, but <laughs> yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm with you. Yeah. So the other thing we, is this notion that Earth is a school, you know, so or in a prison planet where we're here to learn, evolve, to, you know, you got to love and learn to evolve and all this. And you, then you need to purify and you're created as these blank souls, I guess. Um, but to, and do these guides, counselors, so called ascended masters like Jesus that are really have our best interest at heart? I mean, I hear from so many near death experiencers about this earth as a school theory. Oh, and, um, it's just, it's and yeah. the new age. Um, yeah, so that's another thing people got to come to grips with. Are, are we really? in need of evolving spiritually yeah. i mean it seems like there's evolution on the planet so places or are we these sovereign beings that have free dominion to do yeah. what we want um it's, it's an issue i mean it's i'm just a major that. issue <laughs> yeah it is and yeah i mean looking up to something outside of ourselves in any fashion just while we're here outside of here doesn't anything in every everyone and everything it's a problem it's a big big problem yeah. And this one, I guess, ties into the other one, free will or no free will, or is there a mix? Obviously here, we don't have complete free will because, you know, we got gravity. We can't just like leave our body and fly around at, at will, like maybe in your astral projection at night, but you know how hard that is. I mean, it's yep. just not easy to Good do. Luck remember it. Here's we... a big one yep. to merge yep. or not to merge. Oh God. Don't even get I me mean, going on the this monad. One. We're like the, the hermeticism. They're saying that we're all, um, part of God, that we're his thoughts. And I've heard that from near-death experiencers too, that we're all just molecules in the body of God and all this stuff. And if that's the case, do we have any free will? He's just going to fucking do what he wants to do. I'm sorry. Can I use that word? I of shouldn't course. Have no, you can use but, um, it more if you I've like. I've heard lots of NDE. I pick it up from these people that review movies and stuff, and they say all kinds of stuff. So. Well, you're you're welcome to swear off the chain here, <laughs> no, Wayne. We I don't, encourage swearing. I don't swearing. usually do that. But... <laughs> it's all right. But um, maybe I should isolate the clip. 
<laughs> so yeah but th that's the maybe the one of the biggest thing everybody's saying return to source right and um new age is all about that and i'll be honest i don't know i mean i kind of make sense that there's a monad and that we're emanated from it that's what i think a lot of even the not i think gnosticism is saying that i'm not sure but i i'm, I'm going to stay a sovereign spirit i mean yeah i mean I you could even look at it wayne is like uh you know how they, they put these uh they have these false dichotomies going on like everywhere, not just here, but in the astral. And even though we have limited information on the astral, we see them up front and center. So they could have a fake monad that we think is the original one. But meanwhile, the real monad is who knows where out in the universe. And I just, it's I just, just a layer pretending to play it. I just remember her name, Nancy Dannison, and okay. she, in her near-death experience, she merged with the light, which many people call God, and she, I mean, she remembered being, she says she remembered being source and creating and all this stuff, but she was like one with this being, and she was, at, in one of her lectures, she was saying that she got the feeling that this was not the end-all, be-all God, and that there were other sources above it, Damn. and it was somewhat confused. I mean, yeah, it's pretty. So she pretty even admits it. Yeah, she seems. I like. I get a lot of good stuff out of her. Yeah. But um, I'm trying to look up uh, Nancy. Okay, yeah, you it's it's with an I, Nancy with an I, Danison. An okay, um, but yeah, some interesting stuff. I mean, the name sounds familiar. Oh, her. Okay. Yeah, yep, I'm familiar anyway, with so, her. Yeah. Uh, this whole thing about the Tibetan Buddhism, the clear light and, you know, you, you know, the clear light of the void and all that stuff. And like you brought up, I mean, the void, I mean, that's a risky proposition, too. I don't think I want to just stay in a, in a void, any yeah. kind of void. I want to I want to control my creation and make it like all positive or yeah. a better ratio, like 95.5, 95 percent compared to five. Maybe sure. you yeah, have to have a little duality, maybe to rec appreciate the, the, the positive. I mean, I don't know. Sure. But, but like uh, I said at the Alice in Wonderland, why can't there be an all positive universe? What's wrong with having an all positive universe where there's yeah. nothing negative? Yeah. All positive all the time. That's my new slogan. Right? That's right, bro. <laughs> yeah. Right, right on. Yeah. I love it. I love it. It's a new I'm ESPN channel or something. But, yeah, um, I mean, I think as long as we we forge forward with uh, a reality of our own that is based in um, that it can't be, uh, you know, infiltrated by negativity and really really have that as a a stepping stone and uh driving force to protect the whole thing pure pure creator being intention and you know and slowly as we start to readjust and and be, be you know and feel safe and in in control then we can kind of bring other beings into it but i think it's it's good to kind of run solo in the beginning and give yourself give ourselves some time to uh find our find our true spirit essence once again i mean who knows how long we've been cut off from our true self mm -hmm. i mean that's a whole another discussion of itself it, that we can't yeah, even is. really get into because we don't know yeah and the other thing with buddhism is the um they're saying that everything is like horizons of the spontaneous horizons of your awareness and that all this stuff is fabrication and external projections of this awareness. So if that's the case, we're just hallucinating all this shit and we need to stop dreaming. But is that the case? We yeah, don't know. But we I mean, wake up every day. Yeah. And then the yeah. Gnostics, Gnostics are talking about a pure light, you know, the eternal light realms and it's the light of lights. And it's almost like everything down here is just negative and you got to go to this pure light realm. And yeah. It's well, like, is that true or not? No, I, I, Wayne, the way I see it is I am not I'm going suspicious to, of all light. You yeah, know? I am not going to any damn light unless it's my own, like the way no I light. see it is this, uh, I'm dying. I, I, I meet the second I realize I'm dying. I create this portal. Uh, first off, I have a, a protection shield around me. Then I create this portal around me and that portal leads to my own impenetrable reality where i can be at peace never ever infiltrated and then i'll see what the hell happens from there and there are near-death experiences that support what you just said there's one guy who saw the light a uh, tunnel in the light and he said no i want my own and he manifested his own tunnel and his own light 
And then Nancy Dennison, she was going through the tunnel and she saw that it looked like earth. And she said, this is fake. This is not real. This is, and she um, went back to her chair in the dentist or something like that. And she, but she like created, I think her own, her own tunnel. And we have, I mean, that granted, those are just two out of four or 5,000, yeah. but why not? Well, I mean, we, we, we see it though in, um, DMT and ayahuasca though, too. I mean, where people, um, they'll be having a negative experience and they, they'll literally say that they, they are, um, they intend to change and get out of this experience. And then it's like, boom, instantly they're thrusted into some other realm. Now, I will say that most of the time it's not clearly not their own reality that it, it, it it's someone else's or multiple entities realities that they ent entered into. But, you know, the point yeah. is, is they desired it. They intended for it to happen. They use their creator being abilities to make sure it occurred. And then it boom instantly it happens so it shows that if you have the intention and you use your creator abilities within you can do quite a, a lot we, we can do quite a lot yeah i agree but and just this, the last thing on the plate is um there's a, a listener can you still hear me i think i knocked the i off. dropped the mic i believe it's yeah. maybe on the ground i don't know yeah okay here it is I'll just put go. it here. Maybe that'll work. Yeah, sounds good. It's going to slide off. I'll just put it on my leg. Is that, can you hear me okay? Yeah, just right? keep talking. If it runs low, I'll let you know. Okay. So the last thing here is I got an email from somebody who had some issues with um, the soul trap theory. Mm -hmm. And um, I, you know, I said, well, I'll, I'll read this text. And, and I said, well, change it a little bit. And um, so then he creates a super long email. You know, it's going to take like seven, eight minutes or whatever, but um, sure. I can read it. And yeah, go for it. It's got some decent points in there, yeah, but sure. it's one person's critique. He said, he calls it on the danger of the soul trap research becoming an ideology or religion itself. A brief definition of what any religion, ideology, cult, any metaphysical belief system embedded in a social context and operating with dogma does. One, it recognizes a need a person has as valid, which is not recognized elsewhere, and molds that recognition with a set of answers, the need for metaphysical meaning and social belonging usually. Two, on the social level, it lays out implicitly or explicitly a spectrum of expectations on how to engage with those given answers in the range of criticism which is accepted. Three, it establishes some core dogmas which can only be challenged for the price of loosing the belong to the group. This can range from just not being listened to, to being ridiculed, to being excluded from the group, to even persecution. Four, these core dogmas have to have some inconsistencies so huge and obvious, um, what in the political field is called the big lie, um, that none of the followers dare to question them. For the religions, that would be that God has the triad of qualities, which are that he's all loving, omniscient, and omnipotent, which is incompatible with God being the creator of this, our world. For new age, life as a school, the dismissal of suffering is only contrast necessary for spiritual growth and so on. This big lie, dogmas have the effect to stifle independent thought because they don't make sense and can't be built upon with own critical thoughts, hence makes the followers intellectually dependent of a group leader or priestly caste. And since the core problems are never addressed, nothing gains traction. People reaffirm the same ideas over and over without actually getting anywhere. Feels familiar for the soul trap research situation already. This is why Sigmund Freud, not endorsing his work, said something to the extent that faith in a religion would prerequisite an enormous intellectual intimidation. Five, all religions in one way or another recognize the discomfort humans have with this realm and its blatant injustice, and then mold that discomfort into justification of this realm, pacifying the resistance against this realm. Uh, and by this practical definition of how any religion, ideology, or cult functions, there sadly seems to be this tendency that exactly is happening with the matrix soul trap question. And the point on which this can probably be illustrated the best is the idea of the dogma of consent. 
So what happens when we first encounter the soul trap question? We are validated. For the first time, we are not gaslighted anymore by the absurdities of materialism, um, that this realm is a big accident with no intelligence behind it, religion, that this realm is just, and new age with all the life school and suffering as expansion nonsense. It's affirmed for the first time that the NDEs don't make sense as coming from a loving place, that amnesia doesn't make sense, that it's a cruel and ethically wrong as the idea of karma, all this is validated, and most of us probably felt a big sense of relief. Finally, having found an explanation for this realm which matches the actual reality in which we live. We are in a state of trauma because this, this insight is freeing as it is, is traumatic. And at the same time, we feel relief of having found the truth. Therefore, we are in a state of emotional and intellectual openness and a state of high suggestibility. At this point, most major voices in the field have as much as most of the people interested in the question will present to us the core belief of the movement, that we have free will and that we have consented to this. And this short text claims that this is the big lie which turns all truth of the head, the contrafactual poisonous belief where the minds of people are broken and where the soul trap question by the means of the mechanics of how cults work described above turns into a cult, an ideology, a form of religion, and where the same soul-crushing pattern specifying notion is offered, which all religions offer, you brought this upon yourself. Karma and the caste system, it was you, your actions and former life. Original sin of Christianity, it was you, or the collective you, the sinful state of humanity. In New Age, it was you, your law of attraction attracted that everything that happens to you is a vibrational match, and for learning, it's nobody else's fault. It is you interacting with you by means of an energetic law. The soul trap consensus. It is your life plan. It was your free will, your consent. Reintroducing all the lies formerly refused in other belief systems yet again. Why a life plan if the idea of life as a school is so rightfully so rejected? Why calling something consent? The amnesia, the being trapped in a body which can be tortured, which is a crime against spirit beings. As another researcher on the soul trap topic, Dan from Overwatch Project has pointed out, if you want to go for truth without getting tricked by your cognitive biases, you have to take care that your, that your conclusions fit the totality of the information, that you don't exclude data just because it doesn't suit preconceived notions. But sadly, exactly, this is uh, disregard most of the time when people take on questions regarding the soul trap matrix. This is probably the central point where all the conclusions drawn so far from the NDE testimonies and other sources like pre-birth memories buckle sideways and even turn into concepts formally refused and the thing as a whole into a sort of twisted religion. Original sin becomes our initial consent before death, which is derived from scripture. Um, he says, it's never discussed that if we assume that deception happens normally after every single death, the guides, the light trap, if we think the deception is that sim systematical, that this whole realm is one big deception, that is then equally conceivable that every memory from all pre-birth memories, all NDDs, and all predictive programming that supports it is equally misleading, maybe implanted memory, maybe in cases of the NDEs that the body of the deceased persons are possessed by spirits which want to give misleading hints about the afterlife. These are serious possibilities, but we turn the assumptions derived from the testimonies into a mythology treated as quasi-facts instead of asking and maybe finding, first finding the correct questions, but this is only the more technical aspect of it. What's well, much worse because it's not probably wrong, but definitely wrong, is the ethical aspect, the Orwellian inversion of the meaning of words. When uh, the famous quote from Orwell Books 1984 was, war is peace, freedom is slavery, ignorance is strength. Aren't we doing exactly this for the matrix questions by inverting the meaning of words, by claiming our slavery to be here is consensual or mind white based on free will, um, as Dan from Overwatch Project pointed out on the aspect of amnesia alone, that's impossible. When I have amnesia, I can't consent to that backwards in time. I can't be of sane, informed mind, consent to torture. There shouldn't be a more obvious thing in the world. And quite a few people feel that, but this is the religious aspect. And the atmosphere is developed around the soul trap question where critical thoughts only by lip service and courage. But when people actually point out this inconsistency, they actually want to have meaningful discussions. They either met with indifference or outright rejection. To quote somebody from Forever Conscious Server, the whole notion of consent is like saying a child consented to rape because he got tricked into by the perverted uncle. To quote um, somebody, is, I know exactly yeah. who this is. So okay. You can keep going, but I know he's saying to quote somebody, it's him. So, but probably. keep going. No, I know, I know it's him. I know it's yep, him. Yeah, probably. I, there's no doubt in my mind it's him. So he's basically saying being tricked into atrocities, not consent. Saying on the one hand that this realm was a crime by following it up with 
the ideological statement that we consent is like saying, of course, rape. So anyway, his, that's his main thing, I think, is the consent issue. Oh, yeah. that, and yeah. that we're being Orwellian by saying consent is um, what we're doing, right? And and first of all, we're not saying that everybody is giving consent. I mean, I um, like I was talking about it's being under duress or being manipulated into it. And I don't know if every single person is giving consent or not. I mean, like I said, there's some NDEs where people are sent back against their will, but we can't extrapolate that to pre-birth. I mean, we may okay. have come down here. All right. All right. Anyway, I, so that's, I, I yeah, think we that's, should just pause for a minute because yeah, yeah. Um, with NDEs, the problem is, is we don't have a full psychological makeup of each individual and what their belief systems were prior to their experience and how it may have molded them. And that's a big, big problem. Okay. I mean, we've got a lot of data, but at the same time, we are, we're kind of in the dust about some things because, uh, I mean, I've seen NDEs where Someone will say they were an atheist, okay? But they grew up, you know, a Jesus lover, a, you know, a Christian or what, whatever, okay? And, you know, they, they turned atheist at some point in their life, have an NDE, and then boom. They are given... The, you know, the Jesus experience or the God experience or blah, blah, blah. OK, so once in a while we have these nuggets where we have an idea of where their belief system was beforehand. And if we're lucky, we have an idea of where their belief system was as a child, especially if they became something like an atheist. And then um, it's almost like you can see in their testimony that there's a subconscious connection to Jesus, even though they might not want to admit it, it's, it's, it's in the back of their head. Okay. Oh, okay. I'm going to be judged. I may be, I may be judged. I don't want to acknowledge that or, or, or maybe I'm a sinner or, or I'm going through karma and this is what I deserve. And they're casting it on themselves i mean the problem is is we don't have that kind of in-depth information okay sometimes we do but most of the time we don't but the 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 moments we can see a pre-existing belief system whether it was from you know age uh you know three to ten and then I said, oh, okay, you know, I, I'm not relating with this anymore, so I turn atheist, but something in the back of their head is sitting there and saying, okay, well, you know, God is going to judge me, Jesus is going to judge me, whatever, okay? Karma, you know, Buddha's going to come flying in on a magic carpet and judge me. It, it doesn't matter because if we can see that they had that belief system at one point, or grew up surrounded by that belief system and go through a period of their lives where they're quote unquote atheist or whatever denomination. And then all of a sudden they have an NDE that kind of roots into a, um, you know, Jesus, God, whoever that's that reverts back to their childhood or earlier years or some sort of preconceived belief system that they, they grew up around or accepted at any point in their life. It seems to me that that's like the subconscious trigger that the matrix use. The matrix kind of, in my opinion, goes through like, okay, uh, okay. This person's having ND boom, 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 boom. boom. Okay. What is the most maximum, um, uh, situation? a maximum successful situation we can throw at them to provide a an experience to make them believe it. Okay. That's just my, my opinion on those things. But the problem is, is oftentimes with the cases we're kind of alluding to is uh, we're lacking information. And I'm sorry, we cannot just poo poo aside the memory wipe here. I mean, I'm sorry, we, we just can't. We can't just say, oh, well, you know, 
The memory wipe doesn't happen in NDEs when we see it. We have people who admit point blank that there is a memory wipe. If there's a memory wipe during an NDE, then we're obviously missing information. Just like when we wake up in the morning from a dream and we say, oh, you know, the dream's kind of faded or we might remember it very, very clearly. And then what happens over the next half hour, hour, two hours? It goes away. It, 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 it's gone. So if we have a memory wipe when we come here, we know damn well there's a memory wipe when we, when we come here. All right? We, that's a fact. Okay? That, that, that is undeniable, in my, in my opinion. Okay? We all come here under the veil of forgetfulness, lifetime after lifetime. And when, what happens when we go to sleep? When we go to sleep, we have a dream. We may have who knows what we're doing in all sorts of different situations. And so... We wake up, we, we wake up from that dream and either we have absolutely no clue what happened or we have fragments or maybe even full recall of something that happened. But I would say full recall is kind of a dicey thing to, you know, throw all your chips on in. And well... What happens? You know, it, it fades. It fades. That that dream, that memory, that experience that happened in the astral while we're asleep, because that's what I fully believe, that when we're in the astral, I mean, when we go to sleep and we're in the dream world, we are in the astral doing whatever the hell we're doing. Sometimes we're battling. Sometimes we're having a great time. Sometimes we're, we're doing who knows what, okay? And we're not, I mean... I seriously, sitting here today and looking back at my past, there are only a few dreams that I can look back at and say, oh, you know, I think I have total recall of that. But for the most part, I don't have those. And so we can say, oh, well, you know, you're, you know, Mark, you're, you're linking in dreams with uh, NDEs or you're linking in dreams with... The point is, is... NDEs have memory wipes, too. They do. I mean, we don't really get a ton of admissions on them, but they're out there. There's enough out there to kind of keep my wheels spinning and saying, OK, so they have a memory wipe before we come here. The memory wipe supplied when we get here. And then we are having dreams we forget them almost immediately or within a half hour, hour, two hours of waking up. Then someone can have a near death experience and also have a memory wipe. Yeah. And, and why is it that I distinctly remember having a dream? I wake up somehow and I, I catch them in the middle of saying, go to the light, go to the light. I wake up and they're saying, go to the light. Why are they needing to tell me to go to the yeah. light if if it's not um predictive programming? <laughs> yeah, but anyway, so uh, yeah, I mean, uh, the, the, I, I, look, I, I um uh, before you continue, and I, no, I tried. That's, that's I um, I know exactly who wrote this <laughs> uh, very well, and yeah, not very well, but I know him enough. Well, and, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna back down from no no no. no. I want you theory, to continue. So. I want you to continue. You know, if what he says is valid, then fine. If it's not, then obviously yeah. it's, it's not. So, um, well, yeah, I just like you said, we don't have a full, complete, we don't picture to make any hundred percent conclusions either way. But I, I do know a couple yeah. people that 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 well, the one guy I met here in Austin that met the demiurge, and he, they had this long contract that they went through. Another guy who met something similar to the Demiurge, he said everything is planned out. I mean, I'm not saying that that's the case for everybody. I mean, I, I can't conclusively say I know it for a fact, but there are NDEs where there's contracts. There are. Yep. I mean, we're going to go over that in the experiences. It's not all four or 5,000 of them saying it. Well, I mean, even think about, um, I think we talked about this, Wayne, but I mean, the other thing to consider is is you know when we go to bed every night are we renewing or making new contracts that we just don't remember yeah we it's wake up possible. every morning we don't remember i mean in we're making agreements night in night out 
you know it's just going it's a repetitive process i mean i mean that would be a pretty genius system to set up but is that happening i don't freaking know i have no clue and i mean what's the end result i mean like let's say devil's africa for a second that they're doing everything against your will and i mean what are we gonna do we're just gonna we're gonna go to war with them we're gonna like what we're we gonna do blow up the moon i mean what is his no, plan for, no. for i mean what it doesn't make any sense i'll have nothing to, to do with it everyone's on their own yeah, this yeah. is an individual journey i'll have nothing to do with defending this place whatsoever i'll share what i, I, I feel think, but i don't think war it. is the solution to anything really but i mean i don't know well maybe, i mean what do you think so. the matrix is going to do i mean for the, i mean I've also kind of looked at that mentality and I've talked to quite a few people. Uh, once I get out of here, I'm going to fucking blow up this place and do all this blah, 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 blah. All this stuff, you know, I'll admit it. I was there at one point in my life, especially early on, like, you know, the, the rage and, and, and um, just all the atrocities that happen here and you're thinking oh well you know i can destroy the matrix and then you realize like am i the i'm not the first person that came up with this idea right. do you think the matrix doesn't have some sort of simulation or thing to make you believe to make you think that you are you know battling this thing out hell no I just I think know. we need to transcend it. It's like Neo, like you could just stop the yeah. ball. Like you, if you believe, you just the, the game just dissolves in front of you, yeah. and you're at a higher frequency. They can't even see you or perceive you. Yeah. It's like Castaneda's Castaneda was saying, it's discipline, and you just and Will East Trevor said the same thing. You don't entertain them. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like yeah, they exist, but it's like you you, they, you don't feed into their yeah. scenario, right? Yeah, I, think... I, I would rather take the high road and, and just leave them in the dust. Yep, and yep, yep. Try to that, well, them. that's the only thing I'm doing. I'm not here to, once I leave but, here, I'm not out to do anything. I, I It's not, it's not my problem. I'm not risking that's... my freaking future for this place. Hell no. But that's what bothers me is we get accused of being Orwellian if they don't agree on every little point. Like, okay, but I think, I would put out this this thing that maybe it's a game or it's entertainment and we choose to come here for an adventure or a story or whatever. You don't agree with it. I respect that. It's like, yeah. but for him, it's like, if he didn't agree, I mean, I don't, that's an Orwellian thing. I'm calling it a game. So I'm not making it serious. It's like, look, I'm entitled to have my own opinions. I could be Absolutely. wrong, completely wrong, yeah. but every little point, And that's why I said all these issues, there's like a dozen or two dozen or whatever. There's, <laughs> they could say any little thing I say, yeah, I'm being Orwellian because I'm, yeah twisting it or something or lying yeah. about it you know it's like and you know you know wayne like i'm i i, I think i've said this to you and i just to be clear i don't discount that it's a game yeah i just don't want to think it's a game and i freely admit that like uh, that is a bias that i have deep within me that i think this place is so screwed up and the fact that it it, it 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 reaches its ugly claws outside of here and how it intermingles with this reality that's that really is enough for me to see that something is extremely <laughs> rotten here like oh, yeah, on a that, grand that, scale but have you ever gone to see a horror flick or apocalypse now or something that's just a horrific or something some kind of historical documentary sure. on, on something that bad that happened i mean why would you submit yourself to that? It's like it's gonna walk yeah. out. It could be crying. You're angry. Yeah. It's just like you know, we do stupid things yeah. you think for entertainment. Ma yeah, you think the Matrix isn't gonna have all these simulations set up for all these different scenarios? Sure. You think you know? Yeah. I mean, I I kind of look at it as if because we know the power of the light, okay, and that you know we're drawn towards it, we're pulled towards it. However, we want to word it. I, I feel like that is an like an energy pulse being emitted out somewhere in the multiverse. And it's kind of like a homing beacon, you know, you know, come here, come check this place out, blah, 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 blah. And all of a sudden we find ourselves going towards it and towards it and closer and closer. And maybe we pull up to the gates and say, OK, well, yeah, this is a game. You know, you're going to lose your memory, blah, 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 blah. Like, I don't want to admit that that's what's it's happening, but I'm open to it. I'm not. Hey. Robert Murrow kind of said something along those lines. Yeah. 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 yeah like, yeah. Didn't he say the that? Though, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, didn't he say like something like the energy is hard to resist or something like that? 
I don't remember. Probably. Yeah, I mean, it's been a while since I went through that, but but yeah. anyway, yeah. I don't. Sorry, I don't back down from a challenge. I mean, somebody's going to call me out. I mean, he wasn't blatantly calling me anything, but it's just. I mean, at one point, I just said. I mean, I had this long email and it's like, I'm trying to work on this. And it's just like, I said, look, okay, we can agree to, we, we, okay, we don't see eye to eye and that's okay. You know, mm -hmm. maybe you, your view doesn't match mine. And then he's like, comes and I said, please um, leave me alone. Right. Mm -hmm. And he comes back. Of course he didn't leave me alone. He comes back and he said, well, I never said what my view was. Well, obviously his view is different than mine or he Clearly. You know, so they just try to pull you back into the, yeah. the argument. So finally, I'm like, okay, look, I'm going to put his view out there for better or for yeah. worse. There it is. Yeah. Maybe he'll leave me alone now. Yeah, well, there, there's your answer. I could just answer. ignore him if I wanted, but I mean. Alias, there's your answer. Well, like I said, any any belief system should be should stand up to scrutiny. Absolutely. Yeah. I don't feel like his argument is, is completely valid. So, I mean, he's made some decent fair points, but... Mm. Um, Whatever. No, I think some of it's fair, but I, I, I also, um, you know, in all honesty, I see someone based on my interactions from what I can tell with, because I know exactly who it is again, but, um, in, in my opinion, I, I see someone who just kind of maybe recently ran into this stuff and, you know, he, uh, you know, maybe he's doing research. I don't know. I mean, I I don't know the depths that he's gone into looking at this stuff. You know, I'm not shitting on him for that, but you know, it it it. I uh, that's why I try to say to people: do your own research. Don't rely on this channel, Wayne's website, Wayne or or Dan. None of us do your own research. You know, listen to tons of NDEs and all this other stuff, and come up with your own opinion. Well, the problem is if 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 I were to become super adamant about every single point, like oh, I know this is the truth and this has to be the way, then I get accused of of Orwellian brainwashing or whatever. Yeah. And if I say well on every point, it's like really I don't know. I don't. You know, everybody's going to be like, well, you're just muddying the waters and creating confusion. It's like you can't win. Anything no. you choose to do, no. man. So I think I put the alternatives out there. No. Let people decide for themselves. Yeah, so. I think you, you know, Wayne, you don't need to explain yourself, in my opinion. So, I mean, I mean, I understand why you why you do, but I'm just saying I I respect you and a lot of people respect you and your dedication to this and helping inform people. So I just want to say thank, thank you. you very much. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, that's all I had. So, um, all right. So, should we? Are you okay? Questions? You want to get to yeah. some questions? Okay. Re re rearrange my microphone. Here. All right. If anyone has any questions, um, especially if you posted them earlier, or I mean, th there may have been some that I haven't gotten to. So, I'm going to scroll up to what I have for now. But um, it's probably good to throw them in there, anyways, uh, just as a precaution, because sometimes I miss things and. I'm trying to have a conversation. I'm a horrible multitasker, so that I always say that just to make sure <laughs> everybody knows out there that. Okay. All right. So, um, says FC, you should see the Soul Reaver video game. It exposes the Soul Trap and the Demiurge. Yeah, I think that's the the David Bowie uh, thing. Did I send you that, Wayne? No, no I'll be I, let me one. take a note for that. Hold on. Yeah, let me send you that. Things on Bowie. He was in that movie. Uh, was it Pan's Labyrinth or what? Or maybe it's yeah. just Labyrinth. But yeah. That was a good one. Yeah. It was Labyrinth the Goblin, is Goblin awesome King. Yeah. And then um, there was that, that video he did right before he died. Was, was it the um, Black Star? Black Star. Yes, yeah. exactly. That was interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Bowie is. Uh... Got to see him live one time. Actually, we had tickets and for a couple nights, and he missed the first or the second night and showed up the third night. So we were happy is, to is see he, him. Is he Sir David Bowie, like Sir Paul McCartney, Sir Elton John? I don't I mean, know if he was be... knighted. That's a good question. I I think but, he may have. Don't been. they get knighted for service for the Queen? Like they're yeah. doing. So, so it kind of makes you wonder, like when the Stones put out an album about their Satanic Majesty's mm -hmm. request, and then he gets he gets knighted for doing, you know, whatever. It's like, yeah. hmm, okay. Did that's you see the? Um, I, I I'm just gonna say it right. Well, I guess I probably should be careful with this one, but um, um, all right. So when he died. 
quote unquote. That same night, he went on to the BBC in disguise. Dude, and I'll send you David, a video. David, David Bowie? Yep. Okay. There's, there's, in my opinion, there is no way that it is not him. Uh, and okay, I, I, a lot these of are the, these people are the would want to fake their death, right? It really is. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, it's it's the way I see someone like Bowie or any of these guys. It's like the Matrix comes to them and says, "Okay, well, you know, we're going to make you famous for this year so to this is. year." And you're going to die this year. And, you know, you then after that, you know, you're on retirement or whatever the heck they do. I don't know. You go off to some island, you get a new identity face, you know, uh, plastic surgery. I don't freaking know what the hell happens. But the point is, is there is the I think it was the day of or the night of or the day after there was an interview with somebody. Um, was, it, was it a live interview or maybe it was taped ahead of time? Mm, I, well, I mean, they show it was they say it was live, but, you know, make mm. of that what you will. But I mean, it it it, it was one of those BBC BBC shows and, you know, it, it's clearly David Bowie. You hear David Bowie's voice. Right. It kind of looks like him, but it's in disguise. And it's supposed to be one of David Bowie's longtime managers. And if you go and look up this guy, there's barely anything on his past. It's almost like they just created uh, this person out of thin air. There's no pictures with him. Nothing. All right. But they did create a LinkedIn page, you know, that he was like a mm. music business guy. I mean, we I can go on forever about this one. Yeah, it's yeah. really, really it's a it's a fascinating thing. And, you know, I unfortunately, most people don't care. It's like I was yeah. mentioning the Beatles thing to my the friend that we, I was eating with. And he's just like, well, I just don't care. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, well, okay. no, yeah, I've you know. gotten that a lot. I find know? it I find it really interesting myself. The Beatles one, at least the. Bowie one, I don't care so oh, much about. The Beatles but, uh, one is, um, yeah. yeah, it's fascinating. Um, but I see where he's coming from. What what difference does it really? I mean, you can't prove it, I guess. But I mean, there's enough evidence. But what well, doesn't really matter in, in the soul context? I mean, the, the soul theory. I'm more interested in how to get the hell out of here and all that stuff. Yeah. So this to me, that's just a distraction. You know, yeah. watching this. Yeah, that. this is all matrix distractions. I mean, I think yeah. that's that's clearly what everything sometimes is sometimes we need some distractions and diversions you can't just do it 24 7 you no, go crazy of course right? not it's no you, you gotta you gotta be able to like have some semblance of sanity right yeah <laughs> yeah mean, and if that's what we enjoy doing then that's, yeah. we should we should be able to do that yeah <laughs> all right so let me get to the question i'm gonna find that video for you because you're you're gonna be yeah, blown away at that later. one you i wanted to kind of play it here show. tonight but uh yeah, I can't find it. Okay, Let's get to some more questions. If you can. Okay, so any theory how the human sacrifices in nearly all ancient human cultures fit into this? Well, it's like we've been talking the yeah, feeding talked about the it. gods, feeding the archons. Yep. You know, it's it's all about feeding off our the blood. It's mm -hmm. the Galu, all those people. I mean, all those demons and stuff. I think there's entities that, like we were talking about, feeding. Um, you know, some food and they went into it i think was it coco one of those movies but they were the gods or the demons they feed off the blood of humans and yep. the astral loose yeah that's said. a good one so astral loose, like, yeah. um, i like that okay um iron says are the archons human no yeah not my not my not for my maybe they could Pose this one if they have the ability to shape shift. I mean, archon that's a very loose term that's being applied to almost everything and anything, but in the strict sense of it, they were rulers. So I look at them as more as angels and archangels and mm -hmm. the demiurge. And yeah, um, yeah. we're talking about more of the outside perspective, but yeah. Yeah, I think um, they can come down and be automatrons. I mean, maybe. I mean, that's, according to the Bible, yeah. the angels can appear as men. So I think they can maybe appear as human. Mm. But that doesn't doesn't make them human. Yep. They might possess a human, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, th th there's some cases where a um, 
someone will have an NDE. I mean, this is kind of a weird one, but, you know, I wish I documented it, but ran across this one in 2018 or something. I, I could probably find it again. But anyways, they talk about how, um, you know, if we're going to send you down, we'll try and get you into a different body. I mean, that was a weird one for me. That, I, that was the only one I ever saw like that. Did you ever run across any of those, Wayne? Are you, are you talking about like walk-ins or something where I don't somebody remember. doesn't want to be here? And so yeah, make, yeah. Maybe in, this, in the astral realm, they make a deal so the other entity can come in and take over that body. Yeah, and I people mean, around him sure. notice, wow, he's got a complete different personality or, or maybe not a yep, complete one. Yep. But, and, and there was, a, yeah, there's uh, cases in India with that. I mean, it, very well documented cases too i mean it's not you know yeah, some fly like by night think, thing jim I tucker think like i think was involved happen. with one of them yeah sounds sounds how, yeah. How, how many have you run across many of those i've only run across maybe a handful no, i haven't right right yeah if Same that here. i mean maybe three okay um copper pedal says are archons considered soul eaters soul eaters yeah. um yeah i think so <laughs> i mean a lot of people would say i don't know if it would differentiate between soul and spirit i'm not sure exactly which one she's talking about but um there was a text i ran across where that talked about um maybe being able to eat souls yeah but that's you know just one of the teachings or one of the religions yeah. and doesn't make it so but identify me says was crowley in contact with the grace well, that like you said, that lamb yep. meditation that he, created him. Uh, sure sounds like it from if you can yeah. take him at his word. That he, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I think Crowley possibly brought them into existence. Yeah. Maybe I mean, the that's, portal or something. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's, yeah. That's, With all those black magic rituals or whatever, yeah. they, they could easily open a, a portal. And a lot of they get into the calling of demons by name. What is that? Necronomicon? And Necronomicon, stuff like that, where yeah. They've got sigils and names and somehow it all works that they can yeah. and then they, they do the circle where they try to they bind do. them so that they can't come in and yeah, yeah. it's yeah. um i haven't just so you know i'm having uh the bit rate changing so i just yeah, shut yeah. off my video sure all sure. right uh ajuna says steiner had a publication called lucifer gnosis lucifer dash gnosis hmm. and um Iron says, also, if the Archons are trying to keep me confused, why would they allow me? OK, all right. Uh, let me give you some context on this. OK, so Iron, I did a commentary video on about his pre-birth experience, which is I, I, I emailed it to you. But um, really, really interesting testimony. And we're going to talk down the road. Maybe he'll come on the channel, hopefully. But um, either way, I'll talk with him privately. But he sent. Please reference that experience when we do the experiences episode. Um, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Let me take a note read right Read it now. out loud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Summarize it either way. Yep. Okay. Hold on. Let me put this. Uh... Yeah. Any any good pre-birth experiences, after-death communications. Um, okay. I'm actually going through YouTube and because I'm, you know, I'm, I don't have that many. I got a lot of NDEs and, and stuff like that. But okay. I'm going through and getting you know spirit channelings and pre-birth experiences and stuff like that so you probably have a lot more than i do in that area all right sure but if you know of any really really good ones um, yeah yeah, feel yeah. Free to share. there's there's two off the top of my head that i think would really fit in well so yeah, yeah i'll yeah. get some notes together for that i was actually mentioning one to the guy i ate, ate lunch with and he said oh yeah i think he did a show on that <laughs> i'm like because i'll probably find the same ones you do like on youtube yeah and yeah we just keep searching keep searching we, i'm sure we run across much of the same stuff um thanks to the algorithm <laughs> yes exactly um let's... but it's funny the very first ones i pull up and i'm on listening to it and I, I find stuff right off the get-go boom 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 dude wayne that is so just searching the for a needle part. in a haystack. Like I was saying, they've got four to five thousand experiences, and we're you know finding one percent. But it's not all it's like that. I mean, I go and listen to almost anything on YouTube, and it's like, well, hello, there it is. Yeah, yeah. I think um, I I I find that I find that part um. Ah oh, man, Wayne, I, I find that part um uh helpful but also disturbing 
disturbing. Yeah. Yeah, I find it disturbing. Why, why am yeah. I walking? I mean, I showed you that DMT video. I, I showed you a couple of the pre-birth memory things, and you know, those are things I just walked into instantly. Yeah. It's, I didn't have to dig for them. They just appeared. That bothers the hell out of me. I'm gonna be honest. I mean, that's just that's creepy. But is that is that like my um you know my spirit self out in the ether connecting with me and saying, hey, you know, watch this one, you know, click this one. This is the one you want to to free yourself. I mean, I I seriously think that could be what's going on. But at the same time, I I it, it's disturbing. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> it's a little weird. <laughs> all right. Um, all right. So anyways. Um, all right. So I, Iron is the one who did the pre-birth memory in the car. I okay. sent you an email with that. I don't, did you see that one yet or no? I don't think I got to that. All I, right. was watching the, I was watching the Paul McCartney on this. Yeah. Oh, I know. Yeah. That, yeah like, that's, that's a rabbit hole and a half. It is a rabbit hole. I started yeah. going off on other videos oh. that popped up. You get stuck in that for I got stuck in that for almost two years. So. Yeah. What's um, interesting is I probably mentioned, but but it's like George Martin's own son is the one that read the audio. He read the audio book, the, the memoirs of uh, Billy Shears, yeah. and it's like in one of the studios or something like that. It's like he's uh, obviously not so, poo pooing the idea at all. Yeah. So ridiculous that he, that he read it. I mean, as if he didn't know what was right, happening. Right. I mean, come on. And then on. in the book itself, how he was bolding the letters on a page, and it was basically a hidden message. Like, I am not who you think are. I mean, I can't remember the exact phrase. You probably do, but, you know. Yeah. It's like, yeah. I want to tell you who I am kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, it, it's just, it's crazy stuff. And some of it was like the very first letter, like, every other line or something like that. I mean, it was definitely a code and it was not just by coincidence at all. I mean, not yeah. that whoever wrote the book could have put that in there. So, you know, mm -hmm. whatever. But. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, I, th I think, yeah. The, okay. Well, we can go down the Beatles yeah, road we'll for hours. Um, all right. So iron says, um, okay. So also, if remember, this is the guy who had the, the pre-birth memory. He says also, if the archons are trying to keep me confused, why would they allow me to remember my time with them? And um, plus, another weird thing. Is this the same person? Plus, another thing, weird thing is I was always afraid of taking pictures. Wait, no. Wait okay, no, that's one? somebody yeah, else. Before, yeah, why don't we... Re yeah. It. yeah, please. Well, uh Maybe they didn't allow you. Maybe you just set the intention that, darn it, I'm going to remember this. And your willpower overcame what they were trying to brainwash you with. Um, uh, I think I think one you're, possibility. Well, actually, without you even seeing it, Wayne, I think that's exactly what happened. Because um, before he came down, he he says himself in his video that he made a deal to retain that memory but yeah. part of the deal wayne with you <laughs> drum roll please okay so part of the deal was is that he had to um have a a a, 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 a like um more suffering in life he could have he could have saw yeah. that i think i might have seen that might have been the ones that came up for me that um because yeah, he he's did, in he his made... car he's in his car yes, yeah i did see that one yeah, yeah he's got kind of like a trippy background i think or a trippy filter on it maybe i maybe it was the link you sent and i just didn't remember it. but why is i get so interested that i didn't remember you sent it to me but i was searching for pre-birth memories and that was like one of the first ones that came up yeah yeah and so yeah, yeah i mean like he 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 said his intention he said listen in my in my opinion, this is me speaking on his behalf, dare I? But um, you know, so he's, this is him. This is him, the guy that made it. Yeah, him. Yeah, yeah, oh, he, cool. yeah, yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, I enjoyed that video. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, me too. And um, I think. Uh, yeah, I was going to bring that up as a as a pre birth experience yep. on the show. So, yeah, it's yeah. a great, great video. And um, I think he, you know, he set his intention. The archives like, oh shit! All right, okay, fine. We'll let you remember this, but you know you're gonna have a you know a little bit more misery in life once you get down there. We were gonna give you you know the rich and famous role, but right, because yeah, you know, 
I mean, that's basically my interpretation of it. But I mean, you know, even though he said, yeah, I could have been anything. I could have, you know, had easy yeah. street in life. Blah, yeah, blah, 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 I remember blah. that, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so. Um... Whereas it's like Cypher in the Matrix, he wants, he makes the deal and he wants to be somebody important and blah, blah, blah. But he wants to, he wants to forget it all, right? It's the opposite. This yeah. guy has integrity and he'd rather remember the truth than uh, yeah, I, sell I, his soul for fame or, yep. or whatever. Yeah, I, 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 mm -hmm. I think subconsciously he knew that he needed to remember that moment. Yeah, much respect. And um, yeah. Absolutely. So, uh, Cross Plus says another weird thing I was always afraid of was taking pictures. Why? Because I was afraid of the bright light. I kind of mm. knew. So they're claiming that, be um, when they would take pictures, the the flash, right, right, would kind of remind them of the light and the memory. Well, wipe. What about when we go to sleep at night and we want to get a good night's peace and rest and all that stuff and um. We, we turn off the light. Mm hmm. No. Yep. And then we're programmed too. on top of that to be afraid of the dark, to be afraid of yes. the, the darkness. Big time. Now that's that's yeah. a whole nother discussion in and of itself. Um, oh, just it's in the language. You know, I'm going to yeah. see the light. I mean, there's just so many examples of, of the light and, there and was, also darkness. Yeah. You want to be kept in the dark about something. Yeah. Yeah. There was a show um, when I was a child. I think it was in the mid '90s, maybe, maybe probably early '90s actually, and it was called "Are You Afraid of the Dark?" You know, talk about just you know that was on a, a children's network, Nickelodeon. So you know, kind of throw that out there. You know, hey, be afraid of the dark. You know, be afraid of stillness. I guess is kind of my interpretation well, there's, of there's it. There's monsters under the bed and in your closet. And, uh... Yeah, you want to hear a weird. Uh, Reminds me of Monsters Inc., right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll I'll share a weird one with you. I, I these are the types of things I kind of hold back on, but I, I'll share mm. it with you. Um, this was uh yeah sometime last year I was laying in bed with my girlfriend and um I was explaining to her how I was always afraid as a child of the boogeyman and. <laughs> I said, I don't, I don't believe in the boogeyman. Blah, blah, blah. I don't believe it. I was always afraid of it as a child, but now as an adult, I'm fine. Blah, blah. blah. And as soon as I said that, the, my, the, the bottom of my feet, which was under a sheet, like just, there was this huge whiff of energy across my feet, which was just hmm. very, very, it was just freaky because of the timing, yeah. obviously. So clearly, I was like, oh, yeah, you don't believe in the boogeyman? Well, let me show you. <laughs> right. I had a friend that um, he was the other guy I told you about that was in the UFOs, and he he was looking up in the stars, and he said, well, if you're out there, give me a sign. And that, that exact second, there was like a shooting star that went by. So. Mm. Is that coincidence? <laughs> oh, yeah. That's a, the, I think all this uh, Matrix programming is you know customized to us. And then, of course, I think we have our own you know, we're partaking in this and using our creator abilities to yeah. manifest it. Okay, so um, uh, FC, can you share this later with Wayne? Allah is actually an ancient Arabian mm, god, god called Allah. Allah the god. Yes. was, was Al means Al means the and La. I think it's a, but Allah was like a moon god. If, if, mm -hmm. or, Always with the moon, right? Yeah. yeah. Allah was a female goddess who was the daughter of Baal. Yeah, we know all about Baal. And he laughs. He says, "Cast into a river, drawer of water, took wow. me as a son, appointed me as gardener, issued love." Years I exercised kinship and uh, save this for later. Well, uh, Allah, according to the Quran, was a throne upon on on an eternal. I'm sorry. Uh, Allah, according to the Quran, was a throne upon an eternal water in which he uses to create all life forms that contain water. 
Well, 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 well. I mean, I can go off on that one. Yeah, so is he saying that all those points that I mentioned about uh, King Sargon or whatever? Yeah, this was hours ago. That's also in Islam, in the, mm -hmm. in the book, like in the Quran or something, or in their teaching? They, they're saying the exact same thing that I just read off? Yep. Uh, that's wow. my interpretation of it. And I did not take that from, from the Quran uh, or from mm. the Islamic teaching. That's what I'm saying. All this stuff gets repackaged into different cultures and yep. just the names are changed. And it doesn't mean it's not true or whatever, but they're, they're, they're conveying the stories are trying to convey something, symbolism or, you know, yep. maybe it's propaganda. Who knows? But um, Well, yeah, I mean, I think if they're repackaging it, they, they know it usually works. Most we're being deceived at some yeah. they're not being upfront and honest with us about it yeah. why don't they just say the origin origin uh, of the real I story mean, yeah i mean why keep repackaging it changing tweaking it here during you know through all different regions of the world come on get the hell out of here um all right so let's see do you think saturn is responsible for creating physical reality saturn sounds like satan well, one of the near-death experiencers I met in a group in Austin, and it's not the man I interviewed, um, but mm -hmm. he met a being that he called time. And this is like, I think he said in the metaverse or anyway, this being was kind of like the Demiurge. And so there's some similarity to Saturn, but um, what was the question? Is, is Saturn uh, create see. the universe? Says, is Saturn um, the Demiurge? Is yeah, do you think Saturn is responsible for creating physical reality? Saturn sounds like Satan. This is the same guy who brought up well, the... Well, the cube oh. is interesting. I mean, there's a lot of connections to the symbolism of the cube and time. Oh, and we can go on space, for hours obviously. about that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's possible. Um it may be that this god is like 10,000 different forms and a bunch of different names. It's like, what do they, they say that about the goddess, right? This is. Yeah. Well, or it's like an AI type thing. Yeah, that's that's kind of where I'm at, where I think everything is kind of on autopilot and um, it has but, your energy signature during certain moments of your life. You know, maybe you have, you know, a traumatic moment or. Uh, you know, you're about to cross over and have an NDE. Uh, everything is kind of just on autopilot, ready and waiting to suck you in and uh, make sure that you don't have the advantage over the situation and realize your true powers. But it's it's quite possible because I mean, Kronos was a god of Saturn. And Kronos is you know, tied mm. to chronology and time and all that stuff. So mm -hmm. He's the father of, of time as we know it. And yeah, it's... To be honest, I don't know. I can't, you know, theoretically, what's the word, categorically state that, oh, yeah, he was or he wasn't. I mean, yeah. I really don't know. So, I mean, it seems like that's the narrative that we care, but whether that's the case, I don't know. But it does seem like, uh, you know, got a timekeeper up in here. <laughs> right, right. Um, okay, so. Okay. Greta Falco says, FC, um, will you ever do a commentary on what really what you really think of modern social issues on another platform? <laughs> I used to do that a lot, but um these days are um yeah. very difficult. And I and you know, I most I mean, I'm not telling you who to listen to or anything, but I pretty much agree with a lot of the alternative um, views on what's going on in the world right now. So yeah, that's yeah, probably I, the best way to put it. I think most things they try to um, polarize you and get you in two different camps, this, mm -hmm. you know, the right versus the left and, you know, whether it's religion, the God versus the devil, and it's all polarity, light and dark. And so I try Absolutely. to stick with the middle ground and that's just my opinion. Yep. Yep, uh, I'm, I'm with you 100. percent I kind of go back and forth. Sometimes one one's in power, and I'm a little lean one way, and then the other gets in power, and I'm like, oh, I don't like what they're doing. I'm I'm kind of usually against whoever's in power, to be honest, because it seems like they're on the same. I mean, team. I just I, I probably shouldn't go and say stuff like that. But. No, I mean, I just look at all of them as clowns. I mean, I think they're all ridiculous, and um, 
I could even say some worse things, but I just I just look at them all as clowns, basically. Um, Wayne, I've got um, quite a few more questions, and we've been we went probably an hour and forty minutes since the last break, hour and a half. So, um, are you up to to finish the questions, or do you want to just kind of call it here and take a break, or, or do you want to take a I'll break? Leave. I'll leave it up to you. I mean, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm willing to go. To go. But, um, <laughs> I don't want to like not answer questions people have. So, okay. Um, All right. I so how about we take, us, I know the answers. <laughs> yeah. How about we take five minutes? Sure. Yeah. I got to refill my water. It's, it's running dry here. So, um, yeah, so let's take five, five and a half minutes. And, um, if any of you have any questions out there, feel free to send them in there. And, uh, after the break, we will cut off the questions and, uh, cause we've been going for quite a while, but, um, yeah, yeah Wayne, thank you so much for sure. hanging in there. <laughs> no problem. I, I keep thinking like, uh, you know, can, can we possibly beat our old, our other stream? Right. And every time we do a stream, it gets longer. The, the experiences longer. <laughs> just might do that. If, cause we're lumping all the experiences into one show. Oh, the, and dude, we could dude. easily do a whole show on just the, we the could new probably do a week on like, experiences. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's going to be a tough one to do, but it is. All right. So, pull it off. all right, my friend. So, Go take a stretch break, Wayne. Take a stretch break, and uh, I'll fill my water, and we'll we'll meet here in about five five and a half minutes. Sounds uh, good. Yeah, if you could just meet your mic, meet my mic. Thank you so much. <laughs>
All right, Wayne. How you making out, buddy? All right. Uh, good. I was just checking my email. Somebody sent me an experience they had. Oh, nice. But uh, we can save it for next week if it's good. Yeah, sure. All right. Let's um head in, try and plow through these questions, and we'll call it a night or a morning at this point. Right. <laughs> uh, thank you for your time. It's been a... No problem. I can't believe we outdid the last one. <laughs> <laughs> Should I bring my pajamas next time? I yeah, know. I know. What the hell? All right. <laughs> Five, four, three, two, and one. All right, everybody, we're back. Welcome to the Wayne Bush Power Session. Episode four, Religion, Royal Nobility, Origins, and Solar Myths. So we're on to the question and answer phase of things. Questions have been closed. I've got a number to go through. And Wayne, if you get tired at any point, just let me know. Um, and we can call it a night. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a trooper. I can hang in there. Yeah. yeah it's, uh, I got all day tomorrow to recover. <laughs> yeah, well, I think we'll need probably more than one day. <laughs> I swear oh, to God, man. every time we talk, I need like two days to, to recover. Yeah. Yeah. But I feel um, that way almost after every stream. So it's... if I feel up to, I'm gonna. I've already started a little bit on the experiences show, but I'm gonna try to get on. Mm. It seemed like two weeks. We have got a couple weeks, right? Because next week's Christmas. Uh, let me take a look. That's a good question. Uh, well, I'm looking at the today's the 18th, us. so one week from today would be the 25th. So I'm assuming we didn't schedule. Yeah, we're we're Christmas. we're skipping. Let's see, we're skipping two I or think. three weeks. Yeah. I don't remember. Which. Let's see. The next, yeah, the next one I have is uh, January 8th. Okay, so yeah, we got, I'm going to need it, man, to put all these experiences together, so. Take your time. And if you need more time, but, just let me know. No, big no, deal. no, I'll be fine. Because uh, taking stuff off of YouTube, man, it's obviously transcribing and stuff's difficult. Mm -hmm. And even if you use the open transcript, it's, it's um, yeah, it's yeah, not perfect. For sure. All right. Um, all right. I'm sorry. Just give just give me one moment, my friends. Yeah, uh, yeah Just sure. for my dog. One sec. I won't be long. All right. Feel free to talk, Wayne. <laughs> oh yeah. So, like I said, next episode is going to be on uh, experiences, and that's going to cover near death experiences, out of body experiences, pre birth experiences, life between lives. Uh, uh, I guess reincarnation would be well. That'd, that'd be its own past life. Uh, PLR, whatever that is. Um, what else would it be? Alien abductions, DMT experiences. It's going to be a lot. I don't hope we can get it done um, in that amount of time. But remote viewing be another aspect. Um, just anything and everything. It's an experience. Um, the spirit um, channeling, that would be part of it too. Somebody talking to the so-called dead. Um, there's just so much to be gleaned from all those experiences. And um, I think it's going to be the best show of the entire series. Probably yeah. by far. Are you talking about the NDE show? Uh, well, just the experience. Yeah, the experience. Experience show. show. Just, yeah. um, I agree. Maybe we'll have to end up breaking it into two. We'll see. Yeah, no, I'm glad we have a, um, a few weeks to go in between because... I want to compile some of my favorites too. And please, please do. All right. So we are back. Thank you for filling in, Wayne. I appreciate it. No problem. All right. So, all right. So we got the Saturn. Okay. Um, yeah. The commentary. Okay. Overwatch channel. Uh, Dan from Overwatch channel. You know him. He says, hello, yeah. Wayne. Thanks, I did. FC, for these great interviews. Yeah, he's been leaving some comments, so he just good. wanted to send a quick hello and appreciation. Great. So, hey Dan, good to yeah. see you. Or good to hear from you. Yeah. Okay. Always good to hear from Dan. Some happy. Yeah, he's a good guy. Yep. Let's see. Um, FC. Uh, do you rate? Yeah, sorry. Do you rate William? Gilman. Gilman. I saw a video where he said, I know I always say Bowman. 
Uh, Buhlman, sure which... I saw a video where he said to ignore your family members at death and go to a higher self. Yeah. Um, his, I did a commentary on his video. One of his, one of my favorite videos by him. He put out a book about death and dying. And, his, and I think his wife, if I recall, is a hospice nurse. Or, mm -hmm. or at least I know she deals with the dying in some fashion, but um, I'll pop up that link. Uh, but let me give you the title. Um, it was I've got from... all his all his books except for I think the very last one he did. I think I even maybe bought that one. Yeah, really I mean if that was who I'm thinking of. Oh yeah, he he um, he did the lecture. Yeah, the, this was for, I did the video commentary, and I included the source video too in the description. So if you don't want my commentary, just even just head over to it and check it out. It was from May twenty first, twenty twenty one, and the video title is. William Buhlman, what you need to know before you die. And it's commentary, Matrix Reincarnation, Soul Trap, of course. Seen, may have seen that one. Yeah. And um, well, he that, did a, yeah. a survey of like 19,000 or so uh, out of body experiencers mm -hmm. and, and did a questionnaire. And so, you know, it's not just only his own experiences. I mean, he's this guy is well knowledgeable about astral projection. Yeah, he, and what I found interesting is he, you know, he 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 doesn't sensationalize anything. He just says, "Look, you know, get your ass in gear and and go and prove it to yourself. Go out and and do it." But um, uh, I think we talked about this. Very... I was amazed when he said not to go to the white that he's not going to go to the white light, not to go to the white light. Yeah, he said he's doing his thing. I mean, he said he was doing his thing. Then he was talking about the clear light of the void. I was like, wow, man, yeah. I can't believe he's saying, saying what this bothers stuff. me. Yeah, what bothers me is that he doesn't. He doesn't expand upon it because, and you know, you got to remember, too, like he was a, you know, uh, I mean, I hate to say like prodigy or a student, I guess, of Robert Monroe. And right. after Monroe had his uh revelations so to say of all those things he dealt with about loosh and being you know given a tour of what the hell is going on and he's then, not expounding on it no at all, and know, that yeah. bothered that bothers me wayne that really bothers me i reached out to william uh a couple times trying to get him to come on and talk and i was even willing to pay um mm -hmm. but um I don't know, you know, I don't know what to say. I never heard back. Um, but it's it's so beyond obvious of all the people who are associated with the Monroe Institute. And there's a lot of really weird people associated with them. Um, that Buhlman is the, the most in the know out of everyone there. There's no doubt in my yeah, mind. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I may be a little late to the party, but I just ran it because I'm doing this thing on experiences, and I ran into the the, the guy I mentioned earlier in the show. Uh, what was his name? Thomas something or other. But he, he's got. But he's like, I think he was in charge of the Monroe Institute or one of the things, and he's actually got these CDs oh. on how to go to the white light, the black light, he calls it, and the clear light. And mm -hmm. it's interesting. I'm not. I'm not advocating no. anybody go out and do yeah. this. I'm just saying it, it's interesting that he's talking about all this stuff. And thank you. Thank yeah. you for bringing that up, because I think it's really important to have the discussion. I thought we talked about this, but if we didn't, um, yeah. one of the biggest problems. That I'm... OK, the Monroe he's saying each one is their own frequency and blah, blah. And he's like, oh, here's how you can go to have life reviews. He's, he's basically saying, go do this on your own and you'll be prepared for what happens. And mm -hmm. I'm not saying and they, they used to put the Robert Monroe stuff out at the IONS meeting and they're mm -hmm. not supposed to proselytize or anything, but they're putting his stuff. And I found that curious. Yeah, I uh, <laughs> I have a lot to say on the Monroe Institute. Um <sighs> Here's the tough part for me, Wayne. Um, has the entire operation been compromised since the jump? 
I don't know. But I heavily suspect it may have been. I mean, I hear there's a lot of intel people that are, you know, CI, whatever, that go. I mean, they wrote papers. I mean, I mean yeah. we have we have declassified papers of sure. you know you know, can go right to the CIA's website and and look at them. And there's some of the most. Um, but maybe they're interested in it because there's something to it. Like there's you know maybe okay. it works, maybe it doesn't. I don't know. Sure, sure. I, that's kind of how I felt initially, and then you start digging into Monroe's background. <laughs> this yeah, is where it right. gets a little dicey. You know, he was in charge of a bunch of radio stations and I think maybe TV stations, but I know a bunch of radio stations like either all over the country or or in like uh, the southeast. Point is, is he he was involved with radio. And then I'll uh, I'm sorry. As soon as I hear that, Wayne, ding, 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 ding. You know, the bells are going off in my head and saying, oh, okay, oh. All right, so he was in charge of all these radio stations. Openly admits it on radio with interviews. I mean, you can hear the audio yourself. That, to me, is very suspicious because is he like a controlled opposition for consciousness? I mean, you know, we, we know that we're, we're that, that, that there's, you know, Project Mockingbird and and all that, and, you know, that was... When he was involved, I think it was already exposed or not long after exposed. And, you know, when I hear someone involved with multiple, multiple, it's not like he was like, oh, you know, I was involved with one radio station. He openly admits it was multiple radio stations and they were trying to figure out a frequency to um, either hypnotize or... or um, sell things you know and i'm just kind of talking off the cuff on that part so please don't take me word for word on what i'm saying there i'll try and dig it up but the point is is there that's a really really big red flag okay and then the cia comes in and and they're they're you know uh you know getting their claws and what's going on in the operation you know they but mm -hmm. but you they're worth studying because even if what they're spreading is disinformation, it's it's you can maybe maybe they make a mistake and they say like Jim Morrison said they make mistakes they too long a glance I mean maybe they leave like something that's a little too obvious that you know like you know maybe so much of so much percentage of it is is truth or kind of true but then the very last thing is like misleading and mm-hmm. keeps you coming back and yeah. i just think it's their information is at least worth looking at and oh and there's realizing. no doubt so, um, there's no doubt i mean uh i still swear by their uh, you know monroe's books buhlman's books um i just um and that's why i like the near-death experiences i mean and of course gotta wonder about anybody that's compiling and putting i mean does enderf allow i mean i i know they review these things and they don't allow every single nde to be considered an nde or even published so it's like you know are they a gatekeeper are they not but i put more value in in the near-death experiences on their website than because if we were going to eliminate all the information from Intel people, we wouldn't have anything to go no, on. No, no, no. I, dude, I, you know? I completely agree. I mean, that that's that's my approach with everything. It's like uh, a lot of the Intel people have, you know, directed me or implied me to s- look at things that are absolute gold mines. So, no, I mean, I'm not I'm not shitting on it. I just, the, the reason the I bring it up is for conversation. On- the people that post on Reddit from their own personal, I mean, there can be people that go on there and spread misinformation too, but a large, I like, I value the personal experiences from, from the average everyday average person way more than, than others. Cause the gatekeepers, they may not go. Well, they certainly wouldn't tell us the truth. Right. I mean, unless it's no. mixed in with well, everything else, but, or, or, I mean, we can, I mean, they could because, um, you know, we, we talked about how they just, why do they drip, I mean, so much truth, like piles and piles of truth. You know, it's all over the place. It's scattered everywhere, but they put it out there. Is that because of the consent factor? Oh, well, you know, 
you've got to ask, you've got to look into it. You've got to take the initiative to find that this piece of information actually exists. Um, and I look at the Monroe Institute today and, and I have absolutely zero doubt in my mind. There's not even 0.001% that, um, makes me look at the operation that's going on today and probably for a decade or two that it's not controlled. I mean, it's just, there's, there's just no way, but it's a consciousness based, uh, business and, uh, their prices are high. So, you know, I mean, yeah. they're, they're, I mean, of course they don't want people expanding their well, consciousness. That's the thing. He's got like six CDs or something on different stuff. And, you know, some of them are like 30 bucks or, you know, 20, you might be able to get a discount, yeah. but it's like, look, I can make a CD for a dollar. Yeah. I mean, if I, if I want to help people and get the truth out there, I mean, if that's his only job or something, maybe I'd understand. I mean, that's understandable. Well, that's the big but, problem. Uh, yep. you know. Yeah. I mean, the, their courses, Wayne, I, I get, yeah. I'm on their mailing yeah. list. Their courses, if you want to go and have, um, uh, a, uh, go there for a residency experience for, right. I think it's five, six days. Five five days, six nights, or thousands of dollars. I'm it's sure. twenty two, almost twenty two hundred dollars, or maybe it's a little more than that. It's it's around twenty one hundred, twenty two hundred dollars minimum. Minimum. You're not yeah. going to find it any cheaper than that. Um, yeah. So I mean, you know, it, it, the point is, is most people can't afford that kind of money. They they right. just can't. So they 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 keep people out from expanding their consciousness just by that buffer zone existing in and of itself. But maybe let's think outside the box. I mean, maybe escaping the matrix has absolutely nothing to do with light at all. I mean, it could be maybe they want us to keep thinking, oh, they go to the light, go to the clear light, the white light, the dark light, the void. It's like maybe it's just something completely that we're not even thinking about yeah. that no one's talking about. Mm -hmm. Or maybe they might talk about it like they had a Salvia experience or, or something different that mm -hmm. it's like, wow. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I'm with you on that. Uh I'm at the point where it's just I'm. Um, I don't know. I mean, I just the, the way I see it is I'm taking the sovereign path, and that's it. Obviously, yeah. um, creating exactly. my own reality, and that's it. And whatever happens after that, it happens. But I mean, I feel okay. Yeah, I feel I'll set an intention, mm -hmm. and if a wormhole and a light happen to appear after I set my intention, fine, that's okay. Yeah. But I'm not gonna. Yeah. Just go to some external light. That's see. right. Yeah, it's got to be of your creation. And I yes. think even, you know, uh, look within ourselves deeply and say, you know, this is definitely my creation. I know it's my my portal, my reality. And, you know, it's protected beyond belief. Nothing can infiltrate it. Blah, blah, blah. blah. Um, you know, yeah, that's... It, uh, if you want to set the intention to to talk to your mother or your father or something like that, it has to be from your intention. If if somebody comes up and it looks like your mother or father, well, how do you know if it really is? I mean, you might be able to ask them, are you really my father? But maybe they can lie. I mean, who knows? Yeah, of course. Yep. Yep. Yeah, I'm not gonna no, there will be no mother, father, no, dog, no, not nothing. Yeah, yeah, they can they can go pound sand and you know, head back to the moon or wherever they're going. <laughs> Um, all right. I was going to say something else on Monroe, but, um, yeah, I just, um, I, 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 I mean, why does Monroe of all people have to be involved with, with, you know, yeah. multiple radio stations? I mean, I just, that bothers me. I'm sorry. It just, it, it bothers me knowing what I know about how media works. I mean, and how that you know that they've been they've had their claws and all sorts of things. okay i'll just leave it at that and I, and let's just yeah. say that you know the operation going on today is absolutely compromised there's no doubt in my mind and i think it's been compromised for a very long time you know if it happened from the jump i don't know but i mean it's kind of weird that the cia kind of has their little dirty little paws in there from what the 70s 80s i don't know but okay so Let's just move on before we. Okay. Um, all right. So, yeah. Yeah. Check out the the Bielman video. I think it's um even though I call him Bulman. So okay. Bear Christ says, FC, do you practice astral creation, as in something like a sword and shield? 
for defense, of course. A sword of ether fire, pure badass Metatron head splitter. <laughs> <laughs> Not to feed them, but simple show of uh, to show your warrior spirit and that you mean business. Not to take them on, but just to show sovereign power. Thanks for an honest opinion on that. Not just weapons and defense, but any type of astral creation with the mind. Okay. Yeah, I mean... um. I, 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 when I'm lucid enough during astral projection and, you know, I, I, I'll be honest, I've, I've only had a few experiences. I mean, maybe a dozen and, um, uh, only I would say, cause I was doing sort other sorts of energy work back in 2016, I think. I came to it the the probably about four or five, so probably about half a dozen I tried to put up a shield and things like that when I was perfectly lucid and capable of directing my own experiences. So I, I've probably done it about half of the times, but I probably only had about a dozen astral projection experiences. So it's really not many. Lucid dreaming is a different story, but I mean you have to be capable of being aware of the situation that you're in and that moment to um fully take advantage of you know uh seeing if you could battle the matrix or or you know protect yourself this and that but yeah i mean that's something i would love to expand upon for my own well-being i mean i wish i could add more to that but i just um unfortunately i lack experience anything you want to throw on that wayne no, I've only had maybe two out of bodies, okay. but I don't, um, regrettably, I don't focus on it enough. I mean, if you set your intention on something, try to keep a journal and practice mm -hmm. and all that stuff, you're going to have much better results. And yeah. unfortunately, I, I'm not as committed to it as I need to be. Sure, sure. Okay, so um, another listener says, I don't understand why the New Age community wants to raise their vibration. If we are in hell, that means we would be ready to be a consumed meal. <laughs> uh, I don't, you know, I mean, I can add to that, but feel free to. That's a tough one. Um, yeah. I mean, we're talking about Bielman, and one of his things is higher frequency now. Yeah, higher self and, now. Yep. Or higher self well, now. Same and, thing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he's talking about a higher frequency now too, unless that was Monroe. One of them was. Um, I think was the, was the book called Higher Fre Higher Self now. Yeah. Higher, I think uh, one, Beale, one of yeah. his intentions higher. is is is, is uh, higher frequency. You know, clarity now. So they do talk about increasing the frequency. And to me, frequency is vibration. It vibration. It's movement. I mean, that's a really hard one. I'm not. I'm not a scientist. You know. I mean. Tesla was saying, if you want to know the secrets of the universe, think in terms of energy, frequency, vibration. So um, I get torn between not having any vibration at all and just being completely still mm -hmm. and just being in the moment and the bliss and, and the peace versus just this kinetic frenzied, you know, higher frequency. And to me, that might be a trap. It might be going deeper and deeper into creation. You know, if you, yeah, just depends if you want to participate in, in creating and having adventures and doing stuff. I mean, that's go for it. If you don't, then don't. And if you don't, then maybe you don't want any, any vibration at all. So it's, it's the person's choice, whatever you want to do. Mm. Yeah, bon. I, I think the key is to not forget that where you came from, you, you get caught yeah. in into this kind of place like this and you forget yeah i think yeah setting your intention to remember. remember everything and anything no matter what the hell it is is absolutely number Don't one priority that like oh it's you gotta forget so otherwise you have that way you get complete total immersive of the experience it's yeah. so much better that way and you're like oh okay man <laughs> <laughs> 
I'm going to do, I, I'll send you a video. I had a, a good friend of mine, um, Simon, if you're out there, much love, brother. I hope you're doing good. Um, uh, we're in the astral projection group together. I told you about, and, um, you know, we've all been hammering away. You know, our experiences are few and far between, but once in a while we have a breakthrough and, and Simon had a breakthrough about, I don't know, three, four weeks ago. And he, I mean, he, I'll send you the video, Wayne, but, um, sure. you know, I, I didn't, you know, at the time it's different now. I, I kind of bit my tongue on it, but, um, you know, I was really, really happy for him. I was like, dude, that's great. You gotta, you know, you're asked to protect blah, blah, but, but he, he openly admitted how he, um, basically had to make an agreement to have the experience and the agreement wayne was that he wasn't gonna leave this is someone in the know about the soul trap Mm. and he you know he said it was a great experience i mean this the the video is great i'll 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 send let me take a note for that because you definitely want to check that out simon yeah i'm against making agreements (laughs) yeah i think um it's a it's a tough one, you know. I mean, I mean, he. he I guess he he probably, you know, well, not probably. But there may be things we don't we don't know until you're yeah. there, and then you're that's like, the oh, problem. okay, that's that's why. Yeah, that's the problem. Yep. And apparently, it was almost like he was getting a tour, and like I was kind of thinking back to how Monroe was given a tour of certain things. Like, mm. but you know, I mean, that's like on the more extreme things, it's the more extreme side, but, uh, okay. Anyways, um, okay. Uh, iron says this is the, this is the man who had the rebirth memory. Um, and he, Stated in the car, um, he says, a question I have is, how did we even get here? If we started from source, how did we get separated? That's a very good question. Um, how did we get separated? Well, there was a, an NDE, or I think she goes by the name of Sandy T, and she covers some of that to where the it wanted to know what things or certain things were like, and it wasn't able to do it. It experienced it itself because it's like all positive and all perfect. And so it, I, you know, I don't completely buy the explanation that, um, yeah, it's a, that's a tough one. How did we get separated? I mean, it's, it's all about intention and desire and movement and time and space gets created from that movement. So, um, that's that's the big question, you know, why? Well, why I mean, here? I guess uh, can't we ask? Um, and, and where what, does this what space is move separation into? and what does it go into? Right. If, if you're creating yeah. space and it's expanding, what is it expanding into? If not already space, you know what I'm saying? It's 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 um, yeah. I mean, I look at it as um, uh, the question implies that we were connected and at the hip with source in the first place. And some people and, say that we never are separated, that we're all, you know, if you put, listen well, to the NDE years, they say, well, we're not separated. We're all one and we're all connected. Well, and, that's new age, but yeah, most of the time. Um, yeah. I mean, well, it's not just new age. No, I mean, it's a lot it's of other in the quantum physics now, yeah. unfortunately. I mean, I guess, um, the unified field theory, you know, they sure. use the word unified field. Sure. I mean, I, I mean, if there is one bulk um, creator, like the creator, I, and I brought this up in one of my older videos, I, I called it the unsub special because I just figured hordes of people would unsubscribe just if just like <laughs> talking about, yeah. you know, I called it, I think something like uh, what is which God is it? What you know, what yeah. is God? Which God is it? And, um, you know, something about reuniting with source, blah, blah, blah. And, um, 
it asks the question is, um, you know, we're coming at the God question, the creator question, as, um, you know, the creator being the only one. Okay, so we're creator beings. Let's just get that out on the table. We all know that we're creator beings, okay? So does that mean that there's like this set of rules out there that makes us incapable of bringing, you know, everlasting life into the universe our or the multiverse ourselves i mean that, that i mean so is the creator just the creator and the only the creator can bring in us into the world so or into the universe multiverse so are we off limits from being able to do that i mean that that's an assumption right there that 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 only there's only one creator when we are creator, we know we're creator beings, so does that mean we can't bring life, so to say, everlasting if life of a if being? We were made, if we were made in its image, then we would be creators too. And, yeah. you yeah. know, some people think that God is growing and expanding too, but who knows? Yeah, uh, these, are, these are answers I do not know. Like yeah. I'd say, I, I do not know. Um, uh, yeah, me too. Be, that, that's what I, that, that's. I'd be, po yeah. I'd be posing if I tried, oh yeah, well, I remember this from my new death experience <laughs> and this is the way it is and, you know. Yeah, I mean, that that's how I posed the video. I said, I said, we don't know. And I put a list of gods. I said, which God is it? I mean, we have this God, this God, this God, this God, this goddess. I mean, which one is it? We have no freaking clue. And Some we're creator beings. So can we bring life into this world? Or is that like, that's the one thing that's off limit in the universe? I don't know. I mean, Some I people no just clue. call it um, the all or the all that is. Or yeah. I like, I use the term monad because it denotes one. Although yeah. I don't like it being so close to the term moon monad. Yeah, um, yeah. Okay. It's like a moon that's ad. An interesting way to put <laughs> it's it. an ad for the moon. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, by the way, oh, this, oh, okay, let me just tell you something. I'm going to bring it to our next show, and it's not going to be related to the experiences, but although it was kind of a weird, it was a weird way I, I, I ran across it. Okay, all right, there was um, this, per there's this person that I know who kind of um, lost his mind, okay? Mm. And he has a, you know, he grew up in Hollywood or in Los Angeles and he lives he lives lived and I think he still does live in Hollywood. Anyways, his father is um big in animation, okay? Mm -hmm. And I don't know what the hell caused me to search the father's name, but I did. And I searched the father's name, and Wayne, I don't remember the exact name of the company, but it's like something like Moon Lure or Moon, wow. Moon, yeah. Moon. It's something where basically it implies, uh, you know, it has the, it literally has the moon symbol. And something it's, with it's, the company name was like, you know, like Moon it's Lure. Not soul lure. It's not Soul Lure. Yeah. It? <laughs> the soul is lured into the, the system. The Soul Lure system. They're yeah. luring us into yeah. this. Yeah. yeah, that's one of my favorites. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. Press. So, yeah. So I will find that for you. I mean, it, it, the, the image is there and he's been, he's worked in all sorts of projects. I started looking into some of the episodes that were written and related to the company. I mean, it, mm. it was just. Mm. It was just kind of in my face, just saying, hey, look at me, look at me, look at me. And what drove me to even look up the father was just like ridiculous. I mean, it had it's it's I was more worried about this, the person who was suffering. And somehow yeah. I was like, oh, let me look up the father and see what he did. Because oh, I knew he was big in Hollywood yeah. and that's it. And then, boom, all of a sudden this rabbit hole presents itself. <laughs> It can happen. Yeah. yeah, I've had that happen before too. Oh, so many times. Okay. Um, I wanted to say to um, T, uh, thank you very much. That is so kind of you. T sent a super, su uh, super, a super chat of, uh, and says the great, great show, Wayne and FC. Thank you so much. These series have been awesome. 
thank you t that that was really really kind of you i can't thank, thank you. you enough thank that you was so kind okay um so let's move along to the questions and t i hope to see you tomorrow afternoon at four okay um Okay, we did the Metatron thing. Okay, don't understand what it is. Okay, uh, oh, we did that one. How you doing over there, Wayne? You okay? Good. I was just all thinking right. how Metatron just sounds so much like Tron is electronics yeah. and it's about AI and all this stuff, and Meta is like the metaverse and. Ah. Uh. It's... You know what? Let me take a note. I can I can tell you some crazy things yeah. I learned about Metatron and the government. Yeah, that's not stuff I'm talking about here. I'll tell you that much. Let's say Metatron. You know, I, I think Santana is a fantastic guitarist and everything. But man, I don't. If I were, I mean, I guess if you want fame, Metatron can can get you the the goods. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. I that, wouldn't be yeah. messing with something like that or selling yeah, your soul, quote quote unquote, selling your soul. Yeah. Okay, let me put. Maybe me... maybe he thinks it's all on the up. And it's all great. Yeah, no, yeah, that that was an interesting one. That you and he's got a song there. called Soul Sacrifice, man. Wow. So I know. I played at Woodstock and that whole narrative. Um what do you, you think black, about Black hmm? Magic Woman? Black. Course, that was a Fleetwood Mac yep. song, but still he I liked it enough it. to do it. <laughs> love Fleetwood Mac, love Stevie Nicks and I'll talk you know, about Stevie Nicks with uh, Rihanna boy, yeah, and she's a witch. The Welsh Welsh witch records. Yeah, yep. you don't go you don't go on Welsh witch records for, for yep. no reason. Yeah, she that's she admits that. I mean, she talks about that openly. I think. Yeah, openly. She doesn't care. She doesn't care. Yeah. You know what was funny is I I lived not far from her house when I lived in Arizona. Yeah, she was I literally like, two streets away. I like Stevie Nicks. I mean, but I think. Um, just for my own personal taste, like uh, I get them confused, but is it Ann Wilson apart? The, yeah, the one yeah. singer, yep. just phenomenal. I mean, uh, more range and power, and um, so so diverse. And yeah, yeah, I mean, Stevie's I, a little more monotone. I mean, she's great, don't get mm, me wrong, I, I like her a lot. Or like a Linda Ronstadt, I used to love oh, Linda Ronstadt. Linda's she's incredible, beautiful too. Yeah. Linda it's, is incredible. so sad. What's happened with you know, her park? I think it's Parkinson's, yeah, yeah. She, she used to have the Eagles as her backup band. That's not too bad of a gig. Oh, I know. Yep. And you know, then you can go all back. All that to ties the... into the Laurel. Yeah, Kings I was just going to say. Yeah, you're... then we yeah. can go down that road. <laughs> yeah. Uh... Welcome to the Hotel California. Yep. Okay. All right. So that one's gone. Okay. Thank you, T, for taking care of that. Accident accidentally unhitted getting spammed in the chat so okay um there's other stuff like the professor griff and um oh griff there's yeah. just a whole bunch of stuff you could go into with the oh. music industry but I, I wanted to concentrate more on the lyrics myself i find that fascinating hey what if you want to do a thing on music is yeah. oh yeah i mean if you ever want to do a, a thing yeah, on music yeah. with truth bombs i'm totally down i can probably just drone <laughs> on on that one but you know yeah, not yeah. soul trap related but just how the whole thing is. I got most of the lyrics in there that I wanted. I might have forgotten one, one or two here and there, mm. but um, man, I made sure I got most of the stuff in there. Mm. Okay, so I lost my place. I'm sorry. Um... I think my eyeballs will fall out while i'm sleeping tonight <laughs> um okay we got to that okay all right um huncho says i think that's the name yeah huncho says um itself color language control shape misinterpretations on the system you are using to interpret reality it is not one of your choosing numbers, language, color, shape, Mis misinterpretation of information is all around you. 
a misinterpretation imposed on you by an invasive, invasive life form, which is trying to control your consciousness. Substance. A substance you ingest that temporarily counteracts the influence of the invasive life form that is trying to force you to perceive information in the same manner of itself. I think that was in a linear fashion to perceive choices as having um, and capable outcomes, outcomes it has dictated to you, thereby controlling all your choices and, in effect, eliminating them. It achieves this goal by influencing you to perceive the most elaborate of all misinterpretations, time. So it's kind of more of a statement about time. Time is an illusion. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I like that. I, I think it was kind of broken up through multiple messages and it may, maybe I might have mixed but, them up. Like so a, I apologize. According to the Buddhists and Hindus, I mean, it's all illusion. Life is illusion. Yeah. It's my, Maya. The Mayans. Oh, the and Mayans. Maya. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's right illusion. there and in front of our they, face. I think they call it, I might get the word wrong, but like uh, Leela, it's a play or a drama, mm. according to the Hindus. Yeah. Just want to send a shout out to Solomon out there, Vince, Miss Ellie, Can at the 51 Project. Hope you're all doing well. Good to see you. And uh, Greta Falco. Hello. Hope you're doing well. Um, Greta Falco says, FC, on the concept of creating lives ourselves, what do you think of the concept of tulpas in that relation to that? Oh, that's a hell of a question. Yeah. <laughs> We're talking, yeah. Oh, my God. Oh yeah, you can. Ooh, that's Baby a good one. And yeah, oh and all my that God. stuff. And we did kind of touch on. Yeah, we a did. We did. That, yeah. Um, a few videos. That it's okay. external and don't go chasing the external thought um, forms. creations and thought yeah. forms. Yeah. Oh yeah. my God. I mean. But here's the question: What if we're the thought forms of God? That's kind of the question I was asking: Is what mm -hmm. if we're the thought forms of God? Then you all of a sudden you go poof one day and you just no longer <laughs> exist, or who knows? Yeah. Who knows? No. Great, great point. Yeah, I mean that that that's a that's a you know dare I say it a mind fuck completely because it's like the the mere fact that we can exist here, but when you know your creator being and have those abilities to, I mean, some of them. You're just I, an extension of God creating. Then at that yeah, point, maybe, or you're just yeah. I mean, you're you're your own God created to the God. Yeah the the main source if there's only one source i mean there has right. to i mean there has to be something rooting back to 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 the beginning yeah I mean, but then they say that the it, hell it came out but they say it all came out of nothingness which to oh, me please. seems illogical yeah, right please. that seems illogical yeah no it's ridiculous how does it come out of nothing it's just something that you can't perceive you just yeah. Well, there's got to be something there, right? We've it's got the potential this, for something. Yeah, we've got the stupid body, the stupid brain, the stupid limited vision, and you know, here we are talking about like something we can't even possibly fathom or explain because we're confined to this, this meat suit. Yeah, well, that's the only thing I, I put out there that I may be wrong about my theory, just due to lack of understanding that just the the fallibility and the finiteness of, mm -hmm. of my brain <laughs> trying to it's like a dog trying to figure out calculus or something sure, you know? so, sure. I, I i'm open to the possibility that that it's wrong and it's lacking well, okay let me just ask you this way I'm, I'm i understand i understand you bring in saying that but let me just ask you what would what do you feel could be the other like what? What? What could be a possible other explanation that maybe we haven't explored or contemplated? I've put out pretty much every everything I can think of. I mean, I've mentioned it or written about it. Um, if I knew it, I would. I don't know. How, it's like, how would I know what I don't know? Kind of thing. It's like, yeah. I mean, so I, I said just, maybe we're we're just maybe it doesn't have anything to do with the light. Maybe it has something to do with something none of us have even thought of. Oh, it's just yeah. beyond our but, comprehension. Yeah, I mean, basically the the way I see it, I mean, it it could have nothing to do with the light. Is I mean, even just interacting with anything that yeah. uh, is trying to lure you it doesn't even have to be at the light. It could be 
anything really. I mean, it could just be the mere um, initiation of consenting to have a communication between you and or us and something else. And, um, you know, then kind of being tricked into a memory wipe or, or whatever the case may be. Because it, it, it doesn't all have to fall into necessarily being the light, although there's a lot to suggest that. But um, at the same time, I, I, I leave on the table that, you know, because we're creator beings and we can consent, deny consent, and, and do our own thing, that if we choose to interact with, something outside ourselves then we're kind of just uh easy prey and there are maybe soulless beings at the top of the pyramid so to say but i don't know um don't they need our very, creator abilities maybe i don't think they're at the very top maybe the very top of like this oh yeah matrix. yeah, yeah. yeah, the yeah no i'm talking yeah. yeah yeah i'm not talking about the ones that yeah. that specifically but i'm but talking it could about... have to do it could have to do with frequency there was there was one nde that said do we we go to the level of our heart's purity or something along those lines so that whatever your frequency whatever your um i don't want to use the word vibrating at but whatever your frequency is at maybe, maybe it's like a spiritual level whatever that is that's you kind of go to that place sure and, and so yep. you know who's to say yeah i think it's i think you bringing that up that one up specifically is a really important part because especially for the people who ask um things about uh you know when you you know the, the disturbing NDEs, let's just call them what they are when um you know i don't want to put words in your mouth obviously but um the ones where they just say that they are transported to the light or they just found themselves in the void. They found themselves in the light or, you know, it was just instant. Okay. Yeah. You know, Those do it, exist, yeah. I mean, that's creepy. That's weird. Yeah. But I also, you know, again, like, do we have a full on psychological profile about what this person's belief systems were or what they were and exactly. maybe are kind of just simmering out in the background there. And so it just kind of a, a one way ticket, you know, and then we throw in the memory wipe aspect to this thing with NDs. I mean, it, I just think, um, they're there to be the firewall between, um, us finding ourselves and providing some illusion that we can't, find ourselves and do our own thing but you know we can go on forever about that one but yeah some people think that maybe that everything's just different symbols of something that we can't comprehend right like yeah. we can't see that so our mind or whatever brain mm -hmm. sees it through a symbol that you know sure. it's like a go-between yeah sure. yeah okay let's see um Okay, so Vince, Vince, hope you're doing well, brother. Good to see you. He says, before Catholic culture, we were supposed to be pagans, right? Before Catholic culture, before we were Catholic supposed culture, to be pagans? we were supposed saying to be that we pagans. Were pagans. Yeah, a lot yeah. of I think a lot of the Catholic and Christianity uh, rituals or dogma, whatever that came from the pagans. I mean, certainly Christmas, right, came from. Yep. Pagan. You know, a lot of, and, and a lot of the churches were built on pagan sites because there were a lot of energy there. Yeah, ley lines. So yep. It's like one Altars. culture will destroy another culture's um, history and, and just because they say it's of the devil or it's... <laughs> I, I do think there's a lot of uh, demon demonization going on with that stuff. Um, and with what my friend said about Pan, I'm open to that being the case, that they demonized Pan and called him the devil and that he Maybe it really wasn't, you know? Yeah, I mean, it, the way I kind of see it is if the system is telling you to be scared or afraid or that something is a lie, then it's most likely something you need to be looking into. <laughs> and everything yeah. that they say is true and accurate and this and that is, you know, it's just immediately discounted as a lie. I mean, that, well, that's, that's like for yeah. one brief, one brief instance, I 
I thought about, well, maybe if it's all backwards, then maybe Satan. And and once I, I spent just even an yeah. iota of time researching that, it's like, oh, no, no, that's not the truth. Yeah, no, no. I, I did the same yeah. thing. No, I mean, I checked out the Satanic Bible and all that stuff I was reading. Of course. Like, nah, that's yeah. not good. You're sacrificing babies and all this kind of stuff. It's like, how can Thank that be you. good? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm with you, Wayne. I went down that road too. I said, you know, if so you know, this it. is being represented of this, then you know, maybe it's the truth, and I need to look into it. And of course, then you have all the, just like with um, all other religions, you have the apologists over and over and over to try and yeah. rationalize the insanity. Um, well, one can make a better case for something like Lucifer. Like I know there are certain Gnostic sects that consider Lucifer to be the good guy, and and mm -hmm. I'm not there myself personally but i mean i i can't outright dismiss it as being the case you know mm -hmm. all right let me see here i think we got maybe one more two more okay damn way this is I don't think I'll ever beat this stream. Well, maybe with the experiences, but yeah. <laughs> I yeah. may have to chop this one in two. I don't know. I'm I just hate editing, so I'll just yeah. probably let it stand. Um, let's see. Uh, Vin says, "Well, reincarnation soul trap is just people trying to figure out how to escape this shithole." Uh, there is no dogma that i can see from that so far sure some have beliefs but it's a human nature yeah i mean in my opinion it's just like uh throw away all every almost throw away everything every single thing we talk about and just stick with one thing a sovereign and liberated approach at death and that's yeah, really, that's really that? the bare bones of it, right? Right. I mean, other than that, um, who cares? I mean, it's uh, it's just matrix distractions, really. When you boil it all down, I mean, and when it comes down to the time of death, you you mm -hmm. better be focused and not entertain. And I'm I'm with you when when we even entertain the possibility that this might be the case and that might be the case. I mean, we're doing disservice to ourselves. We're weakening our position. And really, mm -hmm. we you're right. We should never ever discuss all that. But then I guess we wouldn't have a show much. <laughs> yeah, well I mean I I mean I th and you have to reach people that are thinking along those lines. Otherwise, yep. um, how are you going to get, how are you going to help people see it? Uh, yeah. Wake up. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I do I, care about saving other people while I'm here. While I'm here, I'm going to help people. Yep. But it doesn't mean I'm going to come back after I'm gone. Oh, you freaking bet your ass, Wayne. Th right. this, is, this, is, this is my contribution, just like I'm sure it's your exactly. contribution. Yeah. And I am not coming back. I don't care what the hell the situation I don't care what is going on. I'm done. This is it. This is, this is my contribution. In that It'd be bit. a lack of compassion and a lack of responsibility if we didn't try to, to reach some people. If, if what we believe is true yeah. and we have evidence. Well, um, why are we doing nothing. these shows, right? Exactly. exactly. I mean, we're not sitting here talking for almost eight hours. You know, for no reason. We want to reach that. I mean, uh, I've always said it's all about reaching that one person. And it's, it. I mean, it's come to the point where I am just, it's very humbling and uh, an honor to try and help others see it. And, you know, again, we can throw away all the information. But the reason why I continue to do so many videos and just like you continue to put so many updates on your website, it's all about just reaching that one person, one person at a time over and over and over again. And just say, you know, do your own thing when you're leading up to and at the time of death. And, that's and it. I'm also looking for that's feedback. If, if someone's more intelligent than me and they know that I'm wrong and they can yeah. show it, then bring it. Yeah. I'm open to learning. I mean, if I'm wrong, me I want to know it. Yeah, and I mean, is there some, you know, I learn from people. I mean, people, most, most of the stuff I get, you know, not so great, but there are some, what does it call them? Gems in the rough or diamonds in the rough. Diamonds where in the rough. Yeah. People that know about Gnosticism, they know about um, Buddhism, they know about all kinds of different things like this. 
So I, I learned from people. And if I didn't go out and do this, I, I'm probably not going to run into them at a, at a restaurant somewhere. Yeah, I, I, I'm with you, bro. I'm with you. I mean, I am um, when I first started the channel, I contemplated just shutting off the, the comment section, shutting off live chat and just throwing my stuff out there. But I want to I, I, I want to learn off other people. I mean, that's that's how, you know, hey, you know, Wayne, did you see this NDE or, you know, you know, you say, hey, Mark, did you see this pre-birth memory or, you know, someone in the comment section yeah. says, oh, did you see this or that or this or that? And occasionally you get these amazing uh, perspectives or experiences that are documented and they are just incredible and you know yeah. so we're, we're all learning off each other that that's what my channel is all about it's all about learning off each other just like you're uh you know you have all the comments in your website you know loads and loads and loads of comments you know hey wayne look at this hey wayne look at that you know and that's how we grow and further yeah. help ourselves i mean by discussing with others and yep. being open-minded yeah. and 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 not attacking other people that's I, right i don't think that helps much that's at right. all no i mean that just that just makes you want to shut down and, and not go out there because it, it can hurt to when it, people say yeah. nasty things yeah. it's, let me just tell you one thing wayne you're a warrior you're re highly <laughs> respected around this crowd that's and great. uh you know we we appreciate you taking the time and i i just want to let you know you know i appreciate you immensely and i know many of the people watching right now do so well thank you thank I you appreciate you giving me so much time to like share all my all my music lyrics and, and all the movies and it's yeah. like most shows i go on it's like i've only got an hour and a half and it's like a nope. or whatever Not and it's like here. a nightmare trying to edit <laughs> down to here i can just put yeah. everything in there and if i don't get to it all that's fine yeah that that's kind of um the position i've i've been on invited on to seven shows and and i haven't gone on any of them yet but i the i'm trying to work on an outline you know that's yeah you know i can hit certain points like you know 10 minutes here 10 minutes there and it's just like I'm looking at this. I'm like, there's, you know, I, no I need way. more time. You know, yeah, the tough. most uh, amount of time I have available on one of the shows is two hours, but most of them are an hour, hour and a half tops. And yeah. it's just um, I, the way I see it is, is I, I don't want to go on to the shows until I know I can do the topic justice and hit all the points to have the maximum yeah. effect possible on whoever's listening. I've done it. I've gone on one or two and somehow, I mean, I may or may not have had notes, but I mean, I'm, I'm able to, you just give like the top two or three things of each thing, just go through. Boom, boom. These are yeah. my best, my best uh, mm. cases, you know, it's, yeah. it's not easy. Yeah. No, it's, uh, it's cool. I mean, just, maybe I just gotta just get out there and just do it and say, screw it. It's you know? really abbreviated. Yeah. You know, you just touch on each one. It's like, well, there's a guy, Robert Monroe, that is an out of body experience. He talked about mm -hmm. Michelle. There was this other guy, <laughs> William Dielman. He surveyed 19,000 people and he said not to go to the line. He's just got to go do, 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 through it. And <laughs> you can't go deep in, the, in any one area. No, you, you can't. Just, you get lost. Yeah, that, that, uh, that's why I just wish I could just unload on, you know, and talk like we are, you know, hey. Yeah, almost yeah. eight hours later. Let's keep going. <laughs> All right. uh, Let me get another cup of coffee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Ken from the 51 Project says, I take wisdom from wherever I can get it. Even enjoy some philosophy channels with content that is direct opposite to some things here. Couldn't agree more. What about you, Wayne? Yeah, uh, I mean, you, you got to look at every every possible angle right i mean yeah. um, even when i'm looking at the news there's certain sites i don't really usually agree with but i go out there just to see what they're saying and um, mm -hmm. um yeah mm -hmm. you owe it to yourself to at least look at every possible belief system you know what i mean yep yeah it's all about being unfortunately open. i don't i don't watch enough youtube videos of people of researchers and experiencers um yeah really do a little more of that yeah, yeah, yeah. i'll send you some good stuff when i run across <laughs> it and if you like it that'd be great to talk about it um all right so i think there's one more 
I did get into an Alan Watts kick a little bit and was watching a lot of his stuff, but then they got to be too depressing. Mm, yeah. At some point it got to be like, wait a minute, this dude's really depressing me. Yeah. <laughs> Al- Alan, um, he's got some good points. Yeah. But yeah. Alan Watts or Alan Watt? Uh, Alan Watts, I believe. Yeah, well, uh, there's a tale of two Watts. Or Watt. Yeah, I know. <laughs> One's a philosopher, right? And the other's mm. the. Uh, yeah. Well, Alan Watt just died last year, which is, you know. I'm not going to comment any further on that one, but it's kind of interesting. Uh, I don't want. No, I'm not going to go yeah, it's down confusing. that road. I'm I, not going to go down that road. Yeah. I think I think it's Alan Watts, but I may yeah. be wrong on that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Watts died. Um, I think in what the mid '90s. I don't know. I don't really can't even say. But um, um, comment says uh, fc in dark city the strangers had a collective consciousness and the jinn have a collective consciousness i think we are dealing with actual demons tomato tomato yeah like i said the gnostics call them demons the uh or i'm sorry the christians call them demons the gnostic gnostics call them archons Archons, the um muslims call them jinn um you know mesopotamia some of them they were called shades or galu i mean there's different names for different cultures but essentially they're the same entities i guess Mm. all right sometimes i call them Mm -hmm. shadow beings i like calling them because they call them shades so i I think shadow beings kind of fits in with that and and archons is more like rulers i mean according to strict gnostic uh definition of it no no that's a good point i think um that term has been kind of the overdone the, yeah the accepted thing and it kind of blankets over all sorts of things and I'm, I, I'm, hope, I'm, in some ways i hope i had a lot to do with that but then in other ways it's like i hope i didn't because it's like i mean i didn't hear much about demiurge or archons until like after i had started talking but i'm sure there were other people that i just wasn't aware of you know yeah, it's like but, i never know how much my influence was no, i think your influence was huge huge massive um and whoever out i mean i think really the the depressing part of um the soul trap thing wayne is uh all the all the bull i mean there's so much bull out there that is um just complete complete lies it, it the 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 channels who talk about the topic and leave someone twiddling their thumbs hopeless you know looking at a noose okay that's the that's one end of the spectrum and then you have you know kind of in between which is still kind of extreme where they're talking about things like you know oh you know the our Charian council is going to save us or you know you, you know the, the all Wait, these what what they're not oh just kidding <laughs> <laughs> darn oh, unfortunately was... no unfortunately the Archerians are not going to save us crushed my hopes oh Wayne, i'm sorry well, i guess bro. i'll have to rely on the pleiadians yeah. now <laughs> <laughs> uh. yeah then you have you know kind of our approach where it's like look let's try and look at this from as a logical perspective as possible that isn't insane okay isn't i mean how people can just look at the soul trap and just say oh yeah yeah okay all right there's good aliens there's bad aliens and you know i'm just gonna obviously go with the good aliens and that's it i'm never gonna look at anything anymore but you know that that's the really really toxic part of this the disinformation aspect of this which does maximum amount of damage possible i think if so, i think if there's any topic that the matrix should be off limits of um getting its little evil matrixy toes in it's the soul trap because that is the one that people need to have the cleanest um approach and way of finding it possible but of course no it has to butt its ugly head in and cause all sorts of problems and you know someone hearing about the soul trap and saying oh you know yeah you know kind of this kind of resonates with me 
And there still hasn't been a movie out there that's just hit it, hit it head on. Yeah, just no, you're right. Out there just like, oh, it's right. a soul trap and we need you. Yeah. I mean, the Matrix kind of dances around it a little mm-hmm. bit, but it's, it, it's not. It's, none of the movies yeah. do. No. I mean, they may have uh, metaphors and stuff like that. I mean, soul kind of danced around it a yeah, little bit. Soul but not, definitely not, did, yeah. not really. Yeah. I mean, it's it's just. Well, it's twisted. It's, t- it's completely twisted. twisted. Yeah. I mean, it, it just yeah. didn't come right out and say it like, you know, in yeah. straight up speech like, oh, there's a trap for your soul and don't go to the lie i mean none yeah. of that's out there yeah yeah and uh yeah i just think it's a. Uh, I think in my opinion you know i have obviously a lot of issues with the atrocities and and the morals and the ethics that go on here but i think if someone looks into that topic they shouldn't have to run into a pile of bullshit they, they just shouldn't right, i think it's right. disgraceful absolutely vile um and yeah i, I guess I'll just, like i said I don't, I don't really go out there and listen or watch so i'm not even i'm not sure which i don't want you to go into it because it, <laughs> but i'm not even sure what you're talking about because i i just don't go out there and, and listen well to i mean it's just much, the, the palladian type thing the galactic federation galactic all, Federa- all that stuff, stuff yeah, you know i, I mean you. thinking you know yeah, that the, it's yeah. the savior programming you know it's like oh yeah you know earth is mm. you know you're it may be a soul trap but you know uh it's these aliens the doing aliens it are but save these us, are right? the good ones you know so blah 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 i mean yep. All right, so I think Mr. Um, Mr. Chambers, don't get on that ship. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a cook, it's a cookbook. Yeah. That's a good one. <laughs> All right, so I think we got one, just one, maybe one more comment here. Uh, I'll I'll bring up Solomon's comment here. I just read. I don't know what he said here, but Solomon says uh, I had a heartwarming talk with Alan Watt before he died. If you Weeks later, he was very encouraging to me, telling me to keep going with life, basically. Kudos to our brother here. Dark City is a film you people should pay attention to because we do have psycho-spiritual entities, archons, jinn, etc., shifting the hypostasis of life monically, too. And um, uh, he left a link, to. So, yeah. You want to throw anything oh, no. on top Just, of that? As we mentioned the the movie Dark City, and I read yeah. some quotes from it. Um, yeah, everybody go out and watch that. It's it's right on the money in a lot yeah. of ways. I think. Uh, yeah. One of the maybe top five movies out there. Um, mm-hmm. It's okay. right right there behind the Matrix and the Truman Show, and I'd throw Soul in there, but it's oh yeah, I, I thought Soul basically. was a I thought Soul was a big one because at least you have at least you have the the negative character in there kind of saying you know ah, yeah. i don't want to go to earth and fighting a tooth and yeah. nail i mean that's that's a that's a good aspect to put in there but of course they fluff it up in their disney pixar style to i might i might put yeah. dark city top five i and i didn't really like to like the movie like oh I don't, the characters and the actors and mm-hmm. the, you know it, to me it wasn't as interesting as like the matrix or the truman i mean the true those movies had me so engaged yeah. i guess but um dark city it's kind of depressing right the, the yeah the, oh. cut, the tone or the color of the yeah. lighting and all that kind of stuff yeah good point yeah no yeah, i'm moving. completely with you on that not that I, you have to be entertained or anything the, yeah. the wisdom in it is, is pretty sure. powerful sure um i wanted to before we closed off uh, say that um i am going to create a separate discord server for um uh, a one-time uh movie viewing we're gonna view the the mate the new matrix oh wow. and that is going to be on um can we go into the metaverse to view it i'm just <laughs> yeah we're gonna do it on the 22nd at um i think 4 30 or 5 p.m so that's going to be this coming wednesday at 4 30 or 5 p.m eastern standard time now if you would like to um join and we're just going to watch it you know i'm going to be seeing it in the theater that afternoon and then uh so a friend... like in four days or whatever right? yeah 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 okay. one two three yeah yep yeah. it's going to be wednesday wow. at 4 30 or 5 because it comes out on the 22nd and uh my girlfriend and I are going to go see it in the theater. 
And then when we come back, my my. Why do I get the feeling I'm I'm going to be disappointed with this? I'm uh, I, yeah, so, I'm so. with you, Wayne. I'm with you. I'm not expecting each, each much. one got you yeah, know worse and worse. Yeah. 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 yeah, I mean, I do At like least that. The second one had the the architect in it. That yeah. was pretty pretty badass. Yeah. And I do like how it's titled Resurrections, which you know mm-hmm. kind of has a little reincarnation vibe going on. So, we'll see. Um, but. Anyways, so yeah, I'm going to create a separate server for that. So anyone who wants to just come in and uh, wants an invite to that server, it'll be a one-time thing. And uh, all you got to do is email me, foreverconsciousresearch at gmail.com. Please put in the subject Discord. If you don't, there's a good chance I'll miss you. So uh, just say you want to be um, in the in the body of the email. Just say, you know, I want to hang out for the Matrix. Um, uh viewing part watch party and we're going to be doing it on actually no i'm saying yeah i'm sorry we're going to be doing it on zoom not discord because i forgot that the quality changes there so yeah i'm sorry it's going to be on zoom so just email me uh say you want to just chill with us we're all chill together and watch the movie there'll be no commentary for it or anything it'll just be us hanging out together watching the movie and um would love to have you any of you out there who want to join us so forever conscious research at gmail.com i also wanted to add that tomorrow we are having our um last timers club uh monthly members live stream for december of this year 2021 it'll be the last one and if you'd like to join you can click the pinned message or go into the description and look for the uh uh you know look in the description sorry i'm kind of like zoning out here <laughs> and uh please be sure to check out wayne's website tricked by the light.com that's tricked by the light.com you can also find that in the description i also have uh two youtube backup channels in case something should ever happen here uh kind of noticing some weird stuff in the last three videos but whatever's going to happen is going to happen so uh just head to the description tab for that as well to sign up for backup chem channel number two three and um also if you want to get further notifications for here or the backup channels god forbid something happens just hit um the bell and make sure it's selected to all because i get messages all the time about how people are not getting notifications the only resolution i know is to make sure that the bell is hit to all and um i do i did secure the website url and so i'm going to be moving stuff over to a website at some point by the beginning of the year and it'll kind of have be a resource hub and uh, community driven and it also have um like a members area there as well so uh but the point is, is all the important information will always be free uh, and available to everybody because it's all about helping inform and spread the word. Um, I also have D Live, Twitch, Instagram, Twitter, all that crap. So if you want to sign up to those, feel free to check the description for those too. And um, lastly, if you've enjoyed this conversation with uh, Wayne, this really really long long incredible conversation with wayne feel free to hit the like button and share it with other people so we can get this into more people's feeds if it's shared if it's liked all that stuff it 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 helps the algorithm push this to other people randomly so at least that's what i'm told i don't know if it actually does that but (laughs) at least that's what i'm told so all right wayne uh i thank you so much for I mean, this is incredible. It was hard to outbeat the first one, then the second (laughs) one, and now we're just, we're on another planet. (laughs) Yeah. So thank you, my friend. Thank you. I I appreciate you, Wayne. It's pretty late, so I'll just say good night, sleep tight, and don't let the archons bite. Ah, that's a good one. Okay. (laughs) All right. Much love, brothers and sisters. We'll see you soon. Thank you so much. Take care. Take care, Wayne. Thank you. Mm Mm-hmm.